Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny's first radio broadcast of the season. Immediately after, he'll do his opening television show over the CBS network. But now, we'd like to take you back to a Friday morning several weeks ago and look in on Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. Summertime! And the living is easy. Fish are jumping. And the cotton is high. That song sure is true. It's easy living in the summer. I've been sleeping late every morning, going to the beach in the afternoon, spending the weekends fishing with my friends. I wish Mr. Benny would come back from his vacation so I could go on mine. <laughs> Summertime, and the living is easy. Fish are jumping, and the cotton is high. Mm, the front door. <laughs> yes? What is it, gentlemen? We're from the North American Van and Moving Company. Moving Company? Yeah. Isn't this uh, Ronald Coleman's house? No, no. Are the Coleman's moving away? Yeah, we're moving them today. Well, they live next door. The house on the right. Thanks. Go ahead, Joe. Let's go get the stuff. Gee, I thought it was the mailman. I haven't heard a word from Mr. Benny in over two weeks. And then all he sent me was a postcard. He said he was invited to a big luau and had a wonderful time. I didn't know what luau meant, so I looked it up. It's a Hawaiian word meaning, stuff yourself, the food is free. <laughs> I remember one. Uh-oh, the front door again. Yes, sir? Uh, we're from the Beacons Van and Storage Company. Oh, you got the wrong house. The Coleman's live next door. Well, we're not looking for Mr. Coleman. We're here to move Mr. and Mrs. James Stewart. Oh, the Stewart's. They live in the brick house, the one on the left. Thank you. Maybe I ought to do a little work for a change. It's a good idea to, to get started uh, doing it again. I'll go in the den and see if that needs straightening up. Gee, Mr. Harris has been off the show for two years now. I wonder if I ought to wake him up and send him home. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's Mr. Bentley's business. Doggone, this is the busiest day. Yes? We're from Lions Van and Storage Company, and we're here to move Mr. and Mrs. William Powell. William Powell? Oh, they live in that White House right across the street. Thanks. Gosh, I can't understand why. Now the phone. Mr. Benny's residence. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny's not back from Honolulu yet. What's that? He made an appointment for a haircut next Tuesday? Well, he doesn't have to be here for that. I'll send it over. <laughs> Chester, I'm home. Boss! 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 Rochester, you seem so surprised that I'm back. I am. I had no idea you'd come home today. Well, I thought someone would tell you. I wrote to a lot of people that I'd be home today. Uh, who did you write to? The Coleman's, the Stewart's, and the Powell's. <laughs> I wonder if they got my letters. Oh, they got them! They got them! <laughs> Here, help me inside with my bag. Will you? Rochester, did any of my cast get here yet? No, were you expecting them? Yeah, I called them when I got off the boat and told them to come here for an important meeting. Now, Rochester, take my small suitcase up to my room. What about the two large ones? Oh, they're filled with dirty laundry. You better wash and iron it right away. 
Yes, sir. And when you're done, I'll give you the names of the people in Hawaii you're to send it back to. <laughs> Do a good job, eh? Boss, have we got customers in Hawaii now? Yes. And you better wash the skirts by hand. That grass can stop up the bending. <laughs> now, Rochester, put some chairs. There's the door. I'll get it. She'll be good getting back on the air. I always get such a thrill out of the first check. And program. I mean. <laughs> coming. Coming. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Dennis, come on in. Oh, Dennis, it's wonderful seeing you again. You know, you're the first member of my cast I've seen since we went off the air in June. And gosh, it's funny, Dennis. At the end of every season, we all go our separate ways, and then as the summer wears on, I begin to realize how much I miss the gang. And so when I opened the door and saw you here, it gave me such a warm feeling of... Get it over with. I'm a busy man. <laughs> That's a fine greeting. You haven't seen me for three months, then you don't even ask me about my trip. Where are you going? Where am I going? I just got back. I was in Hawaii for three weeks. Hawaii? Boy, I'd like to go there sometime. What's it like, Mr. Benny? Dennis, Honolulu is one of the most beautiful spots in the world. You ought to feel the soft, warm sand on the beach. Get it over with. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Look, Dennis, you asked me to tell you about it. I just got home. I'm not going to stand here and let you annoy me. Say, does the rest of the gang know you're back yet? Yes, I phoned them from this morning. Uh, you know, this morning from the dock. There. From the dock? Yeah. Oh, then you just got back today. Yes, yes, on the Luralee. How was the boat trip? The boat trip? Uh huh. Dennis. <laughs> I can't tell you what. Get I'm it over with. I'm a busy man. As long as the rest of the gang haven't arrived here, let me hear the song you're going to do on the first program. Yes, sir. That kid is the only one I know who can undo a three months rest in two minutes. <laughs> Dennis, that really sounded swell. Only when you do it on the program, I want you to pick up the tempo a bit, you see, and hold the finish just a little bit longer. Well, know? my mother likes it this way. <laughs> oh, she does, eh? Well, what does your mother know about music? Plenty. Liberace couldn't get along without her. <laughs> Liberace? What does she do for him? Before every show, she waxes his teeth. <laughs> well, that certainly makes her Toscanini the friendly credit band leader. Now, uh, Dennis, as long as we're... Uh, Dennis, you stay right here while I answer the door. Hello, Jack. Mary! Mary Dollface, let me look at you. Gee, you look wonderful. Oh, thanks. Uh, Dennis is here, isn't he? Yes, how did you know? You look awful. <laughs> it didn't take two minutes. <laughs> well, Mary, it's sure good to see you. Come here, I'm going to give you a big kiss. Oh, Jack. No, no, come here, let me kiss you. Mm, all right. There. How is that? It'll never make the Kinsey report. <laughs> Uh, come on, let's go in. Well, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. When'd you get back from Las Vegas? Last week. Hey, I didn't know you went up to Vegas. Did you enjoy yourself? Uh-huh. I went to Palm Springs this summer. Palm Springs? In the summer? Dennis, why in the world would wait a anyone... Minute, wait a minute, Mary, wait. <laughs> Mary, don't get into any silly routines with Dennis. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Anyway, Jack, I had a good time in Vegas. Yeah, it certainly is an exciting town, Las Vegas. Gosh, I've been there a lot of times. In fact, I even lost some money gambling, you know. I know. It was on a slot machine in the Flamingo. The third one from the right as you enter the casino. That's right, Mary. 
How did you know? <laughs> they have a little plaque there that reads, Jack Benny fainted here. <laughs> I don't care, it's good publicity. <laughs> anyway, Mary, I gotta tell you and the gang about the wonderful time I had in Hawaii. Uh, I spent the summer in Palm Springs. Dennis, why... Wait a minute, Mary, Mary. Don't you ask him. I'll do it. Me, he's already made a wreck of. <laughs> Dennis, you spent the summer in Palm Springs? Uh-huh, and I had a swell time. Look at... I don't know. Well, all right. Look, how can you... Dad, how can you possibly enjoy yourself in Palm Springs and all that heat? In the summer, it gets to be 120 degrees in the shade. I was smart. I didn't stay in the shade. <laughs> See what I do to myself? <laughs> Mary, that proves I love you, doesn't it? <laughs> well, if you really love me, get me a cold drink, will you please? I'm thirsty. Okay, Mary, what do you want? Ginger ale will be all right. Okay, Rochester. Yes, boss? Will you please bring Miss Livingston a glass of ginger ale? I'm sorry, but we haven't got any. We haven't? Look, when I left for Hawaii, we had three cases of ginger ale. Well, it's all gone now. Rochester, tell me the truth. Did you have a party here while I was gone? Well, yes, boss, in July. What date in July? Just July. <laughs> Look, Rochester, I don't mind you're having a little... Come in! Rochester, look, I don't mind you're having a little party while I'm gone, but then when you take advantage of... Hello, everybody... Jack. Hi, everybody. Oh, hello, hello Doc. Don, it's awfully nice to see you. Did you have a nice vacation? Oh, I sure did. Glad to hear it, Don. Where'd you spend your summer? In the Brown Derby. <laughs> Three months in a restaurant? Oh, oh, no, 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 Jack. There's a little summer resort way up north known as the Brown Derby. It's a wonderful place. Oh, oh. Lovely climate, great fishing and swimming. Oh, and by the way, Marilyn Monroe was up there. How's the scenery? <laughs> Dennis. You know, it's funny that you mention her, Don. You know, Marilyn Monroe is going to be on my television show. She is? Yeah. Why, I saw her picture in the newspaper and she had her leg in the cast. Understand she broke her ankle. She tried everything, but Jack's holding her to her contract. <laughs> Mary, she's going to be on my program because she wants to, and she's going to be wonderful on it. You know, I saw her and Jane Russell and gentlemen prefer blondes, and they were terrific. <laughs> Dennis, where'd you, where'd you see that picture? In Palm Springs. <laughs> Oh. That day it was 130 in the shade. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, say, Jack, uh, now that we're all here, what'd you call us over for? We're not all here. Bob Crosby is late. I wish he'd get here so we can get this over with. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Dennis, we know all about how busy you are with your own TV show and your records and movies. Uh, besides that, this summer I started raising tropical fish. Mm, tropical fish? Say, that's a nice hobby. Yeah, they're delicious. <laughs> Ma Mary, when are you going to learn? Hi, Jack. To Hi, Jack. Go. Hello, everybody. Hey, it's Bob Crosby. Hey. Hi, Bob. Hey, good to see you. Hey, the door was open, so I just walked in. Well, we've been here waiting for you so we can have our little meeting. You know, kids, Bob was in Honolulu while I was there. I didn't know that, Bob. Did you go alone? Oh, no. I took my wife and my five kids, a nurse for the baby, and a cook and a maid. Did you go on the lure line, too? Oh, yes, Don. It was exciting, especially as we were landing in Honolulu. My whole family and all of our help lined up at the boat rail, and we sang Halloa to the people on the dock. Wait a minute, Bob. The people on the dock are supposed to sing to you. Well, I know, but we outnumbered them. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. Uh, Jack, uh, you said when Bob got here, you tell us what this meeting was all about. Now, what is it? Well, now, look, kids, we're about to start a new season, and naturally, we all wanted to start off big. So I got in touch with my publicity man, Steve Bradley. He told me to have the whole cast here this afternoon. He's going to take a lot of pictures. Oh, that's swell. And that reminds me, Bob, you better get all the boys in your band together, because we'll want some pictures of them, too. Oh, but that might be kind of tough, getting all of them. 
Why? Well, during the summer, they've taken other jobs. Oh. In fact, Frankie Remley formed his own orchestra and is appearing every night at the Cinegrill in the Hollywood Roosevelt. No kidding. <laughs> Frankie Remley's got his own orchestra? Well, uh -huh. good for Frankie. At the cinema, did he get a good deal? Oh, certainly. He had a smart agent. All the men in his band get scale, but Frankie signed for $60 a week and all the drinks he wanted. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, but the second week, the hotel changed that to no drinks and a thousand bucks a week. <laughs> I knew they'd find out sooner or later. So Frankie's working at the center grill. What does he call his orchestra? Well, on the marquee, he bills himself, Frankie Remley and my six convicts. <laughs> what do you know? I bet they play the sweetest music this side of the Chino Honor Farm. <laughs> You know, kids, some night, let's all go down there and we'll... Come in! Hello, 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 everybody! Hello, Benny! Hiya, Steve! Hey, it's good to see no you. No time for chatter. We've got to get this publicity campaign rolling. Now, Benny, first we're going to get a picture of you giving a waiter a $5 tip. Oh. What? <laughs> stage money, stage money. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, Mary, I've got a sympathetic angle for you. We'll show you selling stockings at the May Company. Hey, that's great. You know, that's her old job. What do you mean, old job? That's what I did this summer. <laughs> no kidding. Say, Steve, have you anything planned for Bob Crosby and Dennis Day? Have I? I've got a stunt for Crosby here that'll have his name in newspapers from coast to coast. Hey, that's great. What do I do? You're gonna sue the city where you were born, Spokane, Washington, for ten million dollars. <laughs> Sue them? What for? You're gonna claim they mixed up your birth certificate. You're really Bing, and Bing is you. <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute, Steve. What about my mother? Well, sue her, too! <laughs> That's a great, that's a great idea. What have you got in mind for me? Oh, Dennis boy, you're a cinch. I have an idea that'll make you the most talked of person in the country overnight. Yeah, yeah, what do I have to do? What? Huh? Commit suicide. <laughs> suicide? But I've got to find some novel way for him to do it. Maybe I could eat nothing but chlorophyll and green myself to death. <laughs> Dennis. Wonderful idea, kid. We'll save it for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Look, Steve. Now we got to get some publicity pictures. I've got, I've got my photographer waiting out in the hall. Oh, Frank. Frank. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Are you the photographer? Well, what do you think I am holding up this flashbulb? A glow worm? <laughs> Come on, Frank, let's get moving. First, you'll take some pictures of Benny, and I'll want you to make him look real good. Well, <laughs> this is going to be a challenge to Eastman Kodak. Now, look, you... Quiet till I finish focusing. Now, hold still. Do you want me to smile? You don't have to. I'll get your teeth anyway. This is an X-ray camera. X-ray? You want to make any bones about it? Now, cut that out! Settle it, Steve. How many times I told you I don't want this photographer to take pictures of me? Can't understand that, Benny. You're the only star at CBS who has trouble with him. Mm, it's your own fault, Jack. You antagonize him. I do not. You do, too. <laughs> now, listen, I've had enough out of you. Don't raise your voice to me. This is my house, and I'll do whatever I want. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. That a boy, suck him, suck him. <laughs> I think I will. I was talking to him. <laughs> Oh, you were, eh? Well, I've had enough of this. Steve, out. Out, and take that photographer with you. Okay, Benny, but you're throwing away your future. He had his future 20 years ago. That sends it out, out. Everybody out. <laughs> Bunch of smart Alex. Hmm. Rochester. Fix me something to eat, will you? Yes, sir. I don't know. My first day home, all I have is trouble, trouble, trouble. I know, boss, but it's sure good to have you back. Thanks, Rochester. <laughs> Look.
Ladies and gentlemen, in 30 seconds, I'll be doing my first television show, and I'm having Marilyn Monroe as my guest star through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Robe, which will soon be released in their new process, Cinemascope. Now, the television studio is six miles from this radio studio, and as I said, I only have 30 seconds. You say it's impossible to go six miles in 30 seconds. Believe me, with Marilyn Monroe waiting, I can make it. <laughs> See you in 30 seconds. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, yours truly, Don Wood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 20th, and since tomorrow is the first day of fall, I just barely have time to bring you the last rose of summer, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, if I may be so bold as to criticize your facetious introduction, I should like to point out that there's nothing funny about calling a 38-year-old man the last rose of summer. And now, ladies oh, and gentlemen... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Hold it, hold it. Now, let's get this straight. Did you say you were 38? Yes. But and last now, year, last year you insisted you were 39. That's right. Well, then how can you be 38 now? Don, didn't I just come back from an ocean voyage in the Pacific? What's that got to do with it? Well, you know that when you cross the international date line, you lose a day. <laughs> Certainly, I know that. Well, our skipper got the hiccups, and we crossed it 365 times. <laughs> Some fool hadn't frightened him, I'd have been 37. <laughs> now, let's get on with the program because we have a very important sketch to do. Did you rehearse your part, Mary? Mary, I'm talking to you. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I was just reading this special delivery letter I got from Mama. Oh, another letter from your mother, huh? Uh-huh. Well, what does the white witch doctor of Plainfield <laughs> have to say? <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, and I'll read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, mm -hmm. I haven't written in a long time, and this letter will contain both good news and bad news. Mm. Last week, we heard Jack's first radio program of the season. Now for the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Papa finally bought us a television set. Well, they've got a television set. <laughs> Sunday night, we sat and watched Jack's television show. I liked it, but Papa seemed quite bored until Marilyn Monroe appeared. The repairman charged us $11 to get Papa's head out of the screen. Gosh. Now for some news about your sister, Babe. Oh, boy, this is the part I like. A babe went to Atlantic City for the bathing beauty contest. No kidding. She entered again this year as Miss Coal Miner. <laughs> no. I guess they always pick her because she looks so much like John L. Lewis. <laughs> Poor babe. She has to pay a hairdresser ten bucks for her eyebrows alone, you know. <laughs> no other news, so we're closed now. Your loving mother, Jaja. <laughs> you know, Mary. You know, Mary, sometimes. Sometimes I... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, the song I'm going to sing today Wait is... Wait a minute. A... <laughs> Wait a minute, Dennis. You just came in. Why are you in such a hurry to sing your song? I've got to rush over to the hospital to have my appendix taken out. <laughs> Gosh, that... Wait, Dennis. Didn't you have your appendix taken out last year? Uh-huh. Well, why do you want them to operate again? I joined the Blue Cross and I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> Oh, look, kid, if you've had your appendix taken out once, you can't have it taken out again. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Well, can't they open me up and rummage around a little? <laughs> oh, stop, and don't argue with me anymore. After all, I know more about appendectomies than you do. At rehearsal, he couldn't even pronounce it. <laughs> look, chiss wheeze, be quiet, will you? Now, let's drop the subject. Look. Well, say, say, Jack, I'm glad Mary mentioned rehearsal because before you got here, Rochester phoned. He wanted to talk to you. About what? I don't know. He said it was important and you should call him right back. Okay. Operator. Operator. Say, Mabel, what is it, guy Mr. Benny, 
this line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what gentlemen prefer money wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny? Yes, sir, I'll try him right away. Oh, gosh, Mabel. Ain't it awful getting back to work after a vacation? Yeah. Say, Gertrude, uh, where did you go this summer? Yeah, no place particular. Once, though, I went deep sea fishing. It was awful. I was never so insulted in all my life. Well, why? What happened? When we got back to the dock, some smart aleck hung me up by my feet and had his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you must have been out on that boat a long time You sure got sunburned Why, am I still peeling? Yeah Let's hope what's underneath looks better <laughs> Well, look who's making cracks about looks Tallulah Tankhead <laughs> Anyway, I had fun and I was... Gertrude, Gertrude I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but the line is busy Well, well keep trying and ring me when you get Rochester I wonder who he's talking to on the phone well, I better sing my song now Dennis, can't you sing a little later? No Why not? I've already taken the anesthetic I may be asleep by then <laughs> Now cut that out Just sing your song and stop with that silly talk about anesthetics and your appendix Yes, sir Oh, oh hold it a second, hold it Just a minute, Dennis Mary... I meant to tell you, I saw the latest copy of the Woman's Home Companion, and there's a swell picture of you on the cover. Well, thanks, Don. The song I'm going to sing is... Wait a minute, Dennis. Don, for your information, my picture's on that cover, too. Oh, I know it is, Jack, and I want to ask you something. Why in the world would they use your picture on a woman's magazine? <laughs> Have you ever seen him walk? <laughs> yeah. Shall I sing now? Yeah, sing, sing. Dennis, that was beautiful. You know, every season I think that your voice is so perfect it can't improve. And then the opening of the next season, you surprise me by being better than ever. You really have a wonderful voice, Dennis. You should be proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Somebody take him out of here and wake him up. Oh, I will, Jack. Thanks. Be sure to come back, because boy, you both have parts in our sketch tonight. Uh, Jack, what's the sketch about? Well, Mary, tonight we're going to do our version of that new Technicolor saga of the South Seas, Return to Paradise, which starred Gary Cooper. And I guess you'll play the lead. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I felt that since I had been to the South Pacific, it would give me a good reason to do the picture. He's see? right, Mary, and it'll be a natural for me, too. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, Jack. <laughs> You know, Mary, uh, I was in Hawaii this summer the same time that Jack was. I know, Bob. In fact, the other day I met your wife and she showed me pictures of you riding a surfboard. Yeah, I really went in for that surfboard in a big way. Gosh, it looks awfully hard. Well, it is, but I practiced balancing myself and before I left, I was able to go out into the ocean, get on the board and come all the way into shore standing up. Well, that's more than your musicians can do right here in the studio. <laughs> Believe me, huh? Now, you look, Jack, I told you last week the boys don't like you always picking on them. Oh, these boys don't. No, and I'm warning you. If you say anything tonight about Remley, he's going to sock you. <laughs> That's what his psychiatrist told him to do. <laughs> Wait a minute. R Remley is going to a psychiatrist? Why, he goes every day and he's psychoanalyzed for hours. Just the three of them locked in a room. The three of them? Yeah, the psychiatrist, Frankie, and that little green man on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, you mean Clyde. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Yeah. Anyway, the psychiatrist explained that there really isn't any little man there. Remley just thinks so because he drinks so much. Well, do you think the psychiatrist will cure him from drinking? Well, he didn't get to Frankie. He's still working on Clyde. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know Clyde drank. <laughs> anyway, Bob, that's what's wrong with your boy. That's all they think about. They never pay any attention to their music. Oh, not all of them, Jack. You take Bagby, the piano player, for instance. Now, he's not like that a bit. He's very serious about his music, and he studies all he can. Oh, he does, huh? 
Well, let me show you something. Hey, Bagby. Yeah? Come here a minute, will you? He studies music. He knows all about music, everything. Huh? Charlie, I'd like to ask you a few questions about music. Now, how many pedals are there on your piano? Three. Mm-hmm, right. What are these three pedals for? Water, soda, and ginger ale. <laughs> Water, soda, and ginger ale? The electric guitar makes ice cubes. <laughs> you can sit down again, Bagby. <laughs> what a bunch of guys. They didn't have this program. They'd all starved to death. <laughs> Don't you be so sure. Why, a couple of weeks ago, Remley made an appearance on the Ralph Edwards show, This Is Your Life. And they dramatized Remley's life? No, Clyde's. <laughs> Look, I'd love to continue this intellectual discussion, but we got to get on with the show. Don, set the scene for the sketch. Uh, Don is out in the hall with Dennis. Oh, for heaven's sake. Is Dennis still asleep? Uh-huh. What's he sleeping on? Don. Oh, well, look, and I'll set the scene myself. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will present our version of that current United Artists release, Return to Paradise. And in this sketch, I will play the part of... Hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, I tried to call you back. What did you want? The insurance adjuster was over to see you about that accident in the Maxwell. Oh, yes, yes, that accident to my car. Did he ask you any questions? Yes, sir. First he asked if you were a reckless driver, and I said no. Good. Then he asked if you were on the right side of the street when the accident happened, and I said yes. Uh-huh. Then he asked me if you were exceeding the speed limit. What did you say? Nothing. We both laughed and went on to the next question. <laughs> oh, what was the next question? Uh, what was... What was the next question the insurance man asked you? He wanted to know how come you turned left after you signaled for a right turn. Do you explain that to him? Uh-huh. I told him when you ain't got a steering wheel, you've got to depend on the wind. <laughs> well, certainly. Did you describe the accident to the adjuster? Yes, sir. I told him that as soon as you started to turn the wrong way, you jammed on your brakes and stopped. And that's when the man hit your car and turned it over. And it was all his fault. That's right. He had no business jaywalking. <laughs> you said it. Is the adjuster still there? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Benny. He left. Well, I got to get on with the program. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. All right, Don, set the scene for our sketch. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of the Technicolor Saga of the South Seas, Return to Paradise. Our story starts 25 years ago on the island of Matareva, a tiny spot of land seemingly lost in the vast expanse of the Pacific, peaceful in appearance, lush with tropical undergrowth. My name is Gary Benny. <laughs> I just landed on the island of Matareva after 14 continuous days of rowing. I was hungry, but that didn't worry me because I knew these tropical islands abounded in papayas. I never could figure out why there were so many papayas, because I never saw any mamayas. <laughs> I was walking along the beach, a native came up to me and said, Aloha. Aloha. Me chief of island. Oh, for a minute, me thought you was island. <laughs> the chief said he would talk to his tribe to see if I could stay. He took me away and put me in a little grass shack. For three days, I did nothing but sit in my little grass shack and watch the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apuwaha go swimming by. <laughs> then they told me I could stay, and in my honor, they would have a feast that night. 
I was just getting ready to leave my shack when she walked. <laughs> she was wearing some kind of native garment that fitted her like a glove. I looked again. It was a glove. <laughs> Then she smiled at me and said, Me chief's daughter. Me come to take you to Luau. Good. But tell me, just what is a Luau? It is native feast with bananas, berries, pineapple, coconuts, roast pig, steamed fish, and Cimarron rolls. <laughs> God. Then, when everybody is full, we bow and give thanks to Great White Father. Who is Great White Father? Eisenhower, we still on Len Lease. <laughs> As we walked to the Luau, she told me her name was Maeva. Maeva was beautiful. Not as beautiful as Sinatra's Ava, but beautiful. <laughs> After the feast, they passed around a bowl of their native drink from which all the warriors drank. The man sitting next to me handed to me, saying, Here, you drink. What's in it? Okula, Maluna, Opanu Nui. What does that mean in English? Manashevavavit's wine. <laughs> the luau progressed, and soon the music started. playing the piano <laughs> using the third pedal <laughs> life was pleasant on the island and as time went on I fell in love with my Ava one day I went up to her and said my Ava will you marry me me no can marry you you commoner me princess my Ava had been acting this way ever since her picture was on the cover of woman's home companion <laughs> but I did not give up I continued courting her. One day we were at a picnic with the natives. The islanders were all in a happy mood as they talked to each other. Makahila mulahuma malahini upa alahaya kokomoko. Nui nui ma ukalala pua muli poi poi poo. Pango pango bora kilani nui aratunga. Poi hapa nui hapa. Mia la hula hula kila hola. Lua nui. No doubt about it. That new Hawaiian writer I hired is terrific. <laughs> Aiva was in a happy mood too, and once again I proposed to her. This time she told me the real reason why she wouldn't marry me it was on account of the ruler of the island, a cruel dictator they call the Master. I decided to let the Master know I was coming to see him by using the jungle telephone system, the native drums. Leilani. <laughs> what is it, Mahila? <laughs> Mr. Benny's drum is beating. Yeah, I wonder what the goon of Manakura wants now. <laughs> I'll answer him and find out. She let the master know I was coming and I went to his house. He was a cruel ruler. He never let the natives have any fun. He wouldn't allow the native boys to go with the native girls. Also found out that it was he who wouldn't let the papayas have any mamaya. <laughs> I entered his house, and when I came face to face with him, I said, Sir, I come to you not with anger in my heart, but with love. I would like to marry my Ava and live in this beautiful paradise, in some little grass shack nestled under the lush palm trees, cooled by the balmy breezes. Ah! Shut up! (laughs) 
But, sir... You no can marry my Eva. Wait a minute. Why are you so harsh? Why don't you allow the natives to enjoy themselves? If me no have fun, no one have fun. Why can't you have any fun? My appendix is killing me. <laughs> well, look, master. I love my Eva, and I want to marry her. Okay, me talk him over with my advisor. Malihini inui pau pelikia kini popo pake mane o Darton. No, no, ito ori akanoa bara opa huka pau. Who's that? Clyde. <laughs> they held another consultation and sent me away from the island. They cast me adrift. As the current began to carry me away, I looked back at the distant shore, and there standing on the beach was my ape. I was many miles away, but I could still see her because she was standing on her 200 copies of the Woman's Home Companion. <laughs> that is my story, but it is not complete. For someday I shall return to paradise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my second radio program of the season. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time and every Sunday after that until June 6th. Oh boy, here it is vacation again. <laughs> Good night, folks. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, every Saturday morning after rehearsal, the Jack Benny cast usually drops into the corner drugstore for a light lunch. As the scene opens, all of us, with the exception of Jack, have just entered the drugstore. <laughs> hey, we're lucky, fellas. It isn't crowded at all. Yeah, we can have our regular table. Well, let's sit down. Hey, Jack wants to finish his business at the studio. He's standing on the corner on the other side of the street. I wonder what the private business was he had to take care of. Well, he went up to see Mr. Ackerman, the vice president of CBS. This is the day Jack is giving the network his ultimatum. Well, what ultimatum? Either CBS gives him free parking or he's going back to NBC. <laughs> See, that'll never work. Well, why not? That's why he left NBC in the first place. <laughs> That's right. Oh, here we are, Jack. Okay. Sorry I took so long. Uh, what did you, what did you kids order? Oh, nothing. We were waiting for you. Oh, then I'll, I'll call the waitress. Oh, miss? Miss? What do you want, Mac? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'd like to order some food. Do you have a menu? Yeah, here. Thanks. Now, let me see. Hey, wait a minute. This is the menu from the Brown Derby. I know. The stuff on ours would turn your stomach. <laughs> Hmm. Say, look, miss, uh, all I want is just an egg sandwich and a glass of milk. Well, I'll have the same. Okay. Now, miss, miss. What do you want, calf on boy? <laughs> now, wait a minute, miss. Maybe I have to take those kind of insults when I'm on the radio, but I don't have to take them from you. Gee, I'm sorry, Mac. I didn't know you were sensitive. Well, I am. You don't have to presume I'm not sensitive just because I'm a big, fat slob. <laughs> Don, control yourself. All right. Now, miss, I'd like to order. All I want is a bowl of vegetable soup. Okay. Dennis. Dennis, what do you have? Well, let me see. Uh, miss, do you have any vichyssoise? No. Well, uh, do you have any escargot saute en vin rose? No. Well, how about shish kebab and crepla? <laughs> no. Dennis, this is only a drugstore. Why are you ordering things like that? I wanted to know I've been around. 
Stop being silly. Order something you'd get in a drugstore. Okay. I'll have a chicken sandwich. With mayonnaise? No, toothpaste. <laughs> Cut that out! <laughs> Liz, just bring him a chicken sandwich. That's all. Now go get the food. Okay, Mac. I'll be back in a flash with the trash. <laughs> Never mind, just go get it. You know, it's, it's hard to believe that she used to do the commercials on the Lady Esther program. <laughs> now look, uh, Dennis, when we do the show... Wait a minute, where did Dennis go? I don't know. Oh, there he is, over by the jukebox. Hey, look, they got one of my records here. Well, why don't you play it, Dennis? I can't, I haven't got a nickel. <laughs> Has anybody got a nickel? Oh, I haven't. Neither have I. All I have is a dime. I can change it. <laughs> Jack Benny, I... Ought... All right, all right. Here's the nickel, Dennis. Catch. <laughs> Gee, that was beautiful. It sure was. Say, Dennis, will you look in the jukebox, see if there are any... Now, where did that kid go? I don't know. He disappeared while his record was on. Oh. Say, Bob, I've been meaning to tell you how much I enjoy your CBS television show. Oh, me too, Bob. Yeah, same here. You know, Bob, I watch your shows every afternoon, and they're very good. Well, thanks, Jack. But I have a little suggestion, you know, just a little constructive criticism. I thought that if you got a comedy guest star occasionally, you'd get... <laughs> You'd get more laughs on the program. Yeah, but Jack, we don't go in for guest stars. Mine is sort of a homey show. Well, Bob, homey show or not homey, I still think it's a big lift to have a guest star come in, particularly a comedian. Well, maybe so, but gee, we don't have much money in the budget. Well, uh, how much? How much can you pay for a guest star? <laughs> well, about uh, fifteen bucks. For fifteen bucks, Jack can be homey. <laughs> I know a lot of recipes. <laughs> anyway, Bob, it's a very good show. And... Hey, did the rest of you finish eating already? Yes, Dennis, where were you? Well, I thought as long as we were in a drugstore, I'd weigh myself. Oh. I weigh 140 pounds, stripped. <laughs> stripped? I took the weighing machine into the phone booth. <laughs> Look, Dennis. And when I put in a penny, a, a little card came out. Well, what did it say? Put on your pants, kid. A lady wants to use the phone. <laughs> well, Dennis, stop. Stop already. Will you stop being silly? Oh, he's not being silly, Jack. Uh, sometimes those things just happen by coincidence. Oh, sure, sure. Well, that's the truth. Once I put a penny in the scale, and you ought to see the card that came out. Well, what did it say? Get off. You're hurting me. <laughs> Well, that, I believe. That could happen. I hate to break up this roundtable discussion, but will there be anything else? Mm, not for me. Anyone want anything? Not me. Well, I've had enough. Okay, here's the check. Oh, well, I'll take it, miss. No, no, Bob. Let me pay it. It's my turn today. Oh, now, wait a minute, John. You paid last time. I'll pay today. No, no. Bob paid last time. Now it's my turn. No, Don, you're, you're wrong. Dennis paid the last time, and, and now it's my turn. Oh, for heaven's sakes, fellas. Let's all go Dutch. Mary, it's their argument. Keep out. <laughs> it doesn't concern you. Either. Hey, Blue Eyes, how come you never pay a check? Did you take a pledge or something? <laughs> For your information, miss, it just so happens that the last time I picked up the check. You had to. You were alone. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. Oh, miss, I'll pay it. Here, keep the change. Thanks. I've got a car outside. Anybody want a lift? Oh, not me. It's such a nice day. I'm going to walk. Oh, say, Don, I've got to go over and see my brother about something. And say, you pass Bing's house on your way home, don't you? Yeah, Bob. Well, would you mind dropping me off at his gate? Look, I'll drive you right up to his door. No, no, just drop me at the gate. I'll take a bus the rest of the way. <laughs> Gee, he must, he must have a big place. Huh? Well, so long, Mary. So long, Jack. Bye, so long, Don. so long. See you at the show. Yeah, so long, Don. See you later. Gee, 
see. It's still early and the weather's so nice. I, I think I'll go out and play nine holes of golf. Mary, that's a wonderful idea and I'll join you. Uh, can you drive me by the house? I've got to pick up my golf clubs. Sure, my car's right in that parking lot. Good, you get the car meet me at the corner. I want to get a newspaper. All right, see you in a couple of minutes. Okay. Gee, that Bob Crosby's a nice guy. Imagine him giving the waitress a dollar tip. See, I'll bet it made her feel good. I got a thrill out of it, and I was only watching. <laughs> now, let's see. I want to get a paper. Let's see, which paper do I want to get? Hi, Rube. Huh? Oh, it's my friend from Calabasas. <laughs> Well, gosh, I haven't seen you in nearly a year. Well, tell me, what are you doing here in Los Angeles? Huh? I came to get some supplies from a farm. I just bought an electric milking machine. You need an electric milker for your car? Yeah, it's kind of hard to squeeze out a living by hand. Ain't that a humdinger? Yeah. <laughs> Heard it on a homie show the other afternoon. <laughs> Could that have been Bob's? I don't know. Is that all you have on your farm, just cows? Oh, no, no, no. Main crop is grapes. We operate our own winery. Well, that sounds like a nice, pleasant occupation. Pleasant, but dangerous, Rube. Dangerous. In fact, just a short time ago, my uncle fell into one of those big vats full of wine and drowned. Your uncle drowned in wine? Yep. Took the mortician five days to get the smile off his face. <laughs> well... Well, I can't understand how... Oh, I'm sorry. That car is honking for me. I got to go now. Nice running into you. Goodbye. So long, Rube. So long, so long. <laughs> Here I am, Mary. Hi, Rube. Oh, stop. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. Gee, I'm glad we finished rehearsal early. Such a nice day for golf. Yeah. Well, here we are, Jack. Run in and get your clubs. Want to come in the house for a minute, Mary? No, I'll wait out here in the car. Okay. Show you my etchings. <laughs> Won't take me long. <laughs> Is that you, Mr. Benny? Yes, Rochester. Uh, would you like me to fix you some lunch? No, thanks. I just... Wait a minute, Rochester. What are you doing with my violin? I'm going to put it back in the case. That violin's been lying around ever since you went off the air last June. That long? Uh-huh. In fact, it's got mold all over it. Well, did you wipe it off? No, sir. Why not? Boss, mold makes penicillin, and that thing needs all the help it can get. <laughs> Never mind. And clean it up good, because I'm going to play my violin on my television show next Sunday. No! Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, look, I'm going out to play some golf with Miss Livingston. Oh, your clubs are in the closet. I know. And, Roger, at 5 o'clock, I want you to drive out to the clubhouse and bring me home. I can't, Mr. Billy. The mechanics are working on your Maxwell down at the garage. Why, what's wrong with my car? Nothing. It's just time for its million mile checkup. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll have Miss Livingston drive me home. Now, Rochester, don't bother about dinner tonight because I'm going out. Okay. But, boss. Yeah? Well, it's none of my business, but I think you ought to stay home tonight with Polly. With the parrot? Yeah, she's been acting awfully funny lately. She's, uh, she's so moody. Oh, I think you're imagining it, Rochester. Parrots don't get moody. Well, Polly is, and she's doing the strangest things. What do you mean? R remember that coconut you bought her? Yeah, did she eat it? Eat it? She's trying to hatch it. <laughs> Well, maybe I'd better go in and take a look at her. Hello, Polly. <laughs> she, she, she won't look at me. Polly, it's me, Daddy. Now, Polly, stop sitting on that coconut. <laughs> I wonder what's wrong with her. Imagine her trying to hatch it. Say, Rochester, that's it. The poor thing's all alone. So she... I don't know. She doesn't, she doesn't know any better. 
I think I'll buy a mate for her. Buy a mate, buy a mate. Ah! <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny, remember the last time you bought her a mate? You had those two parents in the same cage for over a year, and then you discovered they were both females. Yeah. I wonder how that happened. Somebody goofed. <laughs> Well, don't look at me as though I'm stupid, Polly. You didn't know yourself for nearly a year. <laughs> Gee, Rochester, now, now you've got me kind of worried. For heaven's sake, Jack, what's taking you so long? I'm sorry, Mary, but Polly isn't feeling well. Oh, that's too bad. The poor thing, what's wrong with her? Miss Livingston, she just sits around her cage all day brooding. It's been going on for weeks now. Oh, Jack, you ought to do something. Why don't you take her to a psychiatrist? A psychiatrist? Mary, this is no time for joking. I'm not joking. They have psychiatrists for animals. I know one right near here. All right. I'll get Polly and we'll go. Uh, Jack, here's the doctor's office. You go with Polly and I'll wait outside in the car. Okay. Yes, sir. May I help you? Well, are, are you the psychiatrist? Uh, yes, sir. I am Dr. Hugo Brown, a Ph.D. Ph.D.? Parrots, horses, and dogs. <laughs> uh, those are my specialties, but I take care of all animals. Oh, well, I've come to see you about my parrot here. I think she has some sort of a complex. Very, what seems to be wrong with the little lady? Well, she's very melancholy lately, and today I gave her a coconut and she tried to hatch it. Could it be possible that birds long for motherhood? Oh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how long has she been acting so moody? For a few weeks. Before that, she was always jolly. She used to love to listen to the radio and television. You know? A parrot that enjoyed radio and television? This I cannot believe. <laughs> Pepper mate, panish mate, bro. I believe. <laughs> now, to help her, maybe it would be good if you told me something about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'm Jack Benny. Oh, and... oh yes, yes, you look familiar. <laughs> well, uh, in addition to yourself, Mr. Benny, how many people come in contact with this parrot? Well, there's my valet, my cast, and my six writers. Uh huh. And uh, what is this parrot's name? Polly. It took six writers to think of that? <laughs> Look, Doctor. Was, uh, never mind, never mind. Now, tell me, how old is this parrot? Well, let me figure it out. See, the man in the pet shop where I bought her said she was born in 1894. That would make her... <laughs> 39. <laughs> Where does she get such delusions? I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, you say this parrot listens to radio. Does she like music? Oh, she loves music. Good, good. I will give her a word association test. Word association about music? Yes. I will give her a word, and by automatic reflex, she will say the first thing that comes into her mind. Oh, good, good. Now, Polly, listen. Piano. Liberace. <laughs> Clarinet. Pretty good one. Violin. Penicillin. <laughs> that I do not understand at all. It must have been something she heard, you know. Obviously. Uh, now, to continue the word test. Listen, Polly. Father. <laughs> Mother. Baby. Climb ah, upon my knee, silly boy. <laughs> you are only three, silly boy. <laughs> you know where you know it. You're right. Oh, oh, you know baby. baby. That's what Please I thought. Please, silly boy. Silly Polly, boy, be quiet. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I'll go to the pet shop and get an egg. Oh, silly boy, silly boy. <laughs> Polly, <laughs> control yourself. Stop <laughs> crying. <laughs> Polly, we're going back to the pet shop. We know now. Mother, Polly, Polly, I'll get your name. You're a from heaven. Polly, I'll get your name. Let's go. Polly, Polly, Polly. Jack, where did the 
car to say about Polly? Oh, she'll be all right. All birds get moody once in a while. Ah, it's a shame we missed our golf game, but maybe we can play next week. No, Mary, I'm going to be busy all week rehearsing for my television show next Sunday. Gosh, Jack, are you going to be on television that often? Mary, read that line the way we rehearsed it. Gosh, Jack, are you going to be on television that often? That's better. <laughs> the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, in exactly one half hour, Jack Benny will do his television show. But right now, let's go back to yesterday and look in on Jack as he's having breakfast at home. Would you like another waffle, boss? No, thanks, Rochester. I've had enough. You might as well go on with your work. But, boss, so far this morning, I made the beds, cleaned the rugs, waxed the floors, polished the furniture, scrubbed the linoleum, washed the windows, trimmed the hedge, and mowed the lawn. Say, you have done a lot of work. Yeah, considering this is my day off. <laughs> now, well, in that case, Rochester, I'll wash the dishes. You don't have to wash the dishes, boss. Didn't you notice I used paper plates? Oh, yes, I meant to ask you, why'd you use paper plates today? Because this is National Save a Wife Week. Well, what is what has Save a Wife Week got to do with you and me? Boss, my contract reads till death do us part, so I fall in that category. <laughs> Oh, stop exaggerating. Who's exaggerating? When I first came to work here, I carried the vacuum cleaner over the threshold. <laughs> Can I help it if you're sentimental? <laughs> anyway, don't make such a big... Rochester, what are you doing? Scraping the butter off your plate. Now, don't be silly. I hardly touched that butter. Put it back in the refrigerator. Okay. And that jam on the plate, that's enough for another meal. But, boss... And that slice of bread, that can be toasted. But can I throw something away? Why? We've had that garbage disposal for two years and we don't even know if it works. <laughs> well, if you're so curious, buy something and throw it in. <laughs> now, come on, help me set the chairs up in the living room. I invited my cast over to watch the World Series game today on TV. I'll get the door. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. You know, Jack, as I was coming up the walk, I noticed that the fence the Coleman's put up between your house and theirs looks a lot better now. Yes, the ivy has almost covered the barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing it would grow with all that electricity. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, Mary, I haven't seen Ronnie and Benita Coleman in a long time. Oh, I have, Jack. As a matter of fact, I was at a party at their house last night. The Coleman's gave a party? Gee, they live right next door. Had I known it, I'd have dropped over. Well, Jack, it was the most unusual party. Really? The lights were out, the shades were drawn, and everybody had a whisper. <laughs> oh, well, Ronnie and Benita probably didn't want to disturb the people who live on the other side of them. Uh, they were at the party. <laughs> Can't understand them not inviting me. Well, don't feel bad about it, Jack, because everybody who came to the party asked about you. They did? They asked about mm -hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Before they took off their hats and coats, they said, Is Jack Benny here? <laughs> oh, well, that was nice. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Rochester. The rest of my gang will be here soon. You better get some refreshments ready. Yes, sir. Are you going to push the hot dogs or the penis today? <laughs> You're not going to push anything. They'll look, they'll see. If they like, they'll buy. <laughs> Just have an attractive display. Okay. Mary, as soon as everybody gets here... We... Come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hi, kid. You want to make a bet on the World Series? A bet? Put up or shut up. <laughs> Look, Dennis, I didn't even get a chance. Come on, to... put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Dennis, I'm trying to tell you I didn't get oh, a... Oh, Jack, don't get yourself so excited. But he hasn't given... 
Look, Janice, just let's relax, watch the game, and enjoy ourselves. Don't try to talk me out of it. This is one series I've got to make a bet on. Well, all right, all right, if you insist. Who do you want in the series? Who's playing? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Uh, Jack. Mary. Hey, Mary, watch this. I'm going to teach this kid a lesson once and for all. Now, Dennis, since you seem to feel you have to make a bet on the series, all right, put up $5 and let Mary hold it. Okay. Here, Mary, here's my $5. Here's mine, Mary. Now, Dennis... Listen to this, Mary. Now, Dennis, the two teams that are playing in this World Series are the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Milwaukee Braves. The Pirates and the Braves? Yes. Now, which one do you want? The Yankees. <laughs> You led me to believe you don't know nothing about baseball. Now, when we made the bet, why did you pick the Yankees? I wanted to teach you a lesson once and for all. Well, the bet is off. Now, let me hear the song you're going to do on the show, and that's all. Okay. What a sore loser. Yes, sir. <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Very good. That'll be fine on the show. Well, thanks, Mr. Benny. I hope you're not mad at me because I wanted to make a bet with you. No, I'm not mad. You see, I need some extra money because I want to buy my mother a birthday present. Oh, when's her birthday? Wednesday. And she's having a big party. She's going to have an orchestra and dancing and singing, cake and ice cream and everything. Hey, that sounds like fun. Where's it going to be? I don't know. I'm not invited. <laughs> You know, Dennis, I don't blame your mother, and it serves you right. You're such a silly kid that nobody wants you around. That's why they don't ask you anywhere. I was at Ronald Coleman's party. <laughs> Dennis, you were invited to the Coleman's house? Is that right, Mary? Oh, yes, Jack. They even asked him to sing the theme song of the party. The party had a theme song? What was it? Whispering. <laughs> Look, I don't want to hear any more about that whispering party at Coleman's. Now, the kids, the game should be starting soon, so let's go into... Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Bob, where are you? I thought you were coming over today. Well, I was, Jack, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to stick around the house. You know, my brother Bing just got in from Elko, and he's staying with us. Well, brother Bing, that's a good thing you got a guest room. Oh, you're not kidding. Gee, my wife and my kids and I, we moved into it, and Bing's got the rest of the house. <laughs> well, gee, doesn't that make things a little cramped? Yeah, but you know Bing, he never complains. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, give him my regards, will you? I will. Must be nice having your brother around. Well, it is, but, gee, you have to do such strange things to make him happy. What strange things? Well, have you ever taken a bath in Minute Maid orange juice? <laughs> No, I used to take a lot of baths in Jell-O, though. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you can't come over, Bob. Well, gee, so am I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. By the way, Jack. Yes? I meant to tell you, I went over to the center grill the other night to see Frankie Remley and his Makes You Want to Sit This Dance Out orchestra. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> Remley's Orchestra, huh? Say, Bob, I'd like to ask you something. Since you lead an orchestra, too, I want your honest opinion. How do you think Frankie looks standing in front of the band? Oh, he looks wonderful, Jack. Huh? He was playing the guitar, and he had a big smile on his face. See, the only thing is that he might have been nervous or something, but, well, I thought his manner was just a little too formal. You mean he was stiff? That, too. <laughs> No! <laughs> well, Bob, the next time... <laughs> the next time you go down to the center grill, call me and I'll go with you. I want Frankie to see me there. Well, then we better go early. Why? Well, after 9.30, everybody looks alike to him. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, Bob, I gotta hang up. There's somebody at the door. Okay, so long. Goodbye. I'll get it, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Well, hello, Mary. Thought I'd be the first one here. No, Dennis and I are both here. Oh. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hi, Dennis. Put up or shut up. 
Dennis, please. Don, do me a favor. Will you sit down? Where? On Dennis. <laughs> Jack, uh, let's go in the den and turn on the television set. It's almost time for the game. Okay. Oh, look, there's no rush. We've got nearly an hour before the game starts. No, Don, I've got five minutes to ten. Oh, that's funny. I've got a quarter after nine. Don, let me see your watch. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How can a man of your dignity go around wearing a Mickey Mouse wristwatch? <laughs> you gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was a mistake. I meant to give it to Sammy the drummer. <laughs> he can't tell time, and I thought he'd enjoy the picture. <laughs> well, kids, it's about time, so let's go in the other room and... Oh, now, who can that be? I get it. Hello, Jack. Leo, Leo DeRosha. Well, Leo DeRosha, this is really a surprise. Well, Jack, I happened to be passing by, so I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Well, that's wonderful. Most of the gang is here, and we were just going to watch the game. Game? What game? <laughs> <laughs> what game? The World Series. The World Series? The season's over. Why do they have to squeeze in another few games? <laughs> Wait a minute, Leo. I know how you feel, but you can't win the pennant every year. Don't tell me you're sore. Oh, on the contrary, Jack. I've been in organized baseball 20 years, and I consider this has been my most successful season. Why? I was only fined $1,000. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Hey, hey, come on, Jack. We'll miss the game. Okay, but look who's here, gang. Leo DeRosha. Leo, you know my cast. Oh, sure. Hello, Mary. Hello, Leo. Good to see you. Hello, Don. Hi, Leo. Hello, Dennis. Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hey, kid, aren't we lucky Leo dropped in? Now we can watch the game with an expert. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. Oh, don't be so modest, Leo. There isn't a thing you don't know about the game. Mary's right, Leo. Why, well, I consider you the finest manager in baseball. If he's so great, what's he doing here today? <laughs> Dennis, but Leo, don't... <laughs> Leo, don't, don't pay any attention to him. He's always this way. Put up or shut up. <laughs> Leo, uh, please, don't pay any attention. He's always like uh, that. Well, for a minute, I thought he was being once too often. <laughs> well, he certainly acts like it. Oh, say, Leo, I hate to bring up a touchy subject, but what happened to the Giants this year? Mm -hmm. Well, Don, actually, we planned the same strategy we used two years ago. We figured to start slow and let the other teams get overconfident. Then along about July, we'd slowly begin to pick up steam, and in the home stretch, we'd pull up fast, and as the season ended, we'd have them in the bag. In the bag? Now, right now, my boys are selling peanuts at Ebbets Field. <laughs> oh, very good, Leo, very good. Boss, I've got this television set on. The game's about to begin. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's go in the den. Hey, is the game starting? Pretty soon, boss. Yes, sir, here we go. Hey, this is as much fun as if we were really at the... What happened? What happened? What happened? The picture went off. Oh, for heaven's sake. How do you like that? We'll miss the opening of the game. Don, you try to fix the television set. Okay. Now, I'll get it on the radio. Let's see what station it's on here. No, no, don't leave me, Rodney Quagmire. <laughs> Rodney Quagmire? I've tried so hard to be a good wife to you. You can't leave me now. If not for what me, think this? of the children. Okay. I'm walking behind. <laughs> I'm any day. And I'll hear you promise to love me. Why can't I get love the game? <laughs> Though you may forget me. Oh. Isn't this mind. awful? Where's the ball game? A long, long fly. Yes, a long, long fly. 
That's it. That's the game. If you have the long ones in your house, call the Acme Exterminator. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, I thought that was the game Oh, let me try it, Jack Maybe the station is back here Go ahead, Leo Albert, Bruce, Robert, <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie <laughs> Oh, it sounds like the boy Alice, player Henry, Helen, Betty, Toulouse Toulouse? <laughs> Must be a pinch hitter <laughs> Hey, Jack, we're missing the game I'm trying, I'm trying to get it Maybe I'll kiss the I get the game here. Our sponsor is happy to bring you this game. And now back to your World Series announcer. Well, that was an exciting game. <laughs> That's it. I've got it. And here we go into the top of the fifth. Now coming up to bat for the Dodgers is Roy Campanella. As you know, Allie Reynolds is pitching for the Yankees. Here's the wind-up. The pitch. Ball one. Gee, I'm glad we got the game. Reynolds winds up again. Here comes the pitch. Ball two. Gee, I bet he walks them. Reynolds winds up again. There's the pitch. <laughs> Strike! <laughs> Reynolds has a wonderful slow ball. I would have loved to have seen that one on television. Don, hurry and fix the set. I'm working on it. Here's the next pitch. There goes Campanella running down the first, but it's a pop-up over the infield, and coming in to take it for the out is Sam Houston. Sam Houston? It was a Texas leaguer. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, what's wrong with this set now? And our eldest son who ran away from home, Rodney Quagmire Jr. Oh. I wonder what became of him. Why can't I get this game? Here? Yes, folks, Hodges is now on first base as the result of a walk. Gee, Hodges walked. And the count on Pee Wee Reese is three balls, no strikes. Here comes the next pitch. Ball four. Hodges advances to second. And as Reese goes down to first, he is saying to Hodges... Walking behind you. What's wrong with this radio? I want to listen to the game. All I can get is a crummy singer and some woman with 48 children. Oh, so we're here in a thrilling game of the World Series. This is your announcer, Rodney Quagmire Jr. <laughs> I'd just like to say hello to my tired old mother. <laughs> See, if Mrs. Mac Quagmire ever goes to this is your life, it'll be an hour show. And now Duke Snyder is at the plate. Here comes the pitch. <laughs> Snyder hits the first pitch, and it's going, going over the fence on the west side of the field. It's going, going, still going, going, going. Well, it looks like Snyder is bringing Major League Baseball to Los Angeles all by himself. He must really have hit that one. Jack, Jack, I got the television set fixed. Good. Come on, Leo. Let's sit here. Okay, Jack. Let me get that set down. I, I know what channel it's on. If things go on here, and No, time, not on television, too. Uh, look over your shoulder. I'm walking behind. I'll try another channel. Hey, hey, that's it. Gee, and it's a nice, clear picture, too. Yeah. Oh, look, the Yankees are at bat. Brooklyn must have been put out. Well, that makes the count two and two on Rizzuto. You mean they have that same crazy announcer on television, too? <laughs> Quiet, Jack. I want to watch him pitch to Rizzuto. Okay, Leo. Here we go. Campanella's behind the plate again. Preacher Rowe is on the mound. And here comes Whitey Lockman. Whitey Lockman? He's with the Giants. Peanuts, peanuts, get your hot roast. <laughs> that up, boy, Whitey. Sell him, sell him. <laughs> what is 
is this, anyway? Rizzuto's at bat. Here comes the pitch. And Rizzuto lines one into center field. He's rounding first. He's trying to stretch it to a double. There he goes. Here comes the relay. Rizzuto slides, and he's out. Out? Yes, out. Why, well, you bum, he was safe by a mile. Don't tell me I said he was out. Leo. That's final. Go on, you haven't called one right all day. Oh, yeah? Leo. Don't tell me my business. You couldn't see that play if you were wearing Jack Benny's glasses. Leo, leave me out of this. Are you trying to insult me? Insult you? Why, if I was Leo. there in New York, I'd punch you right in the nose. That does it. I'm throwing you out of the game. What? You heard me. Get out. Out, out. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll fix you. Leo, put down that chair. Leo, don't smash my television. Leo. <laughs> Leo! I've never been so insulted in my life. I'm going home. Oh, for heaven's sake. Once, why can't I hear the World Series game? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Leo DeRocha for not winning the pennant so he could be on my show tonight. <laughs> and, uh, incidentally, at 7 p.m., I'll be doing my TV show over the CBS television network. Say, Leo, why don't you come over with me and watch my television show? Leo. Leo, where are you? I'm walking behind <laughs> you. Good night, folks. See you at 7. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after living for 15 years at the same address in Beverly Hills, our little star recently decided to put his house up for sale. So let's go out to Camden Drive where we find Jack showing a prospective buyer through the premises. Well, I guess I've shown you about everything, Mr. and Mrs. Borden. It's quite a nice house. Yes, it's just about what we had in mind. Good, good. Naturally, I wouldn't want to high-pressure you into a sale because I don't believe in doing business that way. But where else at the price can you find a home with this square footage, quality of workmanship, choice location, uh, and... Mr. Benny, you're squeezing my arm. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, I guess I got carried away. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you like it. Mr. Benny, to maintain a house this size, I imagine you must have a butler, a gardener, a cook, a chauffeur, an upstairs maid, and a downstairs maid. Yes, yes, I have. Well, where are they? Here I am, sir. <laughs> Rochester. If I ever get fired, I can collect 12 unemployment checks. <laughs> Never mind. Well, Mr. Benny, I think we've seen all we need to, and uh, we'll let you know. Now, come along, Martha. But I haven't even told you about the neighbors. See, right next door are my dear friends, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman? Yes, ma'am. Here, look out this window. That's Ronnie Benita's house. Where? Right there. You can just make out the tip of the chimney over his fence. <laughs> See? Say, that's some fence. You should see it at night when they shoot electricity through it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Mr. Borden, this house seems to fit your needs, and if you want to leave a small deposit, I'll be very happy. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Rochester, I thought that plumber finished upstairs. No, he just had to go back to the shop for more, too. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. I'll be back in a second, folks. Rochester, show them the closet space in this room in the hall. Hmm. Just as I had the deal almost closed, that darn plumber had to start pounding on the pipes. Say, fella, look, fella, I'm trying to sell the house. Would you mind being a little more quiet? Look, bud, I'm in no mood for complaints. <laughs> Why, what's the matter? What's the matter? Did you ever spend three hours on your back looking up at the bottom of a rusty sink bowl? <laughs> huh? This ain't Cinerama. <laughs> well, Well, I... next time, think before you criticize. I'm not criticizing. I just don't see why you have to make such a racket with that hammer. Because the hammer is made out of metal and the pipes is made out of metal. <laughs> 
Well, isn't there some way you can muffle the sound? Well, sure, if you'll be kind enough to help me. What can I do? Put your head between the pipe and the hammer. <laughs> well, just finish up the job and get out of here. Can't understand it. Other people hire plumbers and get a plumber. I hire a plumber and get a Milton Berle. <laughs> well, folks, as I was saying, Rochester, Rochester, where's Mr. and Mrs. Borden? They left, but they said they were interested in the house and they'd think about it. Oh, well, I hope they... I'll get that, Rochester. There's probably somebody else who wants to buy the house. How do you do? Step right... Oh, it's you, Mary. Stop bowing. I'm not going to buy your house. I know, I know. Come on in. I thought it was another prospect. You know, they've been coming in droves. Mm, no so a sale yet, huh? No, no soul yet. <laughs> I rehearsed it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, Mary. No sale yet. And gee, I can't understand it, Mary. Here's a beautiful home, 28 rooms, gorgeous grounds, large swimming pool, and the location... Jack, you're squeezing my arm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me ask you something. Why do you want to sell this house anyway? Look, Mary, I'm here all alone, just me and Rochester. What do I need with a house that has 28 rooms? Jack, you mean to say this house has 28 rooms? Certainly. There's the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, the den, the library, and three bedrooms. That's only eight. What about the other 20 rooms? Oh, I never used those. I've had them closed up for years. You've had them closed? Uh, Jack. You see, I don't really need Jack. so many rooms, you know, so I only... Jack. What is it, Mary? Jack, whatever happened to Kenny Baker? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I never thought of that. I don't know. He came over to my house about 15 years ago. That's the last I saw of him. <laughs> anyway, Mary, since I don't need so many rooms, I decided to get a smaller house. Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come in and sit down, kid. Thanks. Say, Mr. Benny, I saw the sign out in front of your house that says for sale. That's right, kid. How much do you want for it? A hundred thousand dollars. For a little sign like that? <laughs> For the house. Dennis, I'm trying to sell the house. Oh, well, I wouldn't buy it. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? Well, Dennis, I've got news for you. In the first place, nobody asked you to buy it. And the second place, you couldn't afford to buy it. If I didn't work for a cheapskate, I could. <laughs> Mary. Don't look at me. I only thought it. He said it. Dennis, I don't want to get into a long routine with you, so sing the song you do on the show before the gang gets here, will you? Okay. Mary, get me a glass of water. Here's an aspirin. I have my own. Just sing. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, that was very good. A beautiful song. Gracias. Thank you. You know, I can't understand. <laughs> I can't understand how anyone who sings so beautifully can come in here and act like you do. What makes you behave like that? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a mashuga and a mixed up kid. <laughs> I'll say you are. Hey, Mr. Benny! Mr. Benny! Hmm, it's that plumber again. Yeah, what is it? Would you turn the water on from the service porch? Okay. Rochester! Yes, boss! Would you please turn the water on in the service porch? Yes, sir! The water's on, boss! Thanks. Hey, plumber, the water's on. Okay! Are you all finished fixing the sink? Not yet. Then why'd you want to have the water turned on? I'm dirty. I want to take a shower. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why don't you take a shower on your own time? I got dirty on your time. <laughs> Rochester, turn the water off. It's off, boss. What a crazy plumber. I'll get it. Imagine a guy like that. Hiya, Jack. Oh, hello, Bob. Come on in. Everybody's here but Don Wilson. As soon as he comes, we can rehearse. Oh, Jack, I just bumped into Ronald Coleman in front of your house. Ronnie, what do you have to say? Oh, nothing. He put a rabbit's foot on your for sale sign and went home whistling. <laughs> 
good old Ronnie. Always wishing me luck. Huh? Jack, is that sign out in front just a gag, or are you really trying to sell your house? Well, of course I'm trying to sell it. What are you asking for? A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars, brother. What do you mean, brother? Well, my brother's the only one that's got that kind of dough. Sister, how are you? <laughs> Say, Bob, I thought you were going to bring... It's Robert. <laughs> Bob, I thought you were going to bring the band over today so we could have a complete rehearsal. Well, I was, Mary, but I called Bagby, the piano player, and he said that today all the boys in the band have gone to a tailor to have new tuxedos made. All the musicians in the band? New tuxedos? Mm -hmm. What are they celebrating? National Wine Week. <laughs> You know, Bob, I'm a little surprised that they drink anything as mild as wine. Oh, sure they do, Jack. They drink a lot of beer, too. Beer? Mm hmm. In fact, they had the answer to what you have before Paps had the question. <laughs> <laughs> that I can believe. That's the only band I ever saw where the bass fiddle has a bunghole in it, you know? And, <laughs> uh, Jack. Yeah. Jack, why do you and Bob always pick on the orchestra boys? It's none of your business what kind of a life they lead. Look, Mary. Week after week, you're always picking on them, insulting them. You never have a kind word to say about them. Look, Mary. They've been with you for years, and you ought to be ashamed of the way you constantly run them down. Mary. After all, your only concern should be whether or not they play good music. Oh, I see. And you, you think they play good music? Well, they could if they weren't always drunk. <laughs> I thought so. Now, Bob, as long as the boys in the band are getting tuxedos, tell them to please wear them on the show. Well, I will, Jack. And one more thing. I have a request from the California Chamber of Commerce. Well, what's that? Well, they wrote me a letter saying that if Sammy the drummer can't grow hair and won't wear a toupee... Won't he at least paint a stem on his head so it'll look like an orange? <laughs> now, the reason that... Come in! Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody. Hi, Don. Hi. Don. Hi. Well, I'm glad you brought the sportsman with you. Don, did you see that sign out in the front lawn? Yeah, I noticed that, Jack. Are you really going to sell this house? That's right, Don. Hey, why don't you buy it? You've tried it on enough, you know. <laughs> Too big, we can take it in a little around the pantry. <laughs> hey, Jack, why don't we get this rehearsal over with? I want to go out the driving range and hit some golf balls. Say, I'd like to go with you, Bob. All right, kids, maybe we'll all go. But first, let's get on with the rehearsal. What kind of a show are we going to have? Well, Don, the first half is all written, but we're not sure what to do for the last half. I'd like to do something different. How about doing a satirical version of a psychological drama? Say, that's a pretty good idea. Mary, what are you talking to him for? He's the plumber. Oh, I thought he was one of your writers. <laughs> well, that's a stupid mistake. When he pronounced psychological right, you should have known he wasn't. <laughs> now, look, mister, we have a rehearsal to do. Just go finish your job. Oh, that's what I came to tell you. I'm all through. Good, good. Oh, but there's something I think you ought to know. What? Well, there was a leak in one of the pipes, and while I was tracing it, it led me way to the back of the house on the top floor. And in one of them unused rooms, I saw a fellow with curly hair sitting there eating jello. <laughs> what? Jack, that must be Kenny Baker. No, no, that's impossible. Maybe it's the gas man. <laughs> Look, mister, you didn't see anybody up there. Probably just a hallucination. Hey, that's a good wine. Yes, yes. Now, as long as you're through with your job, you can go. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Now, kid... Oh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Benny. Is your house still for sale? Yes. How much you want for it? Look, you couldn't afford to buy it. You didn't get my bill yet. <laughs> 
What? When you see it, remember, it ain't no hallucination. Get out of here. <laughs> now, look, kids, as long as everybody wants to go out and hit some golf balls, let's start the rehearsal. And... Oh, Rochester, answer the phone, will you please? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, and radio. Hello, <clears throat> this is Mr. Borden calling. Is Mr. Benny in, please? Just a minute. Boss, is for you. It's Mr. Borden. Mr. Borden? Oh, say, that's the man who was over to look at the house. Maybe he's going to buy it. Hand me the phone. Hello? <laughs> Operator, will you please get off the line? <laughs> No, no, Mr. Borden, this is Jack Benny. Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, what'd you call for, Mr. Borden? What? What? What'd you call for? What? What? Huh? huh? What was it, huh? Well, uh, uh, what, was it? what is it, Mr. Borden? What? What? Huh? What? What? Uh, Mr. Benny. Yeah? What? What? My what? wife and I have talked it over, and we've almost made up our minds to buy your house. You have? You have? You have? Yes, yeah, we have. have. Uh, you said you wanted $100,000, is that right? Yes, yes. If you'll come right over now, we can close the deal. Well, Mr. Benny, the banks are all closed now, and all I have with me is a business check for $250,000. Well, come on over. I can give you the change. <laughs> well, I, I have an appointment out of my club this afternoon. I'll come over first thing in the morning. All right, Mr. Borden, I'll be here. Goodbye. Hey, kids. Kids, guess what just happened? Mr. Borden, the man who was here with his wife a while ago, just called and said they were going to buy my house. Say, that's wonderful. Sure is, Jack. That's great news. Yes, sir. They'll never be happy here. <laughs> they will if you don't visit them. Now, come on, kids. Let's finish our rehearsal, and then we'll go out to the driving range and hit some golf balls. Well... Here we are. Here, Mary, I'll carry your clubs. Oh, thanks, Bob. Here's your bag, Jack. Careful with them, Bob. Those clubs are new. Gee, the driving range is crowded today. We better get some golf balls at the stand. Dennis, here's some money. Go get us a couple of buckets of balls. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, kids. I want to swing this club to limber up my hands. They're stiff from my violin lesson yesterday. Oh, did you practice too long? No, my violin teacher closed the case on my fingers. <laughs> happens every time I take a lesson. Here's a bucket of balls. Thanks, Dennis. Go ahead, Mary. Hit one out, will you? Okay. Keep your head down. Be quiet. Hey, that was a good one, Mary. Yeah, but watch your form, Mary. Your pivot was much too abrupt and you dipped your shoulder. Go ahead, Bob. You go. Okay, here goes. Wow! 250 yards straight down the middle. Yeah, but Bob, you dipped your shoulder, too. Now stand back and watch me. Uh, help him up, Bob. I... I can't without dipping my shoulder. Don't be funny. I just tried to hit it too hard, that was all. Oh, stop making excuses. You've never played good golf in your life. Oh, I haven't, eh? Well, let me tell you something, sister. Not only do I play good golf, but I even know some great trick shots. Trick shots? Yes, here, I'll show you. Dennis, lie down and put this golf ball on your nose. <laughs> Come on, Dennis, lie down. Okay. Now, hold still, Dennis, while I balance this ball on your nose. I'll show you kids a trick shot if you ever saw one. Now, stand back, everybody. But, Jack, you must be kidding. That's a dangerous trick. It sure is. You're liable to miss that ball and hit Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, get up. You'll get hurt. Now, get up, Dennis. Now, watch me, Bob, and I'll show you the correct form for driving a ball off the tee. Watch this. What do you mean, wonderful? I missed the ball three times. I know, but you're finding the smog out of Los Angeles. <laughs> if I'd stay down there, I'd be a mess. <laughs> I can't understand it. Bob, what am I doing wrong? Well, I don't know, Jack, but 
Gee, maybe you ought to take a few lessons from the instructor here. Instructor? Where is he? Well, that's him over there, the one with the white cap. Oh, yes. Maybe he can help me. Oh, mister! Mister! Yeah. <laughs> Are you the golf instructor here? Yes, don't let these lounging pajamas fool you. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, what do you charge for a lesson? It's $3 for a half hour. Well, okay. Give me a lesson. All right. Hey, let me see your swing. Hey, grip the club firmly, the thumb on the shaft. Like this? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but be sure not to slice. We're right next to the third hole of the golf course, right over that head. Oh, yes, I'll be careful. Now, start your backswing. That's it. Now, head down. Keep your head down. Lower. 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 Well, I knew it would slip off. <laughs> Look, mister, I'm paying for a lesson, so will you please give me some instruction? All right. You keep your head down, swing back slowly, hit it. Oh, boy, look at that one go. Hey, Jack, you got a bad slice on that one. Look, it's going over the hedge onto the golf course. Hey, four, four! Oh, my goodness, you hit a man on the head. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I better run over and apologize. You don't have to. He's coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> Say, it's Mr. Borden, the man who's going to buy my house. Who hit me on the head with that ball? I did. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Borden. Who's Mr. Borden? You are. You are, and I'm Jack Benny. Who's Jack Benny? <laughs> Jack. Jack, your ball hit him so hard he lost his memory. But he can. He promised to buy the house. What house? My house. Don't you remember? Think of the house in Beverly Hills. 28 rooms, the swimming pool, the spacious yard. Stop squeezing my arm. <laughs> Mr. Borden, you must remember, please, please, the lovely neighborhood, the wonderful neighbors, Kenny Baker will sing to you. Mr. Borden. Hey, what about my three dollars? When I sell the house. Mr. Borden, try to remember, please. Good night, everybody. We're a little late. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis May, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for 20 years I've been introducing the star of our show, and after all this time you'd think I'd run out of nice things to say about him. Well, I have. So here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don... That wasn't a very nice introduction. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. After 20 years, I just couldn't think of anything new. Oh, you couldn't, eh? Well, Don, I'm sure that if I were introducing you, I wouldn't have that trouble. Oh, oh, yes, you would, Jack. You've been saying the same things about me for years. Now, I'll bet you can't say anything that I haven't heard before. Oh, yes, I can, Don. What? You're fired. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed... Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. You're not serious, are you? Well... You well... can't fire me. After all, I've got a wife and three chins to support. <laughs> Don, Don, stop worrying. You've been with me for 20 years, and I hope you're with me for another... Oh, hello, everybody. Well, hello, Dennis. Well, uh, hiya, kid. Hiya, Dennis. Oh, by the way, Dennis, you weren't at any of the rehearsals this week. Was anything wrong? Oh, no, Don. Mr. Benny gave me a few days off so I could go away for a little vacation. I sure enjoyed myself. I went fishing on Lake Mead. You know, I wish I could go away and do a little fishing. It's one of my favorite sports. What a thrill it is to hook a silvery rainbow trout, one of nature's loveliest creations. What a sight as it breaks the water in a shimmering shower of glistening drops and the sunlight reflecting on its iridescent beauty. Look how he describes the fish. Me, he can't say anything nice about. <laughs> how do you like that? 
What are you mad about? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Oh, uh, say, Dennis, how long were you at Lake Mead? Oh, we were there for a whole week, and I spent all my time out on the boat. A whole week on a boat? Avast there, you land lovers! Larboard the starboard and drop the anchor! Look, Dennis. Shiver the timbers and man the pumps, so we'll all drown like rats! <laughs> Dennis, that's enough. Ahoy, my hearties! Batting down the hatches and pooping down the poop deck! <laughs> Enough, Dennis, do you hear? Mr. Christian, stow that talk, or I'll swing you from the highest yard arm in the British fleet. Oh, for <laughs> Don, see what you can do with them. Not Dennis, Jack's right. Why don't Let you... Let the men mute me, hearty, and don't worry, the ship may be rocking and pitching, but I'll sail it through this hurricane, or... 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 Dennis, what's the matter? I'm seasick. <laughs> Good, good. Now look, Popeye, it's time for your song. So let's have it. Aye, aye, sir. Very, very good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do our version of that exciting new picture, Wings of the Hawk, which was produced... Say, Jack. Huh? Oh, what is it, Bob? Well, before you go into that sketch, I I'd like to ask you a little favor. A favor? Well, it's, it's really not for me. It's for my brother, Bing. You see, he just built a brand new supermarket here in town. Bing? Build a supermarket? Mm-hmm. Grand openings tonight. And there's going to be lots of celebrities there. And Bing said that he'd appreciate it if you'd come and help out. Well, well, does he want me to play my violin? Mm, no. Oh, he just wants me to tell jokes. Huh? No. Well, then, what does he want me to do? Buy something. <laughs> Well, he's got a fat chance. <laughs> well, maybe... Maybe I will drop around. But, Bob, I can't understand. With all the deals that Bing has, why does he want to fool around with a supermarket? Well, Jack, this isn't just any old supermarket. It's a super supermarket. It's big, you mean? Big. Why, at one end, you can buy strawberries, and at the other end, they're out of season. <laughs> Gee. Well, you have to go through the frozen food department by dog sled. <laughs> no. And when you cross over into the meat department, you lose a day. <laughs> well, look at Bob. <laughs> now you're exaggerating. <laughs> but I'll talk to you about it later, Bob, because right now it's time for our play. Oh, the sketch, huh? Yes. Tonight we're going to do our version of Universal International's Technicolor production, Wings of the Hawk. Man, I heard that picture's just chucked full of adventure and excitement. And how? You know, the other night I took Mary to see it, and she sat on the edge of the chair all through it. She had to. You only bought one ticket. <laughs> true, true. Now... Bob, Don, and Dennis, you all have important parts in this play. Bob, you have the role of a colonel in the Mexican army, a cruel, ruthless, greedy man who lets nothing stand in his way. And I'm going to take the part Van Heflin played, that of a rough, tough gold prospector, Irish Gallagher. You're Irish Gallagher? <laughs> That's right. Oy vey. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> now, Dennis, in this sketch, you're going to play the part of an old, old prospector, see? Then you come in later as a Mexican bandit. Gee, two parts. It's hard to believe I can sing, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, where's Mel Blanc? Here I am, Jack. Folks, it's Mel Blanc. Give him a big hand. Jack, we're all going to be in the play. Why did you give just him applause? Don, I have to. It's in this contract. You mean you give him money and applause, too? No money, just applause. <laughs> Look, it's getting late. So, Don, set the scene, will okay. you? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of Universal International's exciting adventure story, Wings of the Hawk. <laughs> Our story takes place in Mexico years ago, 
It's a time of war and revolution, for the country is being torn by the bitter struggle of the insurrectos against the federal troops. My name is Irish Gallagher. My partner, Don Carlos Wilson, and I were prospecting for gold in the Mexican hills. Don Carlos Wilson was a hard worker. Day after day, he dug under that blistering sun, and I never left his side. I couldn't. He was the only shade for miles. <laughs> we worked on and on with only an occasional interruption. Irish! Irish! It's the Federalists and the Insurrectos! Keep digging, Don Carlos. But they're shooting at each other. We're right in the middle. <laughs> oh! Oh! What have got me in the arm? Keep digging. That one got me in the leg. Keep digging. Three days later, <laughs> Don Carlos was still standing, but there was very little shade. <laughs> we kept looking for gold. But after two months of fruitless effort, Don Carlos and I found ourselves walking the streets of Tampico. Well, Irish, looks like we're about at the end of our rope. Yeah, this is awful. No money, no equipment, no place to sleep, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Now, let's see what we can do in this saloon. Hey, the place is quite crowded. Hey, barmaid! Barmaid! Si, senor, what will you have? Give me three fingers. Three fingers of what? Just three fingers. I'm hungry. <laughs> if I don't get something to eat pretty soon, I... Hey, I'll... aren't you the one they call Irish Gallagher? That's right. And this is my partner, Don Carlos. He and I came down here looking for gold. Yeah, gold. Every time I think of it, I go crazy. Gold, gold, I can see it now. There it is, there it is, and it's mine. It's mine, gold, gold. Put that down, that's the cuspidor. <laughs> you know, sister, he goes crazy every time he thinks of gold. Well, does not gold mean anything to you? Eh. I can take it or love it. I mean, leave it. <laughs> Come on, Don Carlos. Let's get out of here. Wait, wait, Irish weird luck. See that little fellow over there? That's Goldbug Day. <laughs> yeah, he was Goldbug Day, the fabulous old prospector who found gold every time he went out. Don Carlos introduced me to him. Goldbug Day? Want you to meet Irish Gallagher. Howdy, bub. <laughs> Bug, I hear that you know all about the gold in these parts, and I thought maybe you'd come up into the mountains with us. Sorry, son, but I'm too old for that now. There was a time when I used to go up in them there hills, stay for months and months at a time, but then it would get me. I was only human, you know. I'd have to come back. Be back in town with a load of gold, and a couple of nights I'd blow it all in. Women, eh? No, Kleenex. I've got hay fever. <laughs> Well, look, Bug, if you won't go with us, maybe you can tell us where we can find gold. Why, sure. Here's a map of old Mexico. See? You can't go wrong. You take the main road through Tampico till you pass El Paso. After you pass El Paso, you go through El Thruo and turn left at El Lefto. <laughs> what if we turn El Righto? That's El Rongo. <laughs> Why don't you come and show us the way? Nope, I'm too old for prospecting now. Well, we go alone, Irish. Tell me, are you sure there's gold there? Yes, sir, lots of it. Enough to make one of you rich for the rest of your life. Only one of us? Yep. I hated to do it. John Carlos was my best friend. I still felt I might need a guide, so I made one more attempt to get the old prospector to go with me. 
Are you sure you don't want to come along with me? Nope. Can't do it, but I'll see you later. You will? Yeah, if I come back on page 12 as a Mexican bandit. <laughs> After they sang a few more songs, I left and began my expedition. And I finally found the spot the old prospector marked on the map. I began digging, and sure enough, I struck it. A six-foot vein of pure, glittering gold. It was so beautiful, I couldn't understand why people get mad when you call them yellow. <laughs> I started to dig out some of this fabulous treasure. A troop of horsemen swooped down on us. <laughs> I realized it was foolish to resist, so I waved a truce flag. As several of them approached me, I recognized their leader as the cruel Colonel Ruiz, and I knew I'd have to play it cagey. Senor Hombre, I hear that here you have discovered gold here. I think, Senor Hombre. <laughs> yes, I would have to play it cagey, because he was playing it lousy. <laughs> What did you say, Colonel Ruiz? I hear that here you have discovered gold. Gold? There's no gold around here. Senor Irish, we are not ones to fool around, and we happen to know that you have found gold here. All right, so what about it? My general has a proposition to make to you. Well, let's have it. Si, los matamos, tendríamos que cargar con todo por la tanto coja, usted el oro y matarlos después. What did he say? He gave you Notre Dame and six points. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I shot him. I may be Irish, but I need better odds than that. <laughs> but the Federalists had us outnumbered. They killed my workers and took the mine. I had to flee into the hills for my life. After wandering for days, I stumbled exhausted into a camp of insurrectos. At first, they were suspicious. But finally, one of them came over and shook my hand. You want to shake hands? Si. <laughs> then I consider you my friend? Si. You will always help me? Si. Then, to my surprise, he walked away. <coughs> the insurrectos gave me food and drink, and I was about to be on my way when suddenly there was a stir of excitement. What is it? What's happened? It is our leader, Raquel. She has been wounded. Your leader is a girl? Si, senor. I am Raquel, their leader. Well, I'm awfully pleased. Wait a minute. Weren't you the barmaid? Si, senor. But on this show, everyone has to play two parts. <laughs> well, uh, Raquel. Raquel, there's blood on your shoulder. I know. I've been shot. The bullet is still in there. Senor, there are no doctors here and no time to lose. Can you remove the bullet? I'll try. Now, Raquel, there's no anesthetic, and this knife is going to hurt. I know. You'll have to be brave. I will try. Don't lose your nerve. I won't. Okay, here we go. There. It's out. Pick him up, he fainted. When I came to, Raquel and I were alone, and she was stroking my hair. She was gorgeous, with smooth olive skin, luscious lips, and a figure like Marilyn Monroe. As I continued looking into her adoring eyes, a thought came to me. <laughs> What was so bad about Notre Dame and Six Points? <laughs> Raquel spoke to me. She wanted me to join her band of soldiers. But I was more interested in getting my gold. I turned to go. Someone pulled at my sleeve. Oh, Senor Irish. Senor Irish. What is it? Uh, before you leave, I would like you to meet my little six-year-old son, Tomas. Oh, hello, Tomas. Uh, Tomas, he is learning to be a magician. He does a wonderful act on the stage with his sister. Really? So you're a magician, eh, Tomas? Say. Si. <laughs> Do you have an act? Say. Si. With your sister? Say. Si. What is your sister's name? So. <laughs> Sue. 
Sue? See? Well, what do you do in your act? Saw. What do you saw? Sue. Sue? Now, wait a minute. Somebody put you up to this. Who was it? Me. You? She. Who are you? Sai. Sai? She. so nuts I couldn't size straight. <laughs> Suddenly out of nowhere, the Federals attack. <laughs> one by one they cut us down, and then Raquel was hit. We fought desperately, but Raquel and I were captured and thrown in jail. That night I couldn't sleep a wink. The cell was cold, wet, and filthy. I didn't mind that so much, but all night long the wind kept whistling through Raquel's shoulder. <laughs> the next morning, as the sun rose, they blindfolded us and marched us out to the courtyard. Halt! Ready! Aim! Wait. You can't shoot me down like a dog. Give me a break. Give me a chance. I tell you what I will do, senor. I give you a fighting chance. You take off your blindfold. Now, here is a weapon for you and a weapon for me. What? You count to ten and may the best hombre win. Well, all right, I'll count to ten. One, two, three. Ooh, not yet. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I think you're cheating. Nine. You missed me. That's better. Ooh. Irish, Irish, why didn't you shoot back? I couldn't. He gave me a knife. <laughs> As I lay there dying, I reached for a piece of Kleenex. On top of everything else, I caught hay fever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday night over the entire CBS network, I will be doing my third television show of the season. And my guest star will be Humphrey Bogart. I hope you'll all be watching. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, immediately after this program, Jack Benny will do another television show with his guest star, Humphrey Bogart. Meanwhile, let's go out to Beverly Hills. Last night, Jack had a small dinner party at his home. As we look in now, we find Rochester once again with the help of his friend Roy cleaning up. Gee, it was nice of you to come over and help me with my work, Roy. Oh, that's all right, Rochester. That's what friends are for. There, the rugs look fine now. Help me put away the chairs. Okay. Say, who did Mr. Benny have at the party last night? Oh, the usual people, his cast, some of the musicians, and his writers. Were uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman here? No, they were invited, but... As they were leaving their house to come over here, Mr. Coleman tripped on the steps and broke his leg. No. Yeah, and you should have seen the smile on his face as they drove him away in the ambulance. <laughs> now, let's take the extra leaves out of the dining room.
dining room table. Say, Rochester, who sat in this chair? Frank Remley. Why? <laughs> he left his shoes under the table. Well, put his shoes in the closet. You'll have to help me. He's still in them. <laughs> Say, Raj, would you like to go bowling with the boys on your next day off? I can't, Roy. I have a date to go out with Susie. You've been seeing a lot of her, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Rochester, why don't you and Susie get married? Oh, we'd like to. In fact, I even talked to her father. But he said he won't let me marry Susie because... I can't support her in the same style to which he has accustomed her to. Oh. Oh, uh, what does he do for a living? Nothing. He's on relief. <laughs> now, let's put all the silverware away. Gee, Ratch, I thought you were making more money now. Wasn't Mr. Benny supposed to give you a raise last year? Uh-huh. Then he got mad at me on February 14th. That's his birthday. When, when he came down to breakfast that morning, I presented him with a birthday cake with 40 candles. Well, what did Mr. Benny do? He ate one candle and we were back to normal. <laughs> and he used a silly thing like that for a reason not to give you a raise? Uh-huh. Rochester, tell me something. Why is Mr. Benny so, uh, uh, shall we say frugal? Oh, we shall, we shall. <laughs> What I mean, Rochester, is is why is Mr. Benny so anxious to save all his money? Doesn't he know that old saying, you can't take it with you? Oh, he knows he can't take it with him, but he figures if he leaves a big enough pile, he can look down and see it. <laughs> uh, good morning, Rochester. Good morning, boy. Good morning, Mr. Benny. Oh, good morning, Roy. Well, you fellas certainly have the house looking nice and clean. Thank you. Say, would you like me to get you anything special for breakfast? No, Ready? no, no. Just some orange juice, coffee, and toast. Oh, I'll have it ready in a couple of minutes. Uh, shall I answer the door, Mr. Benny? No, no, I'll get it, Roy. I wonder who that is at the door. Maybe it's Ava Gardner. Or Jane Russell. <laughs> or Marilyn Monroe. Gee, here it is 11 o'clock and I'm not awake yet. <laughs> Oh, well. Coming, coming. Hi, Jack. Oh, hello, Bob. Come on in. Bob, I wasn't expecting you. Say, Jack, I came over to see you on a rather personal matter. Now, look, was... look, look, Bob. If it's about that raise in salary, I can't... Oh, no, 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 Jack. I'm perfectly happy with what I'm getting. Well, good, good. <laughs> now, what is it? What is it, Bob? Well, Jack, one of the gimmicks on my afternoon television show is sort of a quiz. And you can help me out. How? Well, you'll stand behind a screen where no one can see you, and you'll play something on your violin. On my violin? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's great. And the contestant will try to guess what song I'm playing. No, what instrument? <laughs> well, well, I guess I can do that for you, Bob, and then I'll tell you what else I'll do. When the quiz is over, I'll step out on the stage and tell some jokes. Oh, well, gee, thanks a lot, Jack, but, but we don't have any jokes on my program. Oh. You see, we find it kind of difficult to get laughs on my show. Well, that's funny. I get big laughs on my show. Why is it so tough for you? Well, well, look, I'm a young man. I'm reasonably nice-looking. I, I sing a fair song. Uh-huh. I have my own hair, and I like to spend money. Now, how in the world can I get laughs? <laughs> Yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> the mail just came, Mr. Benny. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Let's see. These are all bills. This looks like an advertisement. Let's see what this ad is. Hmm, it's from the Book of the Month Club. They've been trying to get me to join that for years, you know. I wonder if I should. Oh, that's a good setup, Jack. You get all the latest books. I know. Gee, all my friends and my family belong to it. 
What about your brother Bing? Well, he belongs to the Yacht of the Month Club. <laughs> Let's see, these are all bills. This looks like an advertisement. Let's see what this ad is. Hmm, it's from the Book of the Month Club. They've been trying to get me to join that for years, you know. I wonder if I should. Oh, that's a good setup, Jack. You get all the latest books. I know. Gee, all my friends and my family belong to it. What about your brother Bing? Well, he belongs to the Yacht of the Month Club. <laughs> the Yacht? The Yacht of the Month Club? Uh-huh. I never heard of that. Well, the only other member is Ali Khan. <laughs> oh. King Farouk dropped out about a year ago. <laughs> You can get laughs on your own show. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mr. Benny, your breakfast is ready. Oh, thanks. Bob, would you like to join me? Oh, no, thank you, Jack. I just had mine. Good, good. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd better be running along now or I'll be late for my afternoon TV show. Hey, but it's pretty early, isn't it? I know, but I still have to be made up and I need a shave. How <laughs> oh, are you fixed for blades? <laughs> hey. See, she knows the Gillette commercial. Knows them, she does them. <laughs> oh, so that's where she goes every Friday night. <laughs> well, so long, Bob. See you at rehearsal Saturday. Huh? So long, Jack. So long. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yeah. Well, Roy and I have finished cleaning up the house, and Roy is about to leave, and, well, I thought you might want to show your appreciation. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, Roy. Yes, Mr. Benny. I want to thank you for helping Rochester. And here, this is for you. One, two, three, four, five. Five, Mr. Benny? Yes. Bring your friends. They might enjoy the broadcast, too. (laughs) It's really, really a good one, you know. Thank you, Mr. Benny. I'm sure we'll enjoy the show. Goodbye. Wait a minute, Roy. Wait a minute. Before you go, I want to give you some money, too. Oh, that's, that's not necessary. Yes, it is, but I'll tell you what. I'll play a little game with you. Now, just a minute. <laughs> there. Now, I've got some money in my fist, and if you can guess how much it is, it's yours. I'll give you three guesses. Okay. Dollar? No. Two dollars? No. Let me see. Could it be three? Or... Roy, you're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> he is not. I've got a five-dollar bill. Here it is, Roy. Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Uh, see you next week, Rochester. Goodbye, Roy. Mr. Benny, may I say something personal to you? What is it, Rochester? Well, I'm convinced you're getting more generous all the time. Really? Yeah. I'll never forget the first time you played that game with me. I never guessed how much you had in your fist. Let's see. What did I have? Three francs, four yen, and a peso. (laughs) Oh, yes. I did a lot of traveling that year. (laughs) I, uh, Rochester... I forgot to ask you, were there any phone calls for me? No, but while you were asleep, a policeman from the Beverly Hills Traffic Division came to see you. He'll be back later. He wants to see you personally. Oh, my goodness. What do you want? Well, the city wants to put parking meters in front of your house. Well, why does he have to see me personally? Well, they want you to take yours down first. (laughs) How do you like that? A rich city like Beverly Hills can't stand a little competition. Well, anyway, if there are any other calls for me, Rog, I don't want to be disturbed. Oh, are you going to take a nap? No, I'm going into the den and practice my violin. Oh, boss, you promised me you wouldn't do that until my day off. (laughs) I know, but this is an emergency. Now, Bob Crosby wants me to play it on his television program, and uh, Rochester, get me my violin, will you? Well, uh, all right, here you are. Thank you. Mm, it's out of tune. The string needs tightening. Here. <laughs> needs more tightening. Here. <laughs> oh, darn it, I broke it. 
and I haven't got another string in the house. Well, I guess you won't have to. We won't be able to practice today. <laughs> you were so happy you couldn't get your line right. <laughs> I've <laughs> I got to practice, Rochester. I'm going down to the music store and get a string. Now, get the car out and drive me down. Boss, the car isn't running. Now, what's wrong with it? Everything. That car's in terrible shape. You ought to get a new one. Oh, stop. My car's fine. Boss, look. Let's be honest. All other cars belong to the auto club. This one belongs to the Blue Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. Anyway, it's such a nice day. I think I'll walk. I'll be back soon. Yes, sir. Oh, da 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 dee da dum da dee da dee da da dum da dum da dee. Oh, gee, it's so clear and sunny. It was sure windy the other day. In fact, I never saw it so windy. It's the first time that the swallows and Capistrano flew south. <laughs> Bum ba bing ba bum ba beedle doo. The dum ba bum ba bum. Oh oh, there's that pretty French nursemaid who works for the people on the corner. She's wheeling their baby. I'll catch up to her. Hello, Miss. Ah, oh, bonjour, Monsieur Benny. Well, it's certainly a nice day, isn't it? <laughs> oui, Monsieur, it is. <laughs> Oh, what a cute, what a cute little baby. Ah, uh, uh, You know, Mademoiselle, you're the you're the most beautiful nursemaid I've ever seen. Uh, Monsieur, you're so kind. And you're not only beautiful, you're probably very talented, too. Uh, Monsieur, you're so sweet. You know. I can probably get you in the movies. Monsieur, you're so corny. <laughs> what? You see, I've been warned about the American men promising girls jobs in pictures. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm pretty important in this town, and I can do it. I know, Monsieur. The very first time I saw you, I recognized you. You see, before I came to this country years ago, I saw one of your movies in Paris. Oh, what picture was it? The Horn Blows at Midnight. <laughs> What's he crying for? He never saw it. <laughs> now, be a good baby. Monsieur, I think it is time to take baby home. Oh, well, Goodbye. Goodbye, baby. <laughs> Gosh, she's beautiful. And the baby was such a cute one, too. But it's amazing how much he looks like my parrot. <laughs> She while I'm at the music store, I ought to get some new records for my phonograph. The gang at my party last night had a hard time dancing to Cone on the telephone. <laughs> See, I hope it doesn't take too long in that music store. I have to go home and get dressed for my television show tonight. <laughs> It's a classy-looking store. It got everything. All kinds of musical instruments, radios, television sets. Gee, I wonder what I'd be today if radio and television weren't invented. After all, I owe my success to radio and TV shows. That's why I'll always be grateful to Edison. No, wait a minute. Edison didn't have anything to do with radio. That was Marconi. Edison invented the movie. 
him I owe nothing. <laughs> I wish someone would wait on me. I wonder if that man is a salesman there. I'll ask him. Excuse me. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Can I help you? <laughs> yes, I want to buy a string for my violin. Oh, you get those in the musical instrument department. I- I'm in charge of the phonograph records. Oh, good. Well, that's the one one of the things I'm here for, too, some new records. Huh? Oh, well, then you're in luck. Uh, we just got some very excellent ones. Now, uh, let's see. Uh... Oh, here's the record I'm looking for. It's the Boston Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra's rendition of La Tolle de Lana de Pontrero. No, I don't think I'd like that. Well, I can show you how it goes. Look, there's no sense playing it on a phonograph. You don't need to hear it on a phonograph. I'll show you myself. I do a wonderful imitation of an electric organ. An electric organ? Yeah, listen. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. Look at that. That didn't sound much like an electric organ to me. Well, I wasn't plugged in. (laughs) Look, can I get someone else to wait on me? What's the matter? Don't you like me? (laughs) It's not... It's not not that, but... Well, frankly... Look, I don't want any records. All I want is a string for my violin. Oh, I told you. It's in that department over there. The salesman will help you. Oh, thank you. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but everybody looks like my parrot. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this man here must be the salesman. Oh, mister. Mister. Yeah! Look, I I came over here to buy a G-string. The violin, cello, or are you a burlesque dancer? (laughs) It's for my violin. Don't you recognize me? Let's see. Are you Yasha Heifer? No. Misha Elman? No. Why, Evelyn, how you (laughs) change? Look, I'm not Evelyn. I'm Jack Benny. Jack Benny, the radio and television comedian? Yes. Well, what a coincidence. My ex-wife thinks you're so funny. Your ex-wife thinks I'm funny? Yes, that was the grounds for the divorce. (laughs) The judge even awarded me the custody of the children. Look, I didn't come here to discuss your private life. All I want is a string for my violin. All right, all right. Here. That'll be two dollars and a half. Well, charge it. You have a charge account here? Yeah, just look under Jack Benny. You'll find it. Here, let's see. Yes, here it is. Jack Benny, 366 North Camden Drive. Say, you owe us 89 cents. What for? Cohen on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just charge this string to me. Look, why do I have to go through all the trouble of writing up a charge for such a little amount? Why don't you pay cash? Because I want to charge it. Now write it out. I'm not going to. Now wait a minute. Why is it I get along with everybody else, but the minute I meet you, there's trouble? Because I don't like you. (laughs) Well, I don't like you either. Now wrap that string. It'll be a pleasure. That's better. I'm going to wrap it around your neck. (laughs) That settles it. I'm getting out of here. And if I ever meet you again... You will. <laughs> Look, I'm warning you that there will be so much trouble. You won't forget it as long as you live. Now, let me tell you right now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in just 30 seconds, I will be doing my television show over the CBS television network. And I will have as my guest star... Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> So good night, folks. See you in 30 seconds. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. Now, the reason I'm keeping my voice down is because it's four o'clock in the morning, and I don't want to disturb our little star, who at the moment is sound asleep. Huh? Uh, what was that? What was that? The phone. <coughs> That's a phone. Who'd be calling me in the middle of the night? It must be an emergency. It's four o'clock in the morning. Maybe somebody's sick, Dennis or Mary. Or... I better answer it. Where are my slippers? Oh, there they are. Coming, coming. Gee, I hope they don't hang up. Hello? This is Hank, the all-night disc jockey. <laughs> if you tied spaghetti end to end, how many pounds would it take to go around the world? What? If you answer the question correctly, you'll win two glorious weeks at Pismo Beach. <laughs> now, wait a minute. It's four o'clock in the morning. That answer is incorrect. Goodbye. <laughs> How do you like that? He hung up on me. Well, he's not going to get away with that. Operator, operator. Number, please. Operator, would you please get me Hank, the disc jockey? At four o'clock in the morning? Are you crazy? What? If I were you, buddy, I'd crawl out of that phone booth, get a cup of black coffee, and go home. <laughs> go home? If you don't, you'll hate yourself in the morning. Oh, yeah, well, you're just a smart aleck. Let me talk to the head telephone operator. I'm sorry, but the head telephone operator is busy. Then let me talk to the supervisor. The supervisor isn't in. Would you like to talk to Alexander Graham Bell? <laughs> Look, I only want... Oh, never mind. Gosh, I'm so mad now, I'll never get back to sleep. Imagine being wakened by a silly disc jockey at four o'clock in the morning. Sorry I answered it. Should have let it ring and ring it. Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't Rochester answer the phone? He couldn't have been that sound asleep. I'm going to find out. Rochester, why didn't you a... Hmm, he's not here. His bed hasn't been slept in. 25 after 4 and he's not home yet. Well, I'm going back to bed. In the morning, I'm going to tell him a thing or... Uh-oh, there's the front door. Just as I thought. It's Rochester. Look at him sneaking into the house. <laughs> hmm, he's taken off his shoes. Now he's tiptoeing across the living room. Well, I'd like to see him get out of this. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what are you doing up on your toes? I'm dancing the minuet! <laughs> <laughs> what? Dum dum dilly dum dum dilly dum dum dilly dum I know the dum, music! Dum, 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 dum. I know the music! Roger, what's the idea of coming in at 4 o'clock in the morning? Coming in? I saw you open the front door and come in. Oh, oh, that! Well, last night the club I belonged to had a social gathering and the president had intentions of breaking it up at 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock, eh? If that was his intention, what happened? At 9.30, we elected a new president. <laughs> I thought so. Now, now, I'm going back to bed. I'll talk to you about this in the morning. Now go to your room. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. I hope I can fall back to sleep. Can't get over that disc jockey. There ought to be a law against doing a thing like that. Hmm. Now that I've been up a little while, I don't feel sleepy. Matter of fact, I feel good. A lot of people get up early in the morning. 
Some of them even take long walks before breakfast. They say it keeps them healthy. Maybe that's what I need, more exercise. I notice lately that when I tell people I'm 39, some of them don't believe it. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get dressed and take a nice long walk. I think I'll call Mary and ask her if she'd like to go with me. Hello, Mary. Uh, who is this? Mary, this is Jack. Jack? Jack, what's the matter? Nothing, Mary. I just called Ashley if you'd like to go for a walk with me. Walk? Jack, what time is it? 20 minutes to five. 20 minutes to five? Yes, Mary. I figured if we walked down Wilshire Boulevard and headed east, you see, we can see uh, the sunrise. Uh, Jack. What is it, Mary? Let me talk to the man. <laughs> What man? The man in the white coat. There must be one of them with you. <laughs> Mary, I'm not crazy. Well, you must be something. Calling me up to go for a walk at five o'clock in the morning. I told him to get a cup of black coffee and go home. Operator, get off the line. <laughs> this is none of your business. Now, Mary, if you'll get dressed, I'll be right over and... How do you like that? She hung up. Oh, well. I don't care what Mary thinks. I made up my mind to go out for a walk, and that's what I'm going to do. Gosh, I've never been out so early in the morning. The sun hasn't come up yet. The air is so nice and brisk. Hmm, here comes the street cleaner. Good morning, mister. Good morning, Mac. I can see now why the streets of Beverly Hills are so clean. Thanks, Mac, but that's what I get paid for. I pick up papers, leaves, rubbish. Anything I find lying in the street, I pick up and put in this barrel. And then I take it over to the city dump, and I... Hey, wait a minute, Mac. You can't take nothing out of that barrel. But he's a friend of mine. Remley! <laughs> Remley, wake up! Hey, you really know him? Certainly, that's Frank Remley. He leads the orchestra at the Cinegrill. <laughs> yeah, that's where I found him laying in front of. <laughs> well, did you have a lot of trouble getting him into the barrel? Oh, I didn't put him in the barrel. You see, we street cleaners all go by numbers. Uh-huh. The number on my barrel is 102, and when he saw that, he dived right in. <laughs> That's his favorite beer That and a hundred and one others <laughs> Anyway, it serves him right Take him to the city dump I did that yesterday and they refused him <laughs> What's try... <laughs> Well, try again Okay, so long, Mac So long, so long Gosh since, since Remley's become a celebrity, things are really different. Now they pick him up, they used to sweep around him. <laughs> I can't understand why Mary didn't want to take a walk with me. She had 5.30 in the morning, you see things so differently. After the sun comes up, I'm going to walk back home and eat a nice big breakfast. Gosh, I just can't get over it. Me, Jack Benny, walking the streets at this hour of the morning. Things sure look different. And quiet, too. Just a few people here and there on their way to work. I bet this fellow walking behind me would be surprised to find out that 
He was walking on the same side of the street with a star of stage, screen, radio, and television. I beg your pardon, but may I have your autograph? Oh, oh, you recognize me. No, I heard you talking to yourself. <laughs> Gosh, this is embarrassing. You must have thought I was egotistical. I thought you were nuts. <laughs> Look, mister, do you or don't you want Oh, my... I'm sorry, mister. I've got to catch a button. Excuse me. What a smart Alec. I hope he misses it. Oh, well. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Hmm. Look at that tin can on the sidewalk there. <laughs> a kiss may be grand, but it won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you at the automat. Whoops, it went out in the street. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I used to kick a rock all the way to school. They didn't have tin cans in those days. <laughs> hmm. Look at the picture they're showing at this theater. From here to eternity. She at 5.30 in the morning, a theater looks so empty. There isn't even a girl in the box office selling tickets. I've never seen a theater so empty. Yes, I have, but I don't want to think about it. <laughs> eh, I better start back home now. This walk has really worked up an appetite. Hey, Jack. Jack Benny. Bob! Bob Cross! Well, Jack, the sun hasn't come up yet. What in the world are you doing out on the street? I'm just taking a little walk. But, Bob, where are you and Bagby and Fletch and Kimmy and Sammy the drummer driving to? Well, Jack, my boys in the band don't get much time for relaxation, so I'm taking them duck hunting. Oh, is that why you're wearing those red coats? Oh, certainly. That's a safety measure so the other hunters can see you. Hey, that's quite... Wait a minute. Only four of you are wearing the red coats. Well, I know. Bagby doesn't have one. Well, aren't you worried? No, piano players are a dime a dozen. <laughs> of Bagby's caliber, yes. <laughs> well, I do hope you bring back a lot of ducks. Oh, we can't miss. We got the most unusual decoy. I see. Now, when we get out to the lake, yeah. Sammy the drummer has agreed to wade out into the water until just his head sticks out. What kind of a decoy is that? Sammy's head doesn't have any feathers. Well, I know. But the ducks will think it's an egg and they'll fly down and they'll sit on it. <laughs> oh, I get it. Then while the duck is sitting on Sammy's head, you'll all start shooting. Oh, not so loud, Jack. He doesn't know about that part of it. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, we better get started, Jack. It's a long drive to the High Sierra. I see errors. Bob, you're heading in the wrong direction. Well, I know, but we got to go down to the city dump and pick up Remley. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, so long, Bob. So long, Jack. Hmm. Yeah, the day is starting to break. Well, I think I've walked enough. I'm getting a little tired, too. I better head for home. <laughs> Here I am back home. That sure was a long walk. I think I'll go right in and go to bed. Oh, darn it, I forgot my key. Gosh, my legs are so tired, I can hardly stand up. Mr. Benny, shall I? Mm, look at him lying there on the couch, fast asleep. Mm, there's nothing in the room to cover him up with. Got a warrant to catch cold. Maybe I better take it off his head and put it on his chest. <laughs> no, I'll just get a blanket out of it. Coming! Oh, good morning, Rochester. Oh, good morning, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Rochester, did you know that at 20 minutes to 5 this morning, Mr. Benny called me and asked me to go out for a walk? He did? 
Who does he think he is, Bernard McFadden? He will be in about four more years. <laughs> uh, where's Mr. Benny now? He's asleep on the couch in the living room. Well, I'm going in there and wake him up. Come on. Uh, Jack. Uh, Jack, wake up. Miss Livingston, why don't you pat his cheek? Yeah. Oh, Jack. Uh, Jack. What is it, Marilyn? <laughs> huh? What's everybody talking? Oh, it's you, Mary. What are you doing over here? What am I doing over here? Yesterday, you asked me to go with you to buy some new suits for your television shows. So come on, let's go. But Mary, I'm too tired. Well, it's your own fault. Imagine getting up at four o'clock in the morning to take a walk. Well, don't blame me. Blame Hank, the all-night disc jockey. Jack, I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is you made a date with me to go buy some new clothes. So put on your hat and come on. Look, Mary, I'm too tired. Anyway, my car isn't running. All right, we can take the bus right down to Hollywood. The bus? Oh, all right. <laughs> You see, Jack? It only took 12 minutes to get down here. Now, where's the clothing store you go to? Just around the corner. I don't know why we had to get on such a crowded bus. I had to stand all the way. I know. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You were so tired, instead of holding on to the strap, you just stuck your head through the loop and fell asleep. <laughs> What's funny about that? At the next stop, a man got on, took one look at you dangling there and said, I know his last picture was bad, but somebody went too far. <laughs> Mary, he probably just said that for a gag. Then why'd he cut you down? <laughs> I don't know. I'm too tired to argue with you. Here, here's the clothing store. Oh, God. Jack, stop yawning. I can't help it. I'm so sleepy, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Well, this won't take long. Oh, here comes the salesman. How do you do? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, clerk, Mr. Benny wants to buy a new suit. Well, whether he wants to or not, he should. <laughs> Look, mister, I'd like to get home. I was up at four o'clock this morning and I'm... Very all... well. I'm sure you'll like both our materials and price range. The price range? Yes, we have some beautiful suits at $28.75 and $29.50. Or would you prefer something cheaper? <laughs> I didn't come in here for anything cheap. I'll take the $29.50. <laughs> I'm proud of you, boy. Mary, please. Look, mister, how can you possibly afford to sell suits at such low prices? Oh, that's simple. You see, we have no costly fixtures. Oh. Hey, Charlie, pick up some of those suits off the floor and show them to Mr. Ben. <laughs> okay, never mind. I don't want those. You're very well. Hey, would you like to see something in a sport outfit? A sport outfit? Yes, that's when the coat and pants don't match. Oh. Now, if you're looking for a real bargain, I can show you a beautiful pair of sport pants. Sport pants? Yes, the legs don't match. <laughs> Mary, let's go home, will you? I'm tired. Oh, Jack, don't be so stubborn. If they don't have a suit to fit you, maybe they can make one to order. Say, hey, that's a brilliant idea. I'll go get some material. Look, mister, while you're gone, do you mind if I lie down on these chairs? Yeah, not at all. Jack, if you lie down, they won't be able to measure you. Oh, yes, we can. Our tailor used to work for Pierce Brothers. <laughs> I'll stand up, I'll stand up Oh, I just happened to remember Our tailor is off today, I'll have to fit you myself Well, for heaven's sakes, get started yeah, I will, I will <laughs> Would you like me to measure your chest Or would you rather not know? <laughs> Look, and now cut that out Mary, I've got to get some sleep. Let's go home. Jack, if you don't buy a suit now, you'll never buy one. Okay, okay. I'll take that blue one. But, Jack, it may not be your size. I don't care what size it is. I want to get some sleep. Now, how much is it? $29.50. Okay. Here's the money. Come on, Mary. I want to get home. Uh, 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 just a minute. Huh? We always like to check on our advertising. 
Did you come into our store because you saw our ad in the paper, or did you hear our program on the radio? Radio? Yes, we sponsor Hank, the all-night disc jockey. <laughs> Hank! The all-night? You? <coughs> Jack! Jack, you're choking him! I don't care what I'm doing. Nobody's going to wake me up at 4 o'clock in the morning and get away with <coughs> Jack! Jack! Stop choking him! Jack, please! Are you comfortable, Mr. Benny? Yes, Rochester. You want another blanket? No, no, I'm perfectly comfortable. And look, I want to get a good long sleep, so no phone calls, no disturbances of any kind. Yes, sir. I hope you sleep well, boss. Thank you. Boy, that was a good sleep. Ten full hours. I really feel great. But what am I going to do now? It, it's four o'clock in the morning again. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to take another walk. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the sportsman for 10 years, truly done. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the star of our show, a man who for years has won the highest accolade of critics and public alike. Oh, Don, please. A man whose unique abilities have brought him to the pinnacle of success and whose... Oh, I can't read this stuff. <laughs> You'll read it and like it. <laughs> Go ahead. A man whose talent is exceeded only by his modesty. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't see why it should be so hard for you to say a few nice things about me. But I'm happy you managed to struggle through that introduction. Well, Jack, the only reason I did was because I was afraid you'd fire me. Don. I couldn't fire you. Why not? Because this happens to be National Save Your Fat Week. <laughs> That's why. Oh, come on now, Jack. There hasn't been a National Save Your Fat Week since 1944. Don, Edward R. Murrow can be topical. I have to be funny. <laughs> Anyway, you know what today is, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. It was exactly 20 years ago today that I agreed to go on your show. Oh, gosh, Jack, have you and Don really been together that long? We sure have, Bob. And right from the start, it was a wonderful association. No arguments, no bickering, no lawyers. That's right, Bob. He just tattooed the contract on my stomach and let it go at that. <laughs> And every year, there's been room for new closets. <laughs> Don, I don't... Come in. Uh, telegram for Jack Bunny. <laughs> Over here, boy. Hey, it's from Dennis. Anything wrong? Let me read it. Dear Mr. Benny... I may be a little late for the show today as I have to get my shoes shined and my car washed. I'm also eloping to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Dennis, eloping to Niagara Falls? What a crazy kid. I didn't even know he had a girl. Out of a clear blue sky, Dennis elopes. Couldn't get married like everyone else with a ceremony and guests and a nice violin solo. <laughs> Oh, well, if Dennis... Ah, uh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Benny. Oh, are you still here? Well, I hate to mention it, but when one delivers a telegram, it's customary for one to get a tip. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. Now, how much do you usually get? 
Well, uh, that's up to you. Uh, I wouldn't want to influence you in any way. Well, let's see. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone a minute? No, no, go ahead. Uh, hello, Martha. Uh, this is Hyman. Hey, how's Grandma? Oh, not any better, huh? Well, what can we do? We can't afford medicine for the baby either. <laughs> but, but, Mark, if we spend that money on medicine, we won't be able to buy any food. <laughs> huh? The landlord was over? What'd he say? <laughs> He's only gonna give us two more days. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to see what I can do, Martha. <laughs> Keep up your courage. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Control yourself. Control yourself. Here. Here, I've got a tip for you. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. I... Oh, no, no. What's the matter? For a lousy time, I just wasted a routine I could have used on Strike at Rich. <laughs> Look, that's all the change I have for a tip. Anyway, I'm doing a radio program now, so why don't you wait? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, what are you doing here? I thought you were eloping. Oh, that's all off. All off? What happened? Well, this morning I was about to propose to the girl, and I really saw her for the first time. You mean... She's got long, stringy hair, beady eyes, bad complexion, a mean face, and she's as big as a horse <laughs> Gee, she sounds like a mess Yeah, boy, am I glad she turned me down <laughs> Dad, she turned you down? Oh, I don't care, I'll marry her twin sister Oh, fine you should see her twin sister. She's got a figure like Marilyn Monroe, legs like Betty Grable, hair like Rita Hayworth, and a face like Ava Gardner. Dennis, if the other girl is so ugly, how could her twin sister be so beautiful? You and Ed Murrow can be technical. I have to be funny. <laughs> Sing your song, will you? That's a great That was very good, Dennis. That was wonderful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight... We are going to do our version of Universal International's classic of the gridiron, All-American. Hey, isn't that the one where uh, Tony Curtis stars as a football hero? That's right. In fact, tonight I'm playing his role. Oh, but Jack, Tony Curtis is so young. How can you even think of taking the part he played? Look, there's no sense in arguing because I'm going to play the Tony Curtis part and nobody can stop me. I can. Who are you? Tony Curtis. Tony, Tony Curtis, this is a surprise. Well, Jack, I was at the studio when I heard about you doing this sketch tonight, so I thought I'd get down here as fast as I could. Oh. Jack, you really don't intend to take the part I played in the picture, do you? Well, of course I do. Well, don't you think it's a little ridiculous? Well, what's... What's so ridiculous about it? Jack, the picture happens to be all American, not early American. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Tony, I don't understand your attitude at all. It so happens that the producer of your picture, Aaron Rosenberg, is a very good friend of mine. If you don't let me play the part, you'll have to go back to the studio and face him. I mean, how would you explain it to him? I mean, what would you tell him? Him drove me down here. <laughs> oh. Well, look, Tony... I'm going to play the part unless you have a strenuous objection. Well, I do. I think you're playing the part of a college boy is incongruous. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell... Hey, Bob. Bob, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Jack? What, uh, what does incongruous mean? Huh? Well, I'm not sure. Oh, Remley! Never mind! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Remley, a fine fellow to ask <laughs> His dictionary consists of Scotch, bourbon <laughs> Black and white, Hague and Hague 
Now, look, Tony. I'll tell you what incongruous means. It means inappropriate, unbecoming, not harmonious in character, inconsonant or inconsistent. Oh. Well, I still don't understand it. The meaning of incongruous? Oh, how one twin can be so beautiful and the other one so ugly. <laughs> We're not talking about that Well, I don't understand incongruous either Look, Dennis uh, Explain it to him, Tony All right, I'll make it simple, Dennis Incongruous means something that doesn't fit Certainly, you know, something that doesn't fit Now, Tony, you just sit down in the studio And watch me play your part I'm sure you'll enjoy it Okay Take it down And now, ladies and gentlemen We bring you our version Of that thrilling Universal International picture All American The saga of college life on the gridiron Curtain music This is the story of a poor boy who, because of, of his talent on the football field, was able to go to college, rise to the top, and become an All-American. My name is Nick. Nick Bonner Krasinska Vishalikovsky. <laughs> my first year at Mid-State University, I was the star quarterback. I'll never forget that crucial game for the championship. I caught the opening kickoff and ran it back for a touchdown. The crowd went wild. The rooting section stood up and began to cheer for me. Bonner Krasinska, Vichelikovsky, Bonner Krasinska, Vichelikovsky, B O N N A K R A C I M S K. housekeeping seal. <laughs> but Mid-State didn't give football scholarships, so I transferred to Sheridan College. And the next fall, I found myself in the registrar's office, where the dean's secretary was filling out my entrance application. Now, let's see. Nick Benelli, Nick Benelli. Oh, here's your card. Now, tell me, what is your height? Five foot eleven. Uh, your weight? 173. Uh, color of your eyes? Oh, they're blue, aren't they? <laughs> Bluer than the toes of a barefooted field goal kicker. <laughs> well, that's all the questions, and... Oh, just a second. You're here on a football scholarship, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, in that case... You will be provided with tuition, room, and board, and you'll be given $100 a month to spend. Do I have to spend it? <laughs> no. Thank you. <laughs> now, of course, you and all the other football players will have to earn that money. I understand. What will my job be? Well, in the dean's office, there is an eight-day clock. And I'm supposed to wind it? No, the fullback winds it. Your job is to see that he does. <laughs> Under the burden of this assignment, I began my first year at Sheridan. I'll never forget the day I met our famous football coach. I remember how he walked into the dressing room and said, All right, you men, I want all the linemen to go out and practice tackling. The ends brush up on pass receiving. Halfbacks will put in two hours each bucking the line. The fullbacks will spend the whole day trying to kick field goals. And you, you're playing quarter, aren't you? Yes, sir. What shall I do? Scratch my back. 
This was a thrilling moment for me. At last, I had met that great coach, Itchy Day. <laughs> I stood there, scratching his back. He looked at me and yelled, Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Coach. I don't want to do this. I'm an all-American at Mid-State. Well, you're at Sheridan now, and everybody starts from scratch. <laughs> and another thing, we observe strict training here. Yes, sir. That means no parties, no dancing, and no dates with girls. And you'll take all your meals at the training table. You have to be in bed by nine, up at six, and we practice seven days a week. But what do we do for fun here at Sheridan? On Tuesday night, you play Scrabble with naughty words. <laughs> Yes, Coach Day was a strict disciplinarian And when it came to football, he was a perfectionist We had a good team, but the players weren't very bright So Coach Day had little radios installed in our helmets So we could listen to the broadcast of the game and find out who had the ball <laughs> One day I tuned in the wrong station and tackled John's other wife <laughs> After starring in three straight games, I was the toast of the campus. But I found out that Sheridan was different than Mid-State. These students were snobs, and my roommate, Robert Carter, was the biggest snob of all. He was always nagging me. Hey, Benelli. What is it, Robert? How many times have I told you? When you store things in the closet, keep your mothballs away from mine. <laughs> but how can you tell the difference? Mine are monogrammed. Oh, Robert, why can't we be friends? I don't like riffraff But, Robert, I'm so popular on the campus All the fraternities are begging me to join Well, mine is the ritziest one And I'm sure that you won't get in Why not? Because I'm the only member <laughs> What? And the only reason I got in Is my brother owns a college Later, I found out his brother also owned Minute Maid Orange Juice, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Pittsburgh. But Robert sent me straight on one thing. Benelli, you don't fit in here. If you didn't play football, nobody at Sheridan would even talk to you. Oh, yeah? They'd still like me for myself. Well, what makes you think so? I'll tell you why, because I've got a winning personality. Muscles of steel that the fellows admire and respect. And the kind of youth and good looks that make girls swoon. That door slam wasn't Robert. It was Tony Curtis leaving the studio. <laughs> but I decided to find out if Robert was right. The next day I turned in my uniform and overnight I became the most unpopular person on the campus. A few weeks later at the dance before the big game, I sat for hours in a corner by myself. Nobody came within five feet of me. I was beginning to think good housekeeping might have been wrong. <laughs> it was then that I saw her. Hello, handsome. She was beautiful, and I had a hunch she was popular, too. She was wearing 164 fraternity pins. <laughs> No dress, just fraternity. <laughs> she smiled and came jingling towards me. Before I knew it, we were dancing together. What's your name? Viola Ward. I'm Nick Benelli. I know. Gee, Nick, dancing with you is different than dancing with the other college fellows. It is? Yes. They don't even know the minuet. <laughs> Gee, Viola, you're beautiful. Will you marry me? I might if you changed your mind and played football again. Oh, so that's it. Well, I wouldn't play football for anything. Not even if I kissed you like this? No. <laughs> like this? No. <laughs> or even like this? <laughs> I had 
decided to play football after the first kiss, but I wasn't foolish enough to tell her. <laughs> Next day, I was sitting alone in my room, and from the stadium, I could hear the cheers of the crowd and the glee club as they sang our school song. I was not made of stone, and the school spirit in that song got me. I rushed to the stadium and slipped into my good old uniform. The game was well into the fourth period. Sheridan was trailing by one point, and as I ran out into the field, the crowd went wild. B O N N A K. I changed it! I changed it! I called my favorite play, but it was stopped cold. The opposing team had the biggest line in football. His name was Don Wilson. <laughs> Once I ran around his end and was out of bounds by 10 yards. <laughs> Time was running out, but I kept cool. I knew our chance would come. Then with seconds left to play, I intercepted a pass. And as I weaved down the field, suddenly everything went black. I couldn't see a thing. My helmet had slipped down over my eyes. It didn't fit. In other words, it was incongruous. <laughs> I threw off my helmet and cut to the left. I faked to the right. I zigzagged. Suddenly, I thought of viola, and I found myself doing the minuet on the 20-yard line. <laughs> As I started running again, I realized there was only one man between me and the goal line but I couldn't get by him. Then I noticed he wasn't even wearing a football uniform, and I hollered at him. Why don't you let me get by? I'm still waiting for my tip. <laughs> but I didn't give him the tip. Why should I? After all, it was Tony Curtis, and not I, who was the All-American. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Tony Curtis, who appeared tonight through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures and will soon be seen in his latest picture, Forbidden. Good night, everybody. We're a little late. Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's turn back the clock to early morning and go out to Jack's home in Beverly Hills. Good morning, Rochester. Oh, good morning, milkman. E easy with those bottles. Mr. Benny is still asleep. Okay, here's your order. The milk, cream, butter, and eggs. Thanks. Well, I gotta be going. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Oh, say, uh, Rochester. Yeah? Wouldn't Mr. Benny do another of his television shows tonight? Uh-huh. That's why I'm letting him sleep so late. You know, doing radio and television is quite a strain. Even for a man of 39. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you trying to kid? You've been saying Mr. Benny is 39 for years. I know, and I'll keep right on saying until I get a better offer from some other comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I better put this stuff in the refrigerator. Good morning, Rochester. Uh, good morning, Mr. Benny. I'll have your breakfast in just a minute. Oh, that's fine. I'm, I'm really hungry. Ah, uh, it won't take long. I'll let you sleep a little later because you're doing your TV show tonight. You know, I'm glad you did, Rochester, because I had the same dream again. The one where you were locked in the California bank? Yeah. <laughs> and I counted all the money. The fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, and thousand dollar bills. And finally, the total was $7,349,560. Boy, what a relief. Why? The night before, I was $2 short. <laughs> Gosh, the, the dream was so real. It must have been. Wash the green off your hands and have your breakfast. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Coming, coming. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. How are you feeling, kid? Fine. What's new? Nothing. 
Oh, well, what'd you come over here for? Say goodbye, I'm running away from home. <laughs> Not again. Always runs away from home. Dennis, does your mother know you're running away from home? It was her idea. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, another fight with your mother, huh? Uh-huh. What happened this time? Well, we were all sitting around the dinner table laughing and having a good time, and then suddenly she lost her temper when I mentioned August 14th, 1924. Well, what happened that day? That's when I was born. <laughs> oh, and as soon as you mentioned your birthday, she hit you, huh? Yeah, but she hit my father first. <laughs> Look, kid, why don't you... Oh, Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? Your breakfast is ready. Okay, I'll be right there. Dennis, have you had your breakfast yet? No. Why don't you run out and get some while I'm having mine? <laughs> it won't take long. Mr. Benny, when I heard Mr. Day come in, I prepared breakfast for him, too. Oh. Well, Dennis, how about joining me? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not hungry. But, Dennis, you told me you haven't had your breakfast. I know. Then how come you're not hungry? I just had lunch. <laughs> Look, Dennis, if you weren't going to run away and you were going to be on the program next Sunday, you'd sing a song, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Well, let's hear it now. Always running away. <laughs> Dennis, that old song was fine. I know it'll be wonderful on the program next Sunday. What do you mean next Sunday? I'm running away today. <laughs> I know, but while you were singing it, I recorded it. Gee, for an old man, you don't miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Look, Dennis, will you please leave me alone? I don't want to be aggravated because I'm supposed to do my television show today. Oh, your TV show? Who's going to be your guest star? Johnny Ray. When your sweet heart sends a letter of goodbye. Now cut that out. It's no secret. Dad, stop. <laughs> Gee, you're jumpy. You think it was you who was running away from home. Dennis, why don't you... Oh, say, Mr. Benny, can I use your phone? The phone? Yes, Dennis. Go ahead. Thanks. I want to call TWA. I'm going to get on a plane and go as far now, away as I can. wait a minute, wait a minute, Dennis. Wait a minute. This has gone far enough. Now, you pick up that phone and call your mother and tell her that you're sorry and that you're not going to run away from home. But, Mr. Benny... Do as I say. Now, call your mother. Okay. Silly kid. Treating his mother like that. Hello, Mother. This is Dennis. Your son. <laughs> I'm over at Mr. Benny's. Uh-huh. He wanted me to call you and tell you I'm sorry and that I'm not going to run away from home. What? Okay, goodbye, Mother. What'd she say? She said for you to mind your own business. <laughs> well, I don't care what she said. You're still not going to run away from home. And take that... I'll get it, Mr. Benny. Okay. Wilson? Hello, Rochester. Mr. Benny up yet? Up and assembled. He's in the den. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, hi, Jack. Hello, Dennis. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Don. I thought I'd see you at the studio. I know, but I came over here first. I, I want to see you about a rather personal matter. What is it? Well, uh, can I talk to you privately? It's uh, a little confidential. Well, don't mind me. Tomorrow I'll be in Pakistan. <laughs> be quiet. Now, what is this personal matter, Don? Well, I broached this subject to you before. It's just this. I don't like all the jokes you make about my size. But no. Oh, it wasn't so bad on radio because there the listeners couldn't see me. You could even do the same jokes about a skinny person. Well, then what's your complaint? Now you're doing them on television, and with me standing there, people can see I'm a big tub of blubber. <laughs> Don, I'm sorry. Just being sorry is not enough, Jack. I'd like you to take that joke out of today's script. Which joke? The one where you say to me, Don, are those your chins or are you chewing on a Venetian blind? <laughs> Don, it's a wonderful joke and I made it up. I don't care. I want it out. Well, <laughs> you must be loaded. <laughs> Brother, you're rich when you can talk to me like that. Okay, Don. I didn't know you were... Excuse me, Don. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Oh, Bob. Bob, what is it? Well, Jack, I'm kind of worried. You see, Frank Remley has disappeared. <laughs> no. Hell, yeah. he's been gone for a couple of weeks now, and I'm getting more and more upset. Did you report his disappearance to the police? I went there last night. 
Well, did you give the police a good description of Frankie? Oh, I didn't have to. They got his picture, fingerprints, and baby shoes. <laughs> baby shoes? Didn't Remley have them bronze? Yes, and he used them for brass knuckles. <laughs> no kidding. But Jack, this could be serious. You're right. Maybe Frankie has amnesia and has forgotten who he is. Oh, I'm not worried about that. You see, he carries an identification tag with his name, address, and also his blood type. Oh, I didn't... What, what is Frankie's blood type? Old Crow. <laughs> well, that I should have known. Now, look, Bob. Don't worry about Frankie. He'll turn up. Unfortunately, he always does. Well, I hope so. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Bob. Well, I gotta run along. Can I drop you any place, Dennis? Not unless you're passing Puna Foodie. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Dennis, go with her, will you? Go, go, go. <laughs> Mr. Benning! What? You better get going to the studio or you'll be late for your television show. Oh, yes, I better hurry. Well, I'll see you later. Okay. So long, boys. Goodbye. You know, Rochester, I'm kind of nervous. I hope I have a funny television show today. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, boss. The minute you come on the stage, the audience will start laughing and screaming. You can't miss. What makes you so sure? You forgot to put on your pants. <laughs> I'll be darned. I almost did TV in my BVDs. <laughs> Rochester, get me my trousers. I have to hurry to the studio. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gee, these new cars are sensational. Power steering, windows go up when you press a button, a classy horn. Gee, I'm sure glad I waited for a 1954 Cadillac. Yes, sir. Well, here's Television City. Thanks for the lift, mister. <laughs> I better go in. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Well, Mac, what are you doing here? You used to be the doorman over at the radio studio. Yep, but they transferred me here to Television City. Oh, yeah. Say, Mac, is the makeup man in? Yes, sir. And your guest star, Johnny Ray, is here, too. Good, good. See you later. Oh, uh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes, Mac. Uh, Mr. Benny, how long ago was it that you held the I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest? Well, we finished that eight years ago. Well, you ought to make an announcement on your program. We keep getting about 500 letters a week. <laughs> well, at least they're listeners. They couldn't hate me if they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Ricochet romance. Gee, Television City is certainly beautiful. It's got the latest style architecture. The architects put in all the latest improvements. Electric eyes, sliding walls, thermostatic air conditioning, indirect lighting, complete soundproofing. Luckily, there's a gas station on the corner. They forgot the washrooms. <laughs> I wonder where my director is. Oh, stagehand! Yes, Mr. Benny? Have you seen Mr. Ralph Levy, my director? Uh, yeah, there he is with the camera crew. Oh, yes. Oh, Mr. Levy! Mr. Levy! Here I am, Jack. Mr. Levy, I understand you have some things you want to discuss with me before I go on. Oh, uh, yes, Jack. It's just a minor thing. But whenever you start a television show and you're out on the stage by yourself, I notice you always keep putting your hands in your hip pocket. This can be very distracting. Well, I'm sorry, Ralph. It's a habit. Jack, you're out there alone. Your money's safe. <laughs> Okay, I'll watch it. Now, Ralph, there are a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. What's that? Well, some people told me that when they saw me on television during my last show that I looked kind of old, and they even detected a few wrinkles in my face. Now, why is that? 
Well, it's very simple, Jack. You see, you know you're 39, and I know you're 39. It's just the camera that's so stupid. <laughs> Excuse me, you say, Mr. Levy, should I get the scenery set? Yeah, Joe, and Harry, move those lights a little closer. Dick, Dick Fisher, tell the cameraman to stand by. Oh, say, Ralph. Uh, wait a minute. We're not doing a murder mystery on the show tonight, are we? Of course not. Then why is that body lying there? I don't know. It's been there since we did our last TV show. Oh, excuse me. Hello. Hello, Bob. I found him. <laughs> well, Mr. Levy, it's time for dress rehearsal. Okay, Joe. Everybody stand by. Ready, Jack? Yes. Oh, by the way, Jack, I almost forgot. What? Before you came here, I timed the show again, and we were three minutes too long. So I cut out the scene where you play the violin solo. Now, wait a minute, Ralph. You can't cut that scene. I had to. I told you we were three minutes long. You're not taking out my violin solo. Jack, I'm the director, and I think it's best for the show. The violin is out, and that's final. Well, it's not final. I'm going over your head to the producer. I'm the producer, too. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. The producer and the director. Whose idea was it you should hold down two jobs? Yours. You wanted to save the money. <laughs> well, I don't care if you are the producer and the director. I'm the star, and I say my violin solo stays in. And I say it comes out. I say it stays in. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph, that big light fell from way up there on that platform almost hit me. How could an accident like that happen? That was no accident. It's amazing what you can do when you're the producer and director. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do it my way. All right, we'll do it your way. That's better. Well, I'll go to my dressing room and change. Hey, Mr. Levy. What is it, Joe? You were right. He's chicken. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned before, tonight I'm doing my TV show, and my guest star will be Johnny Ray. And we're going to... Hello? Oh, Johnny. Are you a television city? You aren't? Well, where are you? On the corner of... What are you doing there? Oh, you're waiting for a 1954 Cadillac, too. <laughs> well, get here as soon as you can. Goodbye, Johnny. Good night, folks. Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take you back a week to last Sunday, where Jack Benny has just finished his television show. And as usual, after a TV show, Jack likes to relax by walking home. Gee, I feel good. I don't know why I was so nervous all through my television show. Everyone was so good. Johnny Ray was just sensational. The audience was great, too. It's not often you get a happy audience like that. Gee, they applauded and laughed at everything. That was a good idea Remley had of serving them martinis before the show. <laughs> Being on television. I can hardly wait till I appear on the omnibus program. It'd be nice to do something dramatic for a change. Gee, I've accomplished a lot for a man of 39. <laughs> I wonder how old I really am. <laughs> Let's see, I've been in show business 35 years. 
And I was four when I started. <laughs> That's right, 39. <laughs> Next year, I'll have been in show business 36 years. That'll make me three when I start. <laughs> Gee, three years from now, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> but what's the difference as long as you feel? Uh-oh, there's the bus. Hey, wait, wait for me! Smart Alec driver. That's the third one he snatched off my head this month. <laughs> oh, well. I didn't want to ride the bus anyway. It's so depressing to put a dime in a machine and not have anything come out. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that'd be a good joke for my radio show next week People love those jokes that make me seem cheap I must sell it to my writer <laughs> Gee, I must have walked fast Here's Dennis Day's house and he lives pretty close to me I'd go in and say hello to him, but his mother and I don't get along Uh-oh, I can see her through the window She's just walking into the living room. Mother, Mr. Benny's program has been over for 15 minutes. Well, thank goodness. Mother, why do you always leave the room when Mr. Benny's TV program is on? I can't resist the urge to kick him in the teeth and television sets cost money. <laughs> oh. Say, uh, what's that you're knitting? It's the sweater I promised you. Gosh, Mother, you're so nice to me. I wish I could do something for you to show my appreciation, but you know what Mr. Benny pays me. Yes, I know. And after 15 years, I think it's high time you got a raise. Well, Mother, I, I wanted to ask him for a raise a hundred times, but I can never catch him in a good mood. Well, when is he in a good mood? When he's cutting someone's salary. <laughs> Dennis, I just can't understand why you keep working for that blue-eyed pinch penny. <laughs> it has its compensations. Compensation? Yeah, I'm slowly driving them nuts. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have some fun with him today, too. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, when he gets home, I'm going to keep calling him on the phone and pretend I'm different celebrities and tell him how great he was on television today. Oh, goody. He's such a ham, I bet he falls for it. Schnook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Yeah, I I'll make out first that I'm Ronald Coleman. Ronald Coleman? Ah, yes, Benita. I think we have something here. I can hardly wait till Canhead gets home from the studio. <laughs> well, Dennis, he won't be home for a few minutes. So while you're waiting, you better rehearse the song you're going to do on the program. Okay. Well... Here I am, home at last. Gee, that was a long walk. Thought I'd never get... Oh, there's my new gardener. Been wanting to talk to him. Oh, Jerome! Jerome! Uh, hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Jerome, I hate to complain, but this front yard of mine is a mess. Since I hired you, nothing seems to be growing right. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Benny, I never should have taken this job. Why not? I'm a flower man. I don't know nothing about vegetables. <laughs> but, Jerome... Look at your front yard. Carrots, celery, tomatoes, potatoes... But, Jerome... Eggplant, lettuce, parsnips, artichokes... But... Not one lousy petunia in the whole place. <laughs> Who eats petunia? <laughs> Look, Jerome, just do the best you can. I will, I will. Hmm. If he couldn't handle it, why didn't he tell me before I bought the plow? <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Mr. Benny! Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? There's a phone call for you. Oh. Oh. 
Hello? Uh, hello, is that you, Jack, old boy? Yes, who is this? Uh, this is Ronald Coleman. Well, Ronnie, how are you? Fine, Jack. I called to tell you that I saw your TV show today, and I thought you were absolutely wonderful. Oh, Ronnie, you're just saying that. No, 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 no. I, I mean it, Jack. If I were king and Benita were queen, you would be our court jester. Oh, Ronnie, that's... <laughs> that's awfully sweet of you, but I wasn't that good. Ah, uh, yes, you are, Jack. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ronnie. You know, Ronnie, it's strange, but I've always had a silly notion that you didn't like me. On the contrary, Jack. I've always thought of you as quite a pleasant schlemiel. <laughs> What? Well, thanks again for calling, Ronnie. I'm so glad you like my show. Well, I just had to call and tell you. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye. <laughs> Rochester, you'll never guess who... Oh, hello, Mary. When did you come in? Uh, Rochester let me in while you were on the phone. Oh, Rochester, see you's at the door, will you? Yes. Incidentally, Mary, what did you think of my TV show? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I was so upset about my maid, Pauline, that I couldn't concentrate on the show. Hey, excuse me, boss. It was Mr. Warner at the front door, and he wants to see you privately. He's waiting in the den. Warner? Mr. Jack Warner, Warner Brothers Studio. Oh, Jack Warner. Oh, excuse me a minute, Mary. Well, Mr. Warner. Hello, Jack. Well. Well, how, how have you been, Mr. Warner? Long time no see. You know, Jack, I just heard the news about your making an appearance on the omnibus program. Yes, Mr. Warner. I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight. That's just what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> what? Look, Jack, you made that picture for us in 1944, didn't you? That's right. It was for the Warner Brothers. Well, since then, our studio has produced streetcar named Desire, House of Wax, Hondo, the Eddie Canner story, Calamity Jane, and this year, I'm sure our picture so big will be up for an Academy Award. So? So, we're rolling again. Let us alone. <laughs> yes. Now, just a minute, Mr. Warner. How can you say that? You yourself told me that when the horn blows at midnight was shown in Hollywood, the theater made money. That's because we rented out the balcony as a trailer camp. <laughs> Mr. Warner, you can't put all the blame on me. When you did that picture, you made one big mistake. I know. We put film in the camera. <laughs> Mr. Warner, that's an old joke. Yeah, if I had anything new, I'd have put it in the picture. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I still think it's a great story. And if you'd listen to me while we were making it, The Horn Blows at Midnight would have been a terrific hit. Jack, we tried everything. We even spent over $100,000 for a new finish. Nobody even stayed to see it. <laughs> well, that's not my fault. And you'll see it's going to be great on television when I do it on Omnibus. All right, Jack, if you won't listen to reason, maybe you'll listen to this. We'll give you $5,000 not to do it. No. $10,000. I'm sorry, Mr. Warner, but money means nothing to me. <laughs> I've got to listen to the repeat show and see if I really heard that. <laughs> what? Look, Jack, here's my final offer. My brothers Harry, Albert, and myself are willing to take you into the firm and make you one of the Warner Brothers. No, 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 I'm afraid not. That means I'd have to change my name. If you do, the picture we're going... It, oh, I blew it. <laughs> afraid not. That means I'd have to change my name. If you do the picture, we're going to change ours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. I'm going to do the horn blows at midnight on television, and that's final, Mr. Warner. Just call me Sam Goldwyn. <laughs> what? Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Mr. Warner won. Oh, he heard that I was going to do the horn blows at midnight on Omnibus, and he's trying to stop me. Stop you? Yeah, I don't know why. He admitted himself he's back on his feet. Certainly. <laughs> I mean, you've done pictures for studios that have never recovered. <laughs> why, certainly. <laughs> After all... Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Jimmy Durante speaking. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to hear from you. Well, pay close attention, because I'm calling long distance. Long distance? Yeah, my schnoz is between me and the mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hundred of them, a hundred of them. Jimmy, I thought you had a million of them. I did, but I'm using them up in television. <laughs> oh. But to come to the print, Jack, I just had to tell you how great you were today. You mean on my TV show? Yeah, your performance not only warmed the cocktails of my heart, but it was the histrionic triumph of stupendous, colossal magnitude. <laughs> Jimmy, you've never paid me such compliments. And I won't again. I just fractured my tongue. <laughs> well, I've got to hang up now. I'm late. Where are you going? To Clifton Fetterman's house. We play Scrabble tonight. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks very much, Jimmy. I'm sure glad you liked my show. So long. And an au revoir to you, too. <laughs> Mary, this is amazing. Uh, what's amazing, Jack? Well, first Ronald Coleman calls, now Jimmy Durante, and they both just raved about my TV show. Well, it was good, Jack. Good? It was a histrionic triumph a stupendous colossal magnitude. <laughs> cha cha cha. <laughs> you know when when fellow performers praise you, it gives you such a good feeling. Say, Rochester, didn't I hear somebody at the back door? Uh huh. Here, Mister Barry, this is yours. The bus driver dropped it off. <laughs> At least he didn't run over it like he did the last time. I'll get it. Oh, hello, Mr. Crosby. Hello, Rochester. Is the funny man at home? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, hello, Bob. Come on Hi, in. Hi, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hi, Don. Oh, hello, Bob. Bob. Hey, Bob, that's a nice suit you're wearing. Oh. Thanks, Jack. What, uh... <laughs> What kind of a flower is that in your lapel? That's an artichoke. I picked it in your front yard. <laughs> oh. For a minute, I thought I was in the farmer's market. <laughs> all right, all right. What'd you come over for, Bob? Well, Jack, I was going to call, but... Well, my wife insisted that I should mention this to you in person. Well, wives know best. What is it, Bob? What is it? What is well, it? Well, Jack, I'm still being paid by the week, aren't I? Of course, Bob. That's the way I pay all the members of my cast. Well, I sort of hate to mention it, but, well, this is our 11th show this season, and I'm a little behind. Oh, well, Bob, sometimes there are slight unavoidable delays. The mail is late, or the accounting department slows up a little. How many checks have you gotten? Two. <laughs> <laughs> Only two checks all season? That's right. Bob, I don't know what to say. This is terribly embarrassing. You should call my business manager immediately. Well, I already did. I told him I've received two checks this whole season. What did he say? Congratulations, I only got one. <laughs> well, Bob, sometimes we do get a little behind, but sooner or later, everyone gets paid up. <laughs> Phone again. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Eddie. Who? Eddie Cantor, you know. If you knew Susie, like oh, I know Susie, oh. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, I know you. How are you, Eddie? Fine, Jack. I just wanted to tell you that you were magnificent today on your TV show. Simply magnificent. Well, thanks, Eddie. I just can't tell you what this call means. It gives me a real thrill. I thought it would. Bye, Jack. 
So long, Eddie. Well, this is really... This is really something. First, Ronald Coleman congratulated me. Then, Jimmy Durante. Now, Eddie Cantor. Uh, did Eddie like your show, too? He was nuts about it. Yeah, I feel so good, I want to give a party. Say, why don't you kids come down to the Brown Derby and have dinner on me? How about it, huh? Yeah, the Brown Derby, that sounds good to me. We can all go in my car. Good. Oh, wait a minute. Rochester! Yes, boy! If there are any more calls for me, tell them they can reach me at the Brown Derby. Okay! Well, come on, everybody. Remember, this dinner party's on me. You sure you ordered what you want, Mary? Yes, I haven't had lobster for a long time. Boy, I can hardly wait to get at that wild duck. Well, it won't be long. Don's still ordering. And waiter, I want a large salad with a whole egg mayonnaise. Very good, Mr. Wilson. We have baked potatoes, mashed, and French fries. That'll be fine. I'll have... <laughs> I'll have the large T-bone steak, a small filet mignon, a side of spaghetti, carrots, peas... Waiter, I thought I told you to put it all on one check. The way he's ordering, I'm lucky if I can get it on three. <laughs> well, keep ordering, Don. I don't want any of you to hold back. It's all on me. Say, Jack, isn't that Jimmy Stewart over at that table? Jimmy Stewart? Hey, you're right, Mary. That's Jimmy Stewart sitting right over there. I think I'll go over and say hello to him. There's a phone call for you, Mr. Benny. I'll plug it in here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Jack. This is Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was just sitting home, and I got such a thrill out of your TV show that I just had to call and tell you how great I thought you were. Well, Jimmy, that's... Wait a minute. Jimmy Stewart? Yeah. Wait, you can't be Jimmy Stewart because he's sitting right here in the Brown Derby. I'm looking at him right now. Ah, uh, Benita, we went one too far. <laughs> Dennis, it's you. If you knew Dennis like I know Dennis. Dennis, oh, if you've been oh. calling me all afternoon, I'm going... Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. <laughs> It was all a trick. Waiter, hold the orders. Hold the orders. Jack, you're making a sense. I don't care. Cancel the stakes. Don't kill the duck. <laughs> the dirtiest trick anyone has ever played on me. I'm going home and the dentist is going to hear from me about this in the morning. That's Dennis. Hello? Yeah, this is Mabel. Oh, hello, Gertrude. How are you? Yeah, I got another letter from Sylvester from overseas. Oh, that boyfriend of mine. He's full of surprises. Now he's decided to run a laundry when he gets out of the army. No, he doesn't know anything about it, but he can learn, can't he? Sure, while well, he's in the army. Well, all he's got to do is write to Madison 3, Wisconsin, and you Safi sends a manual that tells him all about it. What do you mean, a manual who? <laughs> they send you a book. Yeah. Sylvester says they've got 19 manuals on all kinds of small businesses. What? How should I know how Sylvester got interested in laundries? Maybe because it's like he wrote me. So many of his buddies have taken him to the cleaners. <laughs> he sure must have some nice friends in the army. They're so considerate. Oh, I gotta disconnect you, Gertrude. My buzz is flashing. I'll let you know when I hear from Sylvester again. Yeah. Don't take any wooden nickels. Bye. Who's there? It's me, Rochester. Gee, Mr. Benny, you sure finished your dinner in a hurry. I didn't have it. I found out that... I'll get it, boss. Hello? Yes, sir, he's here. Just a minute. Boss, it's Mr. Lewis, your sponsor calling. Oh, it is, eh? I know all about that. My sponsor. 
These tricks have gone too far. Give me that phone. Now look, you silly, stupid kid. I don't want you calling me up anymore with these crazy things. And the next time I see you... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Benny. I came over to apologize. Quiet, Dennis. I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> now look, you stupid... <laughs> Dennis is here. Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis, I thought you were someone else. Really, I didn't, Mr. Lewis. But, 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 but. 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 Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last Thursday was Thanksgiving, and Jack invited his whole gang over for dinner. But let's go back to the day before Thanksgiving. As we look in on Jack's home, he and Rochester are taking inventory to make sure that they have enough of everything for the big event. They're checking all the items in the pantry. As Rochester calls them off, Jack is writing them down. Two cans of corned beef hash. Two cans of corned beef hash. Three cans of cranberry sauce. Three cans of cranberry sauce. Two bottles of A1 sauce. Two bottles of A1 sauce. Ninety-seven bottles of olives. Ninety... Wait a minute, Rochester. Isn't that the same amount of olives that we had last year? Yeah, we don't use any since Phil Harris left the show. <laughs> Oh, yes, Bob Crosby isn't a martini, man. Continue, Rochester. Two bottles of vanilla extract. Two bottles of vanilla extract. One bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. <laughs> One bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. Twelve slices of white bread. Twelve slices of white bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Oh, say, boss... What is it, Rochester? When we come to the toothpicks, let's just estimate. <laughs> okay for the plain ones, but the colored ones will count. <laughs> now, let's finish this. Yes, sir. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of chili sauce. Six bottles of chili sauce. Three cans of Puss in Boots cat food. <laughs> Three cans of Puss in Boots cat food. Boss, why have we got that? I borrowed it from the Coleman's. But, but we haven't got a cat. Why did you borrow it? Well, they were out of butter, and I didn't want to leave empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use it someday. Continue. One sack of Idaho potatoes. One sack of Idaho... Rochester, answer the door. I'll finish the inventory. Yes, sir. Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Welcome to Ralph's Supermarket. Uh, what? Come right in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Uh, what are you doing up on that stool? I'll be finished in a minute. I'm just putting some stuff back on the top shelf. Would you please hand me those two jars of caviar? Oh, fine. Fish eggs from a frightened mackerel, and he calls it caviar. <laughs> Mary, why do you have to come over here and... Jack, look out! The stool! The cans are falling! <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Jack, are you hurt? No, no, I'm all right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> With those fish eggs in your ear, you look like you're going upstream to spawn. <laughs> Upstream to spawn, upstream to spawn. A man nearly kills himself and you talk about romance. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't care. Answer that, will you please? Okay. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Hey, Mary, how come you're answering the phone? You got new clause in your contract? <laughs> no, Bob. Jack would have answered it, but he can't. He's lying on the floor. Oh, holy smoke, he's getting as bad as my musicians. 
Oh, it isn't that at all. He fell off a stool. Oh, well, that's what the boys in the band do. <laughs> Look, Bob, it's kind of hard to explain, but he fell while checking some stuff in the pantry. The pantry? Yeah, he's making sure he's enough of everything for his big Thanksgiving dinner. You're coming, aren't you? Oh, sure. I bought my ticket two weeks ago. <laughs> Oh, that was smart There's no sense waiting till the last minute When the scalpers get hold of them <laughs> uh, Just a minute, Bob I'll let you talk to Jack Jack, it's Bob Crosby I'll take it Hello, Bob Say, Jack, I wonder if you could give me A couple of extra tickets To next week's broadcast Well, I might be able to scrape up two Who are they for? Well, to tell you the truth They're for Remley But he was afraid to ask you Well, he should be After what happened last time he gave that ticket to his girl and she almost started a riot in the studio. Imagine her walking up and down the aisle doing a thing like that. Oh, but that wasn't her fault, Jack. The band never should have played A Pretty Girl Is Like a Melody. <laughs> All right, but where did she get the balloons? Where did she get the balloons? Where'd you get the pen? Never mind. All right, Bob. I'll give you the tickets at rehearsal. Thank you, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bob always has to call me when I'm busy. Oh, Rochester. What is it, boss? I knocked over all these cans when I fell off the stool. Will you pick them up while I go on with the inventory? Yes, sir. Mary, will you please help me? I'll call off the items and you write them down. Oh, sure, Jack. Five bottles of vinegar. Five bottles of vinegar. Three bottles of real lemon juice. Three bottles of real lemon juice. 4,500 cans of Minute Maid orange juice. 4,500 cans of Minute Maid orange juice. Wasn't that a wonderful guest spot I did on Bing's program? <laughs> <laughs> I had to give 500 cans to my agent, you know. <laughs> now, let's keep going, Mary. One leg of lamb. One leg of lamb. Two packages of bacon. Two packages of bacon. Bacon. One side of beef. Say, Mary. Uh, just a minute, Jack. Go ahead, Rochester. Twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Two thousand four hundred and fifty-six cans. Cans? <laughs> cans of what? Just cans. Mr. Benny, don't throw nothing away. <laughs> Certainly not. I, I, I paint them and hang them on Christmas trees. Now, Mary, I can finish this up with Rochester, so... Shall I answer it, boss? No, don't bother getting down from the stool. I'll answer it. I'd get this inventory finished before we... Oh, Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if oh, you... Oh, hello, would... Dennis. Hello. Mr. Benny, I just come over to ask you if you... How do you would... feel, kid? Fine. Mr. Benny, I just come over to ask you if Close you... Close the door, will you, Dennis? Okay. Now, Dennis, what did you... Dennis... How do you like that? He locked himself out. <laughs> oh, well. It just... Come in. Oh, Mr. Benny, I just come over to ask you if it would be all right Dennis, with you Dennis, when I, I told you to close the door, I meant you should come in first. Oh. <laughs> now, now, what did you want to ask me? If I could use your phone, our house is on fire. <laughs> Now, Dennis, don't be silly. If your house on fire, why would you come all the way to Beverly Hills to use the phone? I want the fireman to think I'm a big shot. <laughs> Dennis, close the door, will you? Just my luck. This time he stayed on the inside. Now, look, kid, I'm busy, so don't bother me with all these silly things you make up. Come on, Mayor, let's finish this inventory. Okay. Oh, well, is that what you're doing? Yes, yes. I thought you were cleaning house like my mother did the other day. I'm not cleaning house Boy, did she get rid of a lot of stuff She threw some old mm -hmm. curtains out of the living room A broken rocking chair out of the bedroom And she even took the moose head out of the shower <laughs> Now, Mary, let's... Dennis <clears throat> Dennis She took what out of the shower? The moose head <laughs> You're going to ignore that, eh, Mary? I certainly am <laughs> Hmm my father put it there, but my mother... Wait a mother... minute, Dennis. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it a minute. I know I'll regret asking you this. 
But why would your father put a moose head in the shower? The other end would look silly. <laughs> well, that I can understand. Now, Dennis, besides your house being on fire and your father being in a shower with a moose, what else is new? <laughs> Well, I've been rehearsing my song all week. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to. Anything. Go ahead. Okay. Hold it a minute, Dennis. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mel Blanc. Well, hello, Mel. What is it? Mr. Benny, I've been on your program for 10 years now, and I ain't never complained before, but this time I gotta. What's the matter? It's about the part you got me playing in Sunday's show. Some part. Oh, brother. Now, wait a minute, Mel. Sunday's program is about Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah. And what's the most important thing connected with Thanksgiving? A turkey. Well, that's the part you're playing. <laughs> well, I don't like it. Always you make me an animal. Why can't I have a talking part and be a human being? Look, Mel. Sometimes you make me a rabbit. A rabbit? Eh. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Look, Mel. Or a woodpecker? Mel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mel Mel, look, I'm busy Once and... you even cast me as an English horse An English horse? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mel, I'm sorry Just that you have to play the parts that are needed You may not realize it, Mr. Benny But I'm pretty important to you Important? Yeah, if it wasn't for me You'd never get any place what are you talking about? I wouldn't get any place. Every time you start that lousy Maxwell, I almost break a blood vessel going... <laughs> hmm. That's all the things I do on a program. Now I want some talking parts. I'm a human being. Now look, Mel. Either you stop this complaining or I'll let you go. You wouldn't fire me. All right, all right. But Sunday, you're playing a turkey, and that's final. Uh, what made you so mad at Mel, Jack? Oh, he's always complaining. I got a half a notion to fire him. You better not. He's too important to the show. Yeah, I guess you're right. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Huh? <laughs> Dennis, that was very good. Now, just sit down for a few minutes. I want to finish my inventory. We've got it all listed, boss, and you've got plenty of everything for the Thanksgiving dinner. Good. We won't have to do any shopping, then. How big a turkey did you get? Turkey? I knew I forgot something You mean you forgot to buy the turkey? Yeah, but there's still plenty of time Well, don't wait till the last minute You ought to go and get one right now well, Will you go with me, Mary? Sure, let's go I'll stay here Good, good <laughs> Gee, Mary, we're having Sure having a break in the weather lately It's such a lovely day, you know Yes, we usually do have good weather around Thanksgiving Yeah Gee, these supermarkets are so big, I always get lost in them. Jack, there's the poultry department over there. Oh, yes. Come on, Mary, let's walk over to the counter. Um, uh, say, Jack, while you're getting the turkey, I better shop around and get some things for the stuffing. I think I have everything at home, Mary. Uh, what about cracker crumbs? Plenty. Stale bread? Two loaves. Oysters? One can. Sage? Thirty-nine. What? <laughs> oh, oh, I thought... <laughs> I thought you said age. I mean, I thought... <laughs> yes, we have everything. Uh, I'd like to get a live turkey, about 25 pounds. Live turkeys are over there, down by the end of the counter. Oh, yes, yes. I think I'll take that one on the right. It looks nice and plump. Put on your glasses. That's my wife. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Sorry. Say, Jack, this one's nice and plump. Oh, I've seen turkeys look plump, but they, they were all feathers. I'm going to feel this one myself. Hold still, turkey. <laughs> you and your cold hands. Well, all right, we'll take this turkey. Come on, turkey. Come on, I'll take you home. Come on, Mary. Jack, look out. The turkey's getting away. Quick, Mary, try to grab him. He's running out in the street. Car almost ran over the turkey and killed him. I'm sure glad it didn't. Mel Blank is too important to this program. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Mary, let's go home. 
Well, Rochester, the gang will be over this evening for Thanksgiving dinner. Is everything ready? Yes, sir. Then put the turkey in the oven. But, boss... Do as I say. Put the turkey in the oven. But, boss... Rochester, I'm telling you to put the turkey in the oven. Now, wait a minute. This has gone far enough. After all, I'm a human being. <laughs> oh, Mel, you spoiled the whole illusion. Good night, folks. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Lewis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does his television show with his special guests, Irene Dunn, Vincent Price, and Gregory Ratoff. But first, let's go out to Jack's house in Beverly Hills. Our little star has decided to spend a couple of weeks in Palm Springs. So just as soon as he finishes breakfast, he's going to start packing. Ah, that was a good breakfast. How about a little more coffee, Rochester? No, thanks. I had enough. <laughs> I met me. Oh, oh! Yes, oh, oh. Here you are. On second thought, Rochester, I don't think I want any more. Let's go in the other room and get started. Well, boss, I better get out the bag and... Come on, Rochester. We better go in my room and, and start packing. Huh? Yes, sir. Now, Rochester, take my blue suit, my gray suit, and my tweed out of the closet. Huh? But, boss, a tweed suit is much too heavy for Well, okay, never mind the tweed. Uh, by the way, boss, are you going to stay at the same place you did last time? Certainly. Then I better keep these things together. Bathrobe, slippers, and flashlight. <laughs> Rochester, it's inside now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Once you stay at the place where we had to pack a bicycle. <laughs> Rochester, for your information, they don't have any more places like that. Well, Rochester, I guess we got everything I'll need. Huh? I'll get the phone. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Mary. Oh, what is it, Mary? Uh, Jack, on your way over to pick me up, would you stop off at the store and get me a bottle of suntan oil? What do you mean, stop off at the store? I'm bringing enough suntan oil for everybody. I know, but you don't give green stamps. <laughs> I wasn't going to charge you for the oil I was going to give it to you When I bought it, the company guaranteed its quality I know, Jack, but after it's been in your crankcase for 10,000 miles It loses something <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was just trying to do you a favor Anyway, I'll pick you up in a little while Goodbye Bye Oh, boss, I've got everything ready Shall I close it up? No, no, I want to check it first See if I didn't forget anything Come in Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Dennis, it's about time you got here. Well, Dennis, are you all set for Palm Springs? Well, I came over to tell you I can't leave today. I have to go have a tooth pulled. A tooth pulled? Oh, that's a shame. Does it have a cavity? No. <laughs> well, does it ache? No. Let me see. Which tooth is it? The one on my watch chain. I got thrown out of the Elks. <laughs> Dennis, stop being silly, and I want you to leave for Palm Springs today, so go home and pack. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, is it all right if I take my mother to Palm Springs with me? Well... She's already bought a French bathing suit. Your mother? Well, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, it isn't. This morning she tried it on, and my father said she really looked French. Really? Yeah. Mr. Benny, who's General de Gaulle? <laughs> Dennis, go home and pack. Don't you want to hear my song first? Yes, yes, let's hear the song. Very good, Dennis. You know, they'll love it in Palm Springs. Thank you. Now, Dennis, when you go there, be sure to stay on Highway 99 so you won't get lost, is it? Oh, I'm not driving down. Oh. You're taking the bus? No. <laughs> the train? No. Are you flying? No. Well, <laughs> goodbye, Dennis. Goodbye. <laughs> I guess it's better not to know how he's getting there than to ask him and spoil my whole vacation. <laughs> now, let's see. Well, boss, I've got all the luggage in the car. Good, come on, let's go. Are you sure all the lights are off and the doors are locked, Rochester? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, start the car. Okay. Hmm, 
maybe... Maybe, maybe we got a little water in the gasoline. I'd sell if we had a little gasoline in the water. <laughs> Never mind, try the motor again, will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> See, the motor sounds as though it's going from bad to worse. Sounds like it's going from here to eternity. <laughs> Rochester, don't be funny. Try it once more. Okay. Motor's not even catching. Maybe the battery's dead. Can't be that, Mr. Benny. I put a new battery in yesterday. A new battery? How much did it cost? Nothing. I got it out of your flashlight. <laughs> well, try it once more. Will you? <laughs> there you are, Rochester. The motor's going. Back the car out of the garage. Wait till that crowd gets out of the way. <laughs> All right, folks, break it up, break it up. <laughs> beat it, beat it. Why do they always gather when we try to start the car? You can go, Rochester, they've gone now. <laughs> Rochester, there's Miss Livingston's house. Put on the brakes. <laughs> That's good, Rochester. You stopped right in front of the house. Yeah, and only took us once around the block to do it. <laughs> I know. Now, keep the motor running. I'll go get Miss Livingston. Hello, Jack. I'm all ready. Good, Mary. I'll help you with your bags. Thank you. Here they are. Say, Mary, what beautiful luggage. Where'd you get it? I bought it. Last week, I got $200 on a quiz program. No kidding. On a quiz program? Uh-huh. I was picked out of the whole studio audience because I worked for you. Aha. Uh -huh. You see, Mary? Doesn't hurt being on my program. What question did you have to answer for them to give you $200? No question. They just felt sorry for me. <laughs> The Heartline call with food for a month. Oh, don't be so funny. Now, come on, Mary, let's go. Okay. Let me lock the door, will you? Rochester, put Miss Livingston's bags in the car, will you? Yes, sir. Now, let's see. Where can I put them? Jack, you're only going to be away for two weeks. Why have you got all that luggage piled on top of the car? That isn't luggage, Mary. And what is it? A tent will have to camp twice between here and Palm Springs. <laughs> oh, stop, Rochester. That's not why we're carrying it. Then why are you carrying it? The tent? Never mind. Now, Rochester, are we ready to go? Yes, sir. I put Miss Livingston's luggage in the trunk. <laughs> now, let's relax and have a pleasant drive. Rochester, turn on the radio, will you please? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Remember, folks, there are only 14 more shopping days till Christmas. And as our holiday special, we are currently featuring a platinum necklace with a four-carat diamond pendant for only $9,500. This can be purchased on our easy layaway plan of only $1 down and $1 a week until they lay you away. <laughs> Say, we're making pretty good time today. You're right, Miss Livingston. We just passed through Pasadena. <laughs> Gosh, I wonder why the traffic is so thick. It's people still coming home from last year's Rose Bowl game. <laughs> last year's Rose Bowl game. Mary, stop making up such ridiculous things. On Wisconsin, on I thought you were making it up. <laughs> you know, Mary, sometimes I think... Excuse that... me, Mr. Benny. What is it, Rochester? We're getting kind of low on gas. We are? We're well, pulling that gas station on the corner there. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Can I help you? <laughs> yes, uh, we'd like some gas. Uh, yes, sir. Would you like regular or rental? Hmm, let me see. I wonder what would be best for this car. 
blood. <laughs> Mary, please. I'll take the regular. Fill it up. Well, no, no, no. Put in about three gallons. For heaven's sake, Jack, why don't you fill it up? Mary, three is enough. But you'll have to stop at another gas station for more. Now, why don't you fill it up? Well, all right. Fill it up, mister. Oh, boy, wait till I tell the boys at the lodge about this. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Rochester. Go ahead and fill the tank, mister. Yes, sir. Jack, what do you plan on doing in Palm Springs? Well, I think I'll just rest, relax, and one, have a good time. <laughs> I'm going to take a dip in the two swimming pool every morning and then play a round of three golf after that. That way I'll get plenty of four sun. And in the afternoons, I'll just relax and five rest till dinner time. There's so many good places to six eat in Palm Springs, like the Dunes Dollhouse and down the beach, seven comers and lots of others. Some nights I may go on eight and... For heaven's sake, that's enough gas! Stop already! <laughs> Gee whiz. Okay, mister, now I'll check your oil and tires. Good. <laughs> hey, mister, do you know you got a big hole in your right rear tire? I know, I know. Well, how come it doesn't go flat? Because the tire was filled up in Los Angeles. Well, what's that got to do with it? The smog is too thick to leak out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mister, I can sell you a new set of tires. Very reasonable. Not right now. You see, they're making so many improvements in tires these days. I'll wait a little while longer. Well, I've got the latest thing right here. Tubeless tires. We're way ahead of that. We got tireless tubes. <laughs> Never mind, Rochester. Just check the oil, mister. Yes, sir. Well, the oil is okay, but I noticed the pulley on your generator is cracked. Now, you better get a new one or you'll have lots of trouble. Well, okay, put one in. Oh, I'm sorry, but we don't have any parts for this car. Oh. Well, is there a Maxwell dealer in this town? <laughs> yeah. Where? In the cemetery. <laughs> It'll be all right. Now, how much do I owe? What's that? I owe silver! <laughs> hey, that's how Dennis is going to Palm Street. <laughs> well, what do you know? Say, mister, how much do I owe you? Uh, that's $2.50. Okay, I'll... Hey, uh... wait a minute, mister. Huh? I just recognized you. Ain't you Jack Bunny? Yes, yes, I am. Gee, Mr. Benny, what a pleasure meeting you. How I love you in the movies. You do? Yeah, I think you was wonderful in To Be or Not To Be, Charlie's Aunt, George Washington Slept Here, and Quo Vadis. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, now, you say the gas was two and a half dollars? Uh-huh. So oh, excuse you're... me, Mr. Benny, here comes another customer. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Fill it up. Well, Bob! Why, Jack, hi. Hello, Mary. Hi, Rod. Hello, Bob. Hello, Mr. Crosby. Excuse me, mister. You want regular or Ethel? Ethel, please. <laughs> Gosh, Bob, isn't it a coincidence? We're all on our way to Palm One Springs, <laughs> and we need at the same gas to stay... Jack! Stop counting. It's Bob's car. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Gee, Bob, it's a shame that you have to make the drive all alone. I'm not alone. Huh? Oh, look in the back, don't you see? Remley, Kimmick, and Bagby, they're laying there. <laughs> oh. See, this car's that new Hudson, the kind you fall down into. <laughs> I know, I know. Huh? Bob, you only mentioned Remley, Kimmick, and Bagby. Isn't Sammy the drummer coming to Palm Springs? Well, Sammy's coming, sure, but not until just before we do our broadcast there. See, he hates the sun. Why? Well, you know how bald Sammy is, and he doesn't like his scalp to get sunburned. Well, uh, can he wear a hat? Oh, no. If he covered his head, he'd lose a $50 a week. A distillery pays him. A distillery? A distillery pays him $50 a week not to cover his head? Yeah. They've got Don't Be Vague, Say Hag and Hag painted up there. <laughs> Well, they couldn't have picked a better head than Sammy's. 
It's shaped like a pinch bottle. <laughs> Bob, you know, this is none of my business, really, but if the boys in the band are such a bunch of hoodlums, why don't you get rid of them? It's funny, Mary. I asked Bob the same thing last week, and he told me that their private lives are their own business. That's right, Mary, and these boys have a lot of experience. Yeah. Bob told me that his boys spent two years with Wayne King. No, no, Jack, not Wayne King, Waste King. They used to install them. <laughs> By the way, Bob, how come your wife isn't coming to the Springs with you? Oh, she'll be up for the weekend, Mary. She's bringing the kids. All five of them? Yeah, all five, and the maid and the cook, too. But won't it be hard finding hotel reservations for that many people? Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Jack's renting me a tent. <laughs> all right, Mary, now you know. Are you happy? <laughs> come on, Rochester, let's go. Yes, sir. See you in Palm Springs, Bob. Bye, bye, Mary. Bye, bye Bob. Bob. Bye. Rochester, make this right turn here. But, Mr. Bentley, we should go straight ahead. Rochester's right, Jack. This isn't the way to Palm Springs. Look, Mary, I know a shortcut. Rochester, turn here. Yes, sir. Jack, are you sure this shortcut takes us to Palm Springs? Of course I'm sure. But, Mr. Bentley, we've been driving three hours since we left the gas station. And it's getting dark We should have been in Palm Springs long ago Mary, I know what I'm doing I've taken this road many times And see, see, we're in the desert See the sand? Yeah, and I see the sign, too Laguna Beach <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake Rochester, you must have made a wrong turn <laughs> Good night, folks See you in 30 seconds From Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wood. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to yesterday morning and visit the employment office of one of Palm Springs' leading department stores. Uh, now, looking at your record, Mr. Blank, I see that you've worked in our Los Angeles store for seven years. Uh, that's right, sir. And just why did you want to transfer from our Los Angeles store to our Palm Springs store? For my health, sir. Oh, I see. Uh, your doctor thought the sunshine and fresh air would be good for you? Not my doctor, my psychiatrist. <laughs> well, uh, tell me, Mr. Blank, just what was it that caused you to go to the psychiatrist? A customer that kept coming into the store every year, just before Christmas. Uh, a customer? Yeah. He first came into the store in 1946. He was a kindly-looking, blue-eyed old gentleman. He bought a Christmas present And then six times during the day he came back Tested me and exchanged it for a different model Well, what was the gift he kept exchanging? Shoelaces <laughs> He bought shoelaces for a Christmas present? Yeah, for someone named Don well, Now, how could he possibly exchange shoelaces six times? Well, first he bought the laces with metal tips then he came back because he thought plastic tips looked more modern. Soon he was back again. He was afraid the plastic tips might crack. So we went back to metal tips. Then he got to thinking the metal tips might rust. So he came back to change them to plastic tips. Six times he changed his mind. Plastic tips, metal tips, plastic tips, metal tips, plastic tips, metal tips. <laughs> Sir, control yourself. Stop screaming. People will think that you just saw the Palm Springs prices. Why, well, I'm sorry, sir But then, every year since then This man has been back buying gifts for Don and exchanging them One year it was a wallet Once it was cufflinks Well, what did he buy this Don last Christmas? A gopher trap <laughs> A gopher trap? Uh, well, tell me, Mr. Blank Do you feel that you're well enough now to go back to work? Oh, yes, yes The, the psychiatrist gave me some pills Which I always carry with me I, I take one whenever I start to get excited Well, that's good Now, I'm going to assign you to the date department The date department? Yes There you'll meet mostly tourists from the east Who wish to send some of these delicious dates back home 
Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, you better get to work, Mr. Blank. The store has been open for half an hour already. Yes, sir. You know, Jack, I must admit this is a good idea of yours, doing your Christmas shopping here in Palm Springs. Well, sure, Mary. After all, this is a branch of the Los Angeles store, and they have everything here. Now, let's see my shopping list. You have to get a load of gifts. Now, what'll I get for my secretary, Jeanette? Oh, you ought to get her something nice. You like her, don't you? Uh-huh. She's very pretty, and she's got a wonderful figure. I'm lucky to have a secretary like her. Well, why don't you get her a game of Scrabble? No, no, she can't spell. <laughs> she can't take shorthand, either. I may have to let her go if she doesn't learn how to type soon. <laughs> She's a wonderful secretary. Now, let's see. Uh, Jack, uh, have you thought about your sister Florence? Yes, quite often. Now, let's see. <laughs> I mean, how about getting her a gift? Oh, I'll get her something. Now, let's see. Gee, I don't know what to get my sponsor. Oh, how about a nice fountain pen? Hey, that's a good idea, Mary. I'll meet you back here later. Okay. I wonder what department I can get fountain pens. Where's the floor walker? I'll ask him. Oh, mister? Mister? Yeah? <laughs> mm, look, I want to buy some gifts. Gifts, huh? You're probably buying them for business associates and relatives. That's right. How did you know? I didn't think you had any friends. <laughs> Look, that's none of your business. Now, I want to buy a fountain pen. Does this store have any? Yes, we have ballpoints, regulars, and the new Palm Springs pen. A Palm Springs pen? Yes, you fill it with suntan oil and write love letters in the sand. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll find a place myself. Silly floor walker. I think I can get the pens on the next floor, then. Well, I got the fountain pen for my sponsor. Now I got to get something for Hickey Marks, my producer, and Bert Scott. And... Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, there you are, Mary. Well, what took you so long? Did you get the present for your sponsor? Uh-huh, and I was just wondering what to get the two CBS telephone operators, Mabel Flapsaddle and Gertrude Gearshift. <laughs> Mary, what would you suggest for them? Well, I don't know, Jack. Uh, how much do you want to spend? I know, about $5 a piece. Well, why don't you get them each a hundred Gillette Blue Blades? <laughs> no, Mary, I, I gave them that last year. <laughs> well, I'll think of something. Now, let's see, who else? Is... Hiya, bud. <laughs> huh? Long time, no see. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> Jack, wasn't that the... Yes, Mary, he's that racetrack tout, you know. Probably resting up here till Santa Anita opens. Come on, let's get away from him. Well, that takes care of practically everybody on my list except Don Wilson. He's always such a problem. You know? Wait a minute, Jack. Since we're all down here in Palm Springs, why don't you give him something in keeping with the resort? Like, uh, well, like a nice box of dates. <laughs> Mary, I think you've got it. You know, Don loves to eat. Come on, let's go to the date department. Uh, no, Jack, I've still got some of my own shopping to do. I'll meet you later at the sportswear department. Okay, I'll be there in about ten minutes. Now, let me see. Where's the date department? I better ask the floor walker. Oh, mister, mister. Oh, it's you again. <laughs> yes, look, can I get to the date department by going past the sporting goods section and taking the last aisle to the left? It just this once, but don't ever do it again. <laughs> Ah, here's where they sell the dates. Oh, clerk, clerk. Uh, yes, sir, what can I do? <laughs> uh, 
what's, what's the matter, clerk? Uh, nothing, nothing. He doesn't recognize me. I'll be calm. What can he do to me in the date department? Uh, yes, sir, what can I do for you? Well, are these dates fresh? Oh, yes, sir, they're grown right here in Palm Springs under the most ideal conditions. What do you mean, ideal conditions? Well, these dates are kissed all day by the hot desert sun till three o'clock when it goes behind the mountain and then they're in nature's deep freeze. <laughs> oh. Well, this box looks very nice. I'll take it, huh? But that's a dollar sixty-five. Fine. I'd like it gift wrapped. I know, I know. <laughs> Put this card in with it, will yeah, you? Okay. Excuse me while I wrap it at that count over there. Gee, that wasn't bad at all. I didn't even have to take a single pill. <laughs> there, now I'll cut the ribbon. Here you are, mister. All wrapped for Christmas. Red and green ribbon and everything. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I hope Don likes these dates. Oh, I'm sure he will. Most everybody likes these plain dates better than the ones stuffed with nuts. <laughs> yes. You... You have dates stuffed with nuts? I have to tell him yet. Why didn't that psychiatrist teach me to keep my mouth shut? Look, let me see a box of the ones stuffed with nuts. Oh, mister, you wouldn't like them. He, he wouldn't like them. Nobody would like them. Believe me. Believe me. Oh, here they are, right here. Say, they do look delicious. But, mister... After all, Christmas only comes once a year. I may as well give down the best. I want this box with the stuffed dates. My pills. My pills. Where are my pills? Oh, here they are. <laughs> Clark, those pills aren't going to do you any good. Why not? You're supposed to take them out of the bottle before swallowing. <laughs> Maybe I'll be lucky. Maybe the glass will kill me. <laughs> yeah, here's your card from the, from the plain dates. You keep it. Put it in the stuffed date box. Okay. Excuse me while I wrap it. Oh, clerk, clerk, hold it a minute. Now what? Uh... I just thought of something. That card is a printed one. It's too formal. I'm going to write something more personal. Okay, I fooled you this time. I didn't put the card in the package. What? Nothing, nothing. You write the card, I'll wrap the package. Okay. <laughs> well, let me see. Oh, yes, I'll write him a little poem. To Don, this Christmas I'm giving you something to chew, these delicious dates and nuts to you. <laughs> mm, that doesn't sound right. Okay, mister, here's your package. Thanks. That'll be $2.15. I thought it was $1.65. That was for the plane dates. Well, there aren't any more dates in this box, are there? No, but these are stuffed. Well, look, mister, I'm not going to pay 50 cents extra for a few nuts. But look, it's not the money. It's just that I don't want to be a sucker about these things. I want the plain one. <laughs> and you want them gift wrapped? Uh-huh. <laughs> Good, I'll be back and pick them up later. I got to meet someone in the sportswear department. Yeah, I don't want to keep Mary waiting, but I can't find the sports. Why, hello, Jack. Oh, hi, Bob. You doing your Christmas shopping, too, huh? Yeah, me and my piano player, Charlie Bagby, have been here all morning. Oh, Bagby's here, huh? He's not in Los Angeles? No, I brought him with me to Palm Springs. I felt that the change of gutters would do him some good. <laughs> I hope so. Where's Charlie now? Well, he sneaked away from me. I, I think he didn't want me to see what he's getting me for Christmas. And it's just as well because I wanted to do some shopping for the boys in the band. Oh, you're buying Charlie's gift now? No, I've got his already. But I am kind of stuck on what to get for Frank Remley. Well, look, Bob, that should be no problem. Why don't you get Frankie a cordial? You know, like a, like a bottle of Drambuie. Well, Jack, that's a nice gift, but not for Remley. You see, Drambuie, that's an after-dinner drink. So what? Well, Remley never quite lasts till after dinner. <laughs> I see what you mean. Say, I meant to ask you about, what are you getting your brother Bing for Christmas? Well, he just bought a boat, so I'm going to give him an Admiral refrigerator. Well, now, isn't that clever? 
So Bing bought a boat, huh? Yes, the lure lane. <laughs> oh. Are you shopping for the rest of your family here too, Bob? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Uh, right now, I'm on my way to the toy department to get something for my children. Hey, do you mind if I join you? I always get a kick out of the new toys they have for kids. Oh, no, come on, Jack. Here it is. It's right across the aisle. Hey, Jack. Jack, look at that set of electric trains. Isn't that terrific? Hey, that one there looks just like the Super Chief. Yeah, what a toy. And I got to run along. I'm supposed to meet Mary at the sportswear counter. Bob, do you know where it is? No, I'm sorry. I don't, Jack. Well, I'll find it myself. So long, fellas. Oh, I can't find that sportswear department. I better ask the floor walker. Oh, mister, can you tell me where I can find... Well, if it isn't little boy lost again. <laughs> Never mind, I'll find the department myself. Oh, Jack, Jack. Right here, Mary. Did you get the dates for Don? Yes, Mary, I got them. I'll have to pick it up soon. It's being gift wrapped. A nice box of plain dates. Plain dates? Mm hmm. Oh, Jack, why didn't you get the one stuffed with nuts? Don loves nuts. He does? Certainly. At his house, haven't you ever noticed what's in that big bowl on the coffee table? Yes, hams and turkeys. <laughs> Underneath, there's nuts. <laughs> okay. I'll go do it right now. Come on, we'll go together. Oh, no, Jack. I've still got some more gifts to buy. You can meet me at the sportswear counter. Okay. <laughs> oh, clerk. Clerk. Huh? Oh, 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 here's your package, mister. All, all gift wrapped and everything. One, one box of plain dates, $1.65. Well, I'm sorry. See, I don't want those. I want the ones with the nuts in them. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Mister, let me alone. I'm all out of pills. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And I want a box of stuffed dates gift wrapped immediately. Okay, okay, I'll do it. How can I avoid this guy? I tried everything. Uh, even getting myself transferred. I wonder if this store has a branch behind the Iron Curtain. <laughs> Look, look, I've got some other shopping to do. Now, you wrap those dates with nuts, and I'll be back later. I'm sure you will. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yes, I remember where Mary said she'd meet me. Gee, she's not here. Guys, I still haven't gotten anything for my sister Florence. See, that's the lingerie department. Maybe I can find something there. Let's see, maybe she'd like this beautiful pair of silk pajamas. Yeah, that's what I'll get. Pajamas. Hey, Bud. <laughs> Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm buying a gift for my sister. What are you going to get? Pajamas. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Get her a nightgown. A nightgown? Why? Nightgown is a sleeper. <laughs> well, well, so are pajamas. I know, but with pajamas, when they're off, the legs will fold. <laughs> Gee, I, I never thought of that. And when you make your selections, you got to consider the string. The pajama string? Yeah. It's all right while it's going around the back stretch, but when it comes out in front, it ties up in a knot. <laughs> Gee, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. Nightgown is a great show bet. I see what you mean. Well, so long. So long, bud. <laughs> I wasted so much time, I'll have to buy Florence's present later. I better get over to the sporting goods department. Mary is probably waiting for me. 
Now, uh, tell me, miss, this fellow you're buying the present for, is he your uh, boyfriend? No, in fact, he's my boss. Oh, then you want to get him something nice. After all, he's responsible for your bread and butter. Only bread. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, tell me, miss, what kind of a man is your boss? Oh, nothing unusual about him. He's average height, average weight. How old is he? Well, he says he's around 39. Around 39, eh? Yeah, but I think it's the second time around. <laughs> Uh, maybe I... Mary! Mary! Oh, well, I'll be back later, mister. Here he comes now. That man coming down the aisle? Yes. I think it's his third time around. <laughs> oh, Mary, Mary, I've been looking all over oh, for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Anyway, I'm all done with my shopping, and I can help you with yours. Good, because I still have to get gifts for Dennis Day and Rochester and Bob Crosby... Then I'll be all... Well, Jack, Mary! Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Don. Doing, hi, hi. Doing your Christmas shopping, Don, huh? Yeah, just about finished, though. So are we. Say, Don, let me look at you. Gee, you look marvelous. What a wonderful tan. Yes, Don, you're really brown. How long you been in Palm Springs? Three days. Gee, how'd you get such a wonderful tan in three days? I haven't been able to find a room. <laughs> Don, besides being so tan, I've never seen you look so good. You've lost some weight, haven't you? Well, yes, quite a bit, Mary. The, uh, the doctor put me on a diet. <laughs> oh, you poor guy. You must be starving yourself. Huh? Oh, no, no, Jack. It's not a hard diet at all. I eat practically everything. I just have to cut out a few things like sugar, cream, butter, nuts, and pastry. Not too bad. Oh, no, no. Feel fine. Feel fine. Well, I got to hurry and finish my shopping. So do we. So long, Mary. Goodbye, Jack. Come on, Jack. Let's go over to the counter where... Jack. Jack. What are you thinking about? Mary, didn't you hear what Don said about his diet? Yeah, so what? So what? I got him the dates with nuts. It's not only fattening, it's more expensive. <laughs> Mary, wait for me here. I'm going back and exchange them. To get the playing time. Huh? <laughs> well, here's the date counter. Oh, clerk, clerk. Oh, uh, here you are, sir. All wrapped and ready to go. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry I put you to all this trouble. It's... That's all right, Mister. Here's your package. But um, look at, I want the plain ones now. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I'll never make it. I'll never get the ten. Look, mister, control yourself. Control myself? This is the fourth time you've changed these dates. <laughs> Don't be so fresh. Just exchange the date. Not this time. Oh, no, not this time. I outsmarted you. I went to the sporting goods department and got this loaded gun. Mister, put that gun away. Cap, don't point it at your head. Suicide is a terrible thing. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> now look what you've done. You made me so nervous I missed. <laughs> Control yourself. I won't control myself. First you wanted the plain dates, then the ones with the nuts, then the ones with plastic tips. Look, then you wanted the date stuff with metal tips. Then you wanted the trap to catch it to go for the line. Mister. Then you wanted to go for the dates, the dates with nuts. Then you wanted the nuts that ain't plain gophers. Look, then you wanted I the didn't want gophers. Then, no. then you wanted the shoelaces that have dates with gophers. Mister, I didn't want gophers. Gopher traps. Look, mister, I don't. I can't stand it any longer. I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Everybody, we're a little late. From Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Donald. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as always at the height of the tourist season here, Palm Springs is just full of celebrities. But now I give you the celebrity the whole town is talking about because he's the only one paying summer rates. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't care if the whole town is talking about me because in Palm Springs, talk is the only thing that's cheap. <laughs> Believe me. Huh? Yeah, I know what you mean, Jack, but I've worked out a pretty good deal where I'm staying. Where, at the Biltmore? Yeah, I get 50% off of my bill, and in return, I put in three hours a day as a lifeguard. And yesterday, I... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. You did say lifeguard. Yeah, yeah Why? Well, it's just that I picture you more as a life raft. You know? <laughs> With a pontoon and back there. Well, you can joke all you want, but yesterday a man called for help and I dived into the pool and saved him. Really, Don? Yes, sir. And you should have heard the way they bawled me out. Bawled you out? You saved a man's life, didn't you? Yeah, but when I jumped in the pool, three people sitting on the lawn almost drowned. <laughs> And I've been telling everyone it rained yesterday. <laughs> but Don... Oh, Jack, Jack. Yes, Bob? Say, uh... Bob Crosby, ladies and gentlemen. What, uh, what is it, Bob? Well, before we go any farther with the show, I'd like to take a roll call of the orchestra. <laughs> a roll call? Of the orchestra? That's We've never right. done that before. Well, believe me, Jack, I know what I'm doing. Well, all right. If you have to, go ahead, Bob. Okay. George. Here. Kerchief. Here. Songer. Here. Remley. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob, I want to ask you. Bob, why... Why do you have to go through this roll call? Oh, I always do when we're out of town. But why? Why? Oh, I have to. I'm responsible to their Los Angeles parole board. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, don't let me stand in the way of the law. Hardy? Here. Tackerberry? Wait a minute. Tackerberry's one of my writers. He's on parole, too. <laughs> right. He, he keeps talking about the pen. I thought he meant paper mate. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure glad that all the boys are now, if we can... Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, hello, Jack. I'm sorry I'm late, Jack, but I was taking a golf lesson at Tamarisk, and I just didn't notice the time. That's all right, Mary. So Ellsworth Vines gave you another lesson, eh? No, I switched to one of the other fellas. What was wrong? I find out he's married. <laughs> well, look, Mary, you don't have to make any dates here in Palm Springs. If you want to go out with someone, I'm here. Oh, no, Jack, not with you. What? Your idea of an exciting time here is to walk down Palm Canyon Drive and watch people put nickels in the parking meters. <laughs> yeah. Saturday was a dilly. <laughs> $163.45. Let's get out of the show because tonight we're... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Here comes Dennis. Well, what about it? You know, Mary, every time that kid opens his mouth, he says something silly and I'm aggravated for the rest of the week. But this time, he's not getting away with it. I'm ready for him. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Boy, two weeks in Palm Springs has sure made you look different. You see, Mary, he's starting already. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been able to see more of you up here, but I've been very busy. Busy, huh? What have you been doing? Oh, swimming a little every day, getting lots of sleep, eating good food, and catching up on my reading. Your reading, huh? Yeah, it's nice and quiet up here, and I can concentrate. Hamlet requires a lot of attention. Hamlet, huh? I consider Hamlet. it to be Shakespeare's finest work. Although I'd be the first to admit there are great qualities in Macbeth, Julius Caesar, and Othello. But to my way of thinking, Hamlet offers more scope and penetrates with a deeper insight into human nature. That's enough, Dennis. I won't listen to that kind of talk. 
But Jack! I don't care. I'm on a vacation. I'm not going to let him aggravate me. But Jack, he hasn't said anything silly. I know, and he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> Dennis, you're deliberately trying to annoy me. Oh, no, I'm not, Mr. Benny. Then how come you're talking intelligently? I can't help it. I was out in the sun too long. <laughs> huh? But I discovered a way to keep cool. You did? Yeah, I get a big punch bowl, fill it full of shaved ice, put in three lemons, two oranges, some ginger ale, a quarter scotch, a bottle of Smirnoff vodka, and five maraschino cherries. Dennis, you drink that? No, I sit in it. <laughs> Boy. And Dennis, now that you're back to normal again, do me a favor. Just go over in the corner and don't bother me. Okay. Do you mind if I read Hamlet? Read, read. What a crazy kid. <laughs> well, Jack, you won't have to put up with him much longer. Tomorrow we'll all be on our way back to Los Angeles. I know, and I've got a big surprise for everyone. Since you're all leaving tomorrow and I'm going to be staying down here till after Christmas... I want you all to come to my place tonight for our annual Christmas party. Oh, that's wonderful, Jack. Everybody's invited. And, Bob, make sure to bring the orchestra boys. The orchestra boys? Yeah. But tell them when we serve dinner to just casually walk into the dining room. Not to line up and march. <laughs> okay, Jack, I I'll tell them. But, gee, you better serve them the food right away or they'll start banging their cups on the table. <laughs> I'll serve them, I'll serve them. And listen, kids, I got a nice big house that I rented. There's plenty of room. We'll have a tree, exchange gifts, and have a lot of fun. Gee, I'm glad that drugstore was open so I could finish my Christmas shopping. See, I get Christmas presents from everywhere. CBS, Lucky Strike, even my hometown, Waukegan. I wonder what Waukegan will do for me this Christmas. Last year, they did a wonderful thing. They destroyed my birth certificate. <laughs> Now, no one will ever know. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Santa needs a nickel here if he wants to park his sleigh. <laughs> yum, bum, bum, da dum, dum, dum. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. La, 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 da dum, bum, bum. It'll be fun being in Palm Springs for Christmas. <laughs> Rochester, hand me some more tinsel for the tree, will you? Here you are, Mr. Benning. Yeah, I'm sure glad I decided to rent this house for Mr. and Mrs. Martin. It'll be just perfect for the party tonight. Yeah. Well, all the tinsel is on. I think I'll put on the ornaments. I'll put this nice red one up. Ouch! See, I'll put the blue one over here and then... Ouch! And I'll put the green one up on top. There. Ouch! Oh, darn it. Boss, I told you to get a Christmas tree instead of this cactus plant. <laughs> Rochester, I'm not going out and buy a Christmas tree when I have a perfectly good one at home. I want to put these gifts under it. Let's see, here's Don's, some nice dates. And this one's for Mary. Oh, and Rochester, here's the one I'm giving Remley. Boy, will he be surprised. How will he be surprised? You got shaving lotion written all over the package. Well, you have to do that with Remley. When he opens a box and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> Year. Last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle. The mask stuck out of his mouth for three months. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, Rock, that must be the gang. You let him in, and I'll, I'll go out in the kitchen and get the hors d'oeuvres. Okay. Well, hello, hello Rock. Rock. Come in. Come in. Come in, everybody. Mr. Benny's in the kitchen. He'll be right out. Make yourselves at home. Hey, Jack's got a nice place here. Ah, yeah, but it's so cluttered up. Rochester, help me clean it up. I'll throw some of this stuff out. Not that, not that. That's the Christmas tree. Christmas tree? Hey, that's nothing but an old cactus plant. 
Oh, we would have had a tumbleweed, but the wind was blowing and we lost it coming through Indio. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at that television set. It's got a coin box attached to it with a slot to put money in. Well, that's pay-as-you-see television. And Palm Springs is the only place where they're conducting this experiment. Jack has the same attachment on his set in Beverly Hills, and it's no experiment. <laughs> Well, kids, I'm glad you're all here. We'll have a nice... Oh, there's the phone. I'll get it, boss. Thanks, Rochester. Say, Jack, this is a very nice place. I had no idea it was so large. Oh, yes, there's a kitchen, dinette, living room, two bedrooms, and a patio. You know, Mary, when you're a big star, you gotta have plenty of room to entertain. Yeah. I just can't understand how you got all this for $85 a month. What's the difference? I got it. Now, come on, everybody. Let's put all the presents under the tree and... Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I had 12 candy canes, and now there are only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you, but if your conscience bothers you, they're 10 cents each. <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. Say, boss. Yeah, Rochester. Who was that on the phone? That was Mr. Coleman calling from Beverly Hills. Oh, Ronald Coleman? Yes, sir. He wanted to know if you'd be back in town for Christmas, and I told him that you couldn't possibly make it. You were staying in Palm Springs. Gee, that was nice of Ronnie to call. Is he planning a Christmas party? Now, yes. <laughs> huh? He said he'd check with me later about New Year's. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, gang, why don't we open up our Christmas presents? No, no, it's too early. Everyone can take their gifts, but let's not open them until Christmas. Gee, I'm embarrassed, Mr. Benny. I got you a gift, but I left it at my hotel room. Oh, that's all right, Dennis. You didn't have to bother getting me anything anyway. Well, truthfully, I didn't know what to get you. You have practically everything, but I went all over Palm Springs and I finally found something. Really? What'd you get me, Dennis? A Gila monster. <laughs> a Gila monster? Yeah, the man only charged me $3 for it. Dennis, a Gila monster is a deadly, poisonous, and vicious reptile. Why, it could snap a man's arm off. No wonder it took him so long to wrap the package. <laughs> Dennis, if that poisonous thing is in your room, you better call your hotel right now and warn them. Yeah, I guess I better. Hey, come on, kids. Let's have some fun. Let's get this party rolling. Yeah, huh? let's play some games. Okay, but first I want to show you something, Mary. Me? Yeah, come on out in the hall for a second. All right. Well, here we are. Look up, Mary. Why, Jack, it's mistletoe. That's right. And that means that I, I get to kiss you. Oh, Jack. Now, come on, Mary. Give me a kiss. Now, pucker up. All right. There. I knew it. You ate the candy cane. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> All right. Here's your ten cents. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you were getting romantic. Romantic? Smantic. A crime must be solved. <laughs> Come back. Let, let's get back to the party. <laughs> Mary, what was going on out there in the hall? Ask Boston Blackie. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, Dennis. Dennis, did you call your hotel about that Gila monster? Yeah. What did they say? Nothing. The phone keeps ringing and ringing, but nobody answers. <laughs> what? Do you mind if I stay here tonight? <laughs> Now, come on, let's get things started here. Let's all sing jingle. Yeah, yeah, let's all sing, huh? What's that noise? Remley wants to go home. <laughs> Remley, put down that hacksaw and use the door. <laughs> what a gang. <laughs> now, come on, kid, let's sing jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hold it! Hey, quiet jingle now! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! <laughs> what's going on here? Hold it, kids. It's the owner. What's the matter, Mr. Martin? I'll tell you what's the matter. I'm not going to stand for noisy parties like this going on in my house. Now, wait a second, Mr. Martin. So what if we are making a little noise? You're forgetting I'm paying you $85 a month to rent this house. Who ever dreamed you'd be throwing wild parties? When you came to me, you looked like a nice, quiet old man. <laughs> but look, now I find out you're a Hollywood playboy. 
Look, Mr. Martin. And what are those convicts doing here? <laughs> those are my musicians. <laughs> Fellas, this is a party. Stop making those license plates. <laughs> For heaven's sake! They're not well, at I... home unless they're in jail. Huh? <laughs> I guess we were a little loud, Mr. Martin, but we didn't know you were here. We were only having a little Christmas party. Uh, a Christmas party? Yes, if you prefer, we can leave. Well... We didn't even get to sing the Christmas carols. Christmas carols? Yes, we, we always sing Christmas carols. Gee, I'd love to hear that. But why don't you and your wife join us? You really mean that, Mr. Bunny? Certainly, the more the merrier. Gee, thanks. I'll go get my wife and we'll join you in a party. Now, Dennis... Yeah, go get her. Dennis, every year at my Christmas party, you always sing a nice medley of Christmas carols. Yes, sir. Well, how about singing them first now? I'd be glad to. Quiet, everybody. Dennis... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my sponsor and my entire staff, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. The Jack Benny Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack's house in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is at the typewriter while our little star is dictating. Dear Claudette. Dear Claudette. It is with deep gratitude. It is with deep gratitude. That I express my... That I express my... Appreciation. Appreciation. Rochester, Rochester, wait a minute, hold it. Rochester. Let me see that. Oh, for heaven's sake. A P Q R V W Y O Q F J K Z T. Rochester, don't you know how to spell appreciation? Well, I was never sure whether it had one P or two P's. For heaven's sake, appreciation has two P's. But if you weren't sure, why did you put in all those crazy letters? Boss, if I spelled it with only one P, I'd look stupid. So? This way, they'll think there's something wrong with the typewriter. <laughs> what? When I had to spell Albuquerque, I threw in a few numbers. That I can believe. You must be murdering a Scrabble game. <laughs> now, let's get on with the thank you. Let me see, where was I? Uh, it is with deep gratitude that I express my appreciation to you... To you. ...for thinking of me during this Christmas season. For thinking of me during this Christmas season. Sincerely yours, Jack Benny. Sincerely yours, Jack Benny. Well, that's the last one, eh, Rochester? Yes, sir. We finally reached the bottom of the list. You know, every year it's the same thing. I, I have to write thank you notes to all my friends. Well, boss, when they buy their Christmas cards from you, that's the least you can do. <laughs> I guess so. Now, Rochester, get them in the mail as soon as you can and close a sample of my Easter selection. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Remember last year you sold cards commemorating August the 18th? Yeah. 200 people bought cards before they found out that August the 18th was just August the 18th. It's more than that. August the 18th happens to be Groundhog Day in Venezuela. <laughs> anyway, see that you get all those letters mailed, and uh, I'll get the door, Rochester. You straighten up the desk. Yes, sir. Gee, Christmas has come and gone, and five more days will be New Year's. Another year will have gone by, and everybody else will be a year older. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Well, Bob, come on in. Bob, I haven't seen you for a few days. Did you and your family have a nice Christmas? Oh, we certainly did, Jack. It was really wonderful. That's good. What'd you do? Well, on Christmas Eve, we all sat around the tree, and at the stroke of 12, Santa Claus came down the chimney. He gave the cutest little doll to Malia and roller skates to Robert and Stephen... 
Bicycle to Chris in a beautiful uh-huh. coat to June. And I got two tickets on the 50-yard line for the Rose Bowl game. Bob, you got two tickets for the Rose Bowl game from Santa Claus? For 40 bucks. He was doing a little scalping on the side. <laughs> Bob, something tells me you made up this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, say, boss, I got all the envelopes sealed and... Oh, hello, Mr. Crosby. Hello there, Rochester. Hey, by the way, what did Mr. Benny give you for Christmas? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> Last year for Christmas, Mr. Benny took a $10 bill and tore it in two. Then he gave me one half and he kept the other half. Well, what happened this Christmas? We exchanged gifts. <laughs> I just did that for a gag. But, Bob, getting back to what you said about spending Christmas with the wife and kids, that's really the way to do it. You know, I'll never forget one Christmas when I was a kid. The ground was covered with snow, and as I looked out the window in the distance, I could see someone dressed in red. Suddenly, there came a patter of hoofbeats and a knock on the door. Who was it, boy? It was Santa Claus. And, Rochester, you'll never guess what Santa Claus gave me. What? A violin. That sweet old man did that! (laughs) By the way, Bob, not that I'm looking for gratitude, but you didn't mention anything about the gift I sent you. Well, Jack, this is really embarrassing, but... Well, with all my kids around, when I opened my Christmas packages, there was so much confusion that I got... I got the cards all mixed up, and I don't know who gave me what. Oh. I received a ring with a blue sapphire and a, a diamond stick pin, a gold cigarette case, and platinum cufflinks and a handkerchief. Now, Jack, which one of those gifts came from you? <laughs> well... Was it the ring with a blue sapphire? No. Well, was it the diamond stick pin? Diamond stick pin? No, no, Bob. Well, I know it wasn't the gold cigarette case. Oh, yeah, if you're so smart... What makes you think I didn't give you the gold cigarette case? Because on the inside was engraved love to the father of my five children. (laughs) Now, Jack, there are only two things left. The platinum cufflinks and the uh, handkerchief. Now, which one did you give me? I'll get it. No, you don't. I'll get it. I'll get it. But, boss, boss, I'm your butler. I don't care. This is my house, and I can answer the door if I want to. Yeah, but, Jack, you still haven't told me which one... Excuse me, Bob. I have to answer the handkerchief. I mean the door. (laughs) When will people learn that at Christmas time it's not the gift, it's the thought? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Come on in. Hey, Bob, it's Dennis. Hi, kid. Gee, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. I know. I didn't come home when you fellas did. I spent Christmas at the Palm Springs Biltmore. Oh. Say, that's really a beautiful hotel. I understand the rooms are great, too. Yeah, and you should have seen the sunken bathtub. Sixty feet long and forty feet wide. (laughs) Dennis, that wasn't a bathtub. That was a swimming pool. It was? Certainly. Oh, so that's why everyone else was wearing a bathing suit. (laughs) Oh, fine. I had to go down 14 feet to get the soap. Look, Dennis. When I went down, the lifeguard jumped in and saved me. Dennis. I thought he was there to scrub my back. <laughs> now cut that off. <laughs> and Dennis, if you must come over here and open that silly mouth of yours, the least you can do is thank me for the Christmas present I sent you. Gee, Mr. Benny, this is embarrassing, but while I was opening all my Christmas packages, I got the cards mixed up. Gee, that isn't that a coincidence? You and Bob had the same accident. Well, mine wasn't an accident. What? I did it on purpose. I didn't want my mother to know you sent me a lousy handkerchief. (laughs) Mm. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Then you didn't give me the platinum cufflinks. You must have sent me the... Bob, how can you be so rude talking while Dennis is getting ready to sing a song? I am? Certainly. Go ahead. Yes, sir. What a fuss Bob makes about a press. Ah, that was very good, Dennis. Well, I gotta be running along, Mr. Benny. I have to deliver a Christmas package. A Christmas package? But, Dennis, it's after Christmas. I know. It's a locket for my girl, and I had to have her initials put on it. J.R. J.R.? Yeah. Jane Russell. <laughs> Jane Russell is your girlfriend? Dennis, for your information, Jane Russell is married to that famous football player, Bob Waterfield. I found that out. What? When I went over to see her, he drop kicked me 60 yards. <laughs> Well, I don't blame him. Were you hurt? I would have been if Crazy Legs Hirsch hadn't caught me. <laughs> Dennis, go home, will you? 
Look Magazine picked me for the All-American. All-American what? The censor took it out. <laughs> Dennis, please go home. Okay. What a silly kid. Say, Jack, it's getting kind of late, hadn't you and I better get down to TV City for your television show? Hey, we haven't too much time, have we? Oh, Rochester! Yes, Mr. Betty! Rochester, get the car out of the garage, will you please? It's right out on the street! What? You mean to say you left my car out in the street all night? I tried it again, boss, but nobody took it! <laughs> hmm. Hey, now, wait a minute, Rochester. You mean you're actually trying to get somebody to steal Mr. Benny's car? I'm even using Cadillac hub car! car. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rochester. You mean that you're actually trying to get somebody to steal Mr. Benny's car? I'm even using Cadillac hubcaps for decoys. <laughs> we'll get a joke over if we have to tell it eight times. <laughs> you can stop with the jokes and drive us down to the studio. Come on, Bob. You know, Jack, I've never ridden in your car. Everybody tells me it's a rickety old... Hey, wait a minute. Your car is supposed to be a Maxwell, and on the side here it says Lincoln. That's his autograph! His <laughs> autograph? He was standing on the back seat when he made his Gettysburg address. <laughs> he was not. That's a sticker I got when I went through Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, come on, let's get in. Well, there's TV City. Rochester, pull into the parking lot. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to run in, Jack. See you later, huh? Okay. Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Hey, I didn't see you sitting in the car. We better get in the studio. Yeah, just a few minutes, Jack. I'm waiting to hear a special program on the radio. A special program? Yes, Jack. It's commemorating the Wright brothers' first flight. It's transcribed, and the sportsman and I are on it. If I do say so myself, I did a beautiful job announcing it. Well, Don, you don't have to convince me. After all, you did win several awards for being the best announcer. I know, Jack, but I never felt I really deserved it until I made this transcription. No kidding, Don. Well, that must be... Shh, quiet, Jack, quiet. What's going on now? And now, ladies and gentlemen, since this month of December marks the invention of the airplane by the Wright brothers, as a special tribute, the Sportsman Quartet will sing Come Josephine in My Flying Machine. Don, that's not you talking. And here to introduce the Sportsman Quartet is radio's foremost announcer, Don Wilson. Take it, fellas. <laughs> Come, Josephine, in my flying machine Don. going up. She Is that all you say? Up. Take it, fellas? Oh, I'll have more Balance later. Like a bird but so, a what's so wonderful air. about that announcement? Goes, Listen, Jack. She goes up. Take Up it. a little bit higher, oh, won a million why awards. the moon is on fire. Come to the in I've my heard. flying machine going up, Take oh, on goodbye. And now for a new modern streamlined jet-propelled version of the same song. Take it, fellas. <laughs> Don, you said that before. But Jack, it's not what I said, it's the way I said it. How can you say take it? How many ways can you say that? We'll start to fly up so high in the sky to the stars we'll go. Goodbye. John, do you mean to say that that program hired you just to say, take it, fellas? It was either me or Marlon Brando. <laughs> well, they made a very wise choice. Now, come on, Don, let's get in the studio. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mr. Bernie. You're doing another show today, huh? That's right. Any mail for my fans? Uh, yeah, those two big sacks standing against the wall. Hey, those are really big sacks. It'll take me a long time to read that. That you don't read, you just spread it on your lawn. <laughs> what? 
That pitchfork ain't no letter opener. <laughs> Oh, well. I shouldn't complain. Bob Hope gets nice letters, but his lawn looks lousy. <laughs> See you later, Mac. Oh, oh, Mr. Benny, I almost forgot that was a long-distance phone call for you from your sponsor. A call from my sponsor? From New York? That, that's right. Well, thanks for telling me. I wonder what my... I wonder what my sponsor wanted. Maybe he wants to... No, he wouldn't just call me on the phone to cancel my contract. He's too nice a fella. He'd at least send me a singing telegraph. <laughs> I better go in my dressing room, call New York, and find out what he wants. I better call him right now. Oh, Mabel, what is it, guy to? Penny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what from here to security wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny? Uh, Gertrude, will you please get me my sponsor, Mr. Lewis, in New York? His number is... I'm sorry, is... Mr. Benny, but there's a new ruling. We're not allowed to place any long-distance calls on CBS phones. Oh. Gertrude, why did you pull the plug out so fast? I can't stand to hear an old man cry. <laughs> well, he is emotional. Once he took me out, and when it was time to say goodnight, he puckered up and goitered. His lips quickered so much, I made him kiss me on the shoulder. Why on the shoulder? I got rheumatism. I needed the massage. <laughs> Ain't he therapeutic? <laughs> yes. Yes, Mr. Benny. Look, Gertrude, I've got to talk to my sponsor in New York, so will you please let this long-distance call go through? I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but rules are rules. If you want to make a long-distance call, you'll have to use the payphone in the corridor. Oh, yeah? Well, let me talk to Mabel. Okay. Mabel, quiver lips, wants to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Hello? Look, Mabel, be a nice girl and put my call through to New York. I'm sorry, but I can't break the rules either. You can't, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Mabel. We're through. I'll never kiss you again. Who cares? I bought a vibrator. <laughs> what? Mabel! Mabel! How do you like that? She cut me off. Yes? Oh, oh, say, Jack, we'd like to rehearse the opening of the show. Can you come out on stage? I'll be there in a few minutes, Okay. Don. How do you like those operators refusing to put my call through? My sponsor wouldn't have tried to reach me if it weren't important. Well, I'll just have to use the payphone. Oh, good, there's no one in the phone booth. Let's see. What's long distance? Oh, yeah. Long distance. Oh, operator, I'd like to place a call to New York. I'd like to talk to Mr. William Lewis at 385 Madison Avenue. Mr. William Lewis, 385 Madison Avenue, New York. Uh, who's calling, please? Mr. Benny. Benny, is that B as in boy? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please. It was nice talking to an operator who isn't fresh or anything. da da dee da da I have Mr. Lewis in New York, Mr. Benny. Hello? Hello, Mr. Lewis? Not so fast. What? Deposit $3.75, please. $3.75? That's 15 quarters. I know what it is. We'll start, <laughs> we'll start dropping them in, kid. Hmm. 15 quarters.
One more, please. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Thank you. And Opry, I didn't think you were funny blowing that bugle. <laughs> hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Lewis. This is Jack Benny. Oh, hello, Jack. I'm glad you called back. I've been very anxious to get in touch with you. Look, Mr. Lewis, if there's anything wrong with the program, I'll be glad to fix it. Uh, Jack... I've always been conscientious, and nobody works harder than I do. Uh, Jack... If you look at my rating, you can see uh, Jack, that I... will you please let me talk? Huh? Uh, Jack, when I try to get in touch with you, all I wanted to do was wish you a happy new year. A happy <laughs> new year? That's all you wanted to say to me? Well... That's the least I could do to show my appreciation for that Christmas present you sent me. That's the most beautiful gold wristwatch I ever saw. Gold wristwatch? Yeah. And uh, please thank Don Wilson for the handkerchief he sent. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, when you opened your Christmas presents, did you get the cards mixed up? Oh, yes, yes, I did, but uh, I managed to get them back in the right places again. How did you know? Oh, with all the excitement, you know, it happens to everybody. Well, goodbye, Mr. Lewis. Uh, goodbye, Jack. Thanks again. Jack, Jack. Oh, here I am, Don. Jack, you're wanted on stage. Okay, Don. I was just talking to my, our sponsor, Mr. Lewis. Our sponsor? Oh, Jack, did he mention anything about receiving a gold wristwatch? Yes, yes, he did, Don. It was just what he wanted. Oh, good. Then it worked out just fine. It sure did. <laughs> Come on, Don, let's get on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, and on behalf of my sponsor, Cass, and my entire staff, I want to wish you all a very happy New Year. Good night, folks.